Hey guys in this video, we are gonna see, what if Naruto revived his clan with the help of Karen, Seal Master Naruto, this is part 1, and if you want more then please leave a like share subscribe. Here is in stopped by the door at Naruto's apartment. He placed the plastics he held down and knocked. Not twice but five times. There was no response. He was certain though, that Naruto was somewhere inside the building. He opened the door and walked in. It was always unlocked. There was a sign of danger painted at the door. Someone had put it there. Naruto never bothered to remove it, neither did he. But at least no one would dare walk inside the place. So Naruto never locked it. Not a night. Not when he was running through the village. Not when he was in the forest of death. The place was cold. And eerily silent. Hiruzen shivered slightly. He should be used to this. But this was his ritual every time he came here. He'd brought in a TV, just maybe to give it some life, but Naruto hardly used it. One day he would turn it on and leave it on a news channel. When he comes back, it is going to be on the same channel, remote still where he left it. He didn't bother saying anything anymore. The sand aim walked over to the small kitchen. The apartment wasn't the best. But it had everything. He had made sure of it. Still, this wouldn't mean much. Even if he bought a large fridge with Naruto by himself, it would only have Raymond inside. The damn villagers wouldn't sell him food. They wouldn't sell him anything. Since they couldn't touch him, they thought death by starvation was one way to go about. To some, it was just a fear of losing customers. Who wanted to buy in the same shop as the Kyuubi brat? Shaking his head, Hiruzen silently unloaded the grocery and packed it in the fridge and cupboards. He did this every month. Perhaps it was his punishment for the way things have gone. But if he didn't do it, Naruto wouldn't eat decent food. At least the blonde ate. He could cook. He had taught him how to cook. Once he was done, Hiruzen looked around. It was always tidy. Naruto was clean. He was a miserable lonely child, but at least he cleaned up his place. That was at least something good. But not something that made him smile. There were still many problems that didn't look like they were going to go away. And there wasn't much he could do about it. To feel so powerless to change things Hiruzen had never been so frustrated, and he was called the professor. He had learned every fire-based jutsu in the fire country. He had solved many puzzles, and yet, Naruto's life was one he could not solve. No matter what he said, the villagers would undo it with their glares and blatant whispers of contempt. Minato would be so disappointed. He walked over to Naruto's bedroom. It was a one-bedroom apartment. There was no sense of life. The door wasn't fully closed. Slowly, he opened it and made a creeping sound. He cursed. But when he walked in, there was Naruto sitting by the window. A small boy. No more than five years eleven months old. His knee was raised, his other leg inside with his back leaning against a window frame. His eyes were cast outside. He had been here all this time. Just silent. Just never reacting. When did it start? How did it even come to this point? Naruto had been happy. He had smiled and laughed. But these days, he rarely went outside. He spent most time sitting by the window, motionless, as if dead. It pained him. Naruto here is enforced a smile as he walked over the child. His tone was gentle. Naruto didn't react until he stopped by the window. Hiruzen touched the blonde on the shoulder. He almost startled him. Lost in thought. Naruto faced the third for a moment. There wasn't much on his face. He looked at the plastic on the third's hands. Clothes. He did need some of them. Once more, he looked outside the window. There wasn't much to look at. Just happy people. Sending glares whenever they saw him. Is it that time of the month already? Naruto finally spoke. His tone was quiet, slow. Month end. The time for an allowance, new food. And to open the tin he hid his savings. The sandane gave him more than enough. It was a pity he couldn't spend it all even if he wanted. Most shop shops had a sign that said we don't sell to demons. Hiruzen nodded. I brought you something. Naruto had to turn around to look at the sandane. His tone had been filled with excitement. It was obvious from his eyes that he was holding himself from exploding with the news. Naruto grew curious. Maybe even hopeful. I've never seen you so excited unless you're reading that book you keep hidden in your robes, Jiji Naruto said he couldn't keep out the curiosity in his tone. Are you finally going to let me see? Hiruzen coughed. He placed the plastic he held down. And then knelt. Naruto then turned over to him and stood facing him. He had done it automatically without any urging. The third placed both his hands on Naruto's shoulders. His lips twisted upside down. He was apologetic. I'm sorry for not having done this earlier, Naruto he stared into those confused blue orbs for a moment before pulling Naruto into a tight hug. I am sorry. Naruto stiffened sharply. He wasn't used to this. His personal space intruded. When the sand aim didn't let go, his hand slowly moved and he wrapped them around the old man. Warmth. It was a beautiful feeling. He pulled tighter to get more of it. He buried face on the sand aim's shoulder, enjoying the warmth. It was at moments like this that something he couldn't explain occurred to his heart. 
His eyes usually water. But the feeling was good. He didn't always get it. But it was good. He couldn't explain it, but he didn't dislike it, even though it nearly brought him to tears. You're going to suffocate me, Naruto I'm still an old man the Sandame said with a chuckle before pulling away. Naruto smiled. Yes, he smiled. It was an embarrassed smile. Ah sorry, he murmured. Hiruzen was happy to see that smile. He cherished it for a moment. There was truly hope. Not all was lost. Yes, there was hope. Listen very carefully, Naruto. You are not going to tell anyone what I am going to tell you, and you will not show anyone what I am about to give you he paused. Do you understand me? Naruto didn't have anyone he could tell. He had no friends. He didn't have family. He was alone in this world. Maybe he could tell the old man at the Raymond stand, but that was that. Yet, he was confused. Why would the old man say he couldn't tell anyone when he had no one to tell? It wasn't by design of an obsession with solitude. He had tried. He has wasted so many hours and days chasing friends. Even if he made them for a couple of minutes, their mothers would come and drag them away. Don't play with him, don't talk to him. They would say. It hurt him. It seriously wounded him. The last friends he had made tricked him. They saw he was too eager to make friends and then tricked him. They had sent him to the forest of death. He should have known with the danger signs on the fences, he should have known when they laughed with madness when he crawled under the fence, but he had been eager. The forest had nearly killed him. The Sandame hadn't been amused. He had told him what happened. He had explained things and then swore those boys would never become shinobi. And they never did. Naruto had stopped trying. He had stopped. He had seen the ugliness of people. It terrified him. And he didn't want to experience it again. Why? Do you trust me, Naruto? Naruto quickly nodded. Yes, he said firmly. Hiruzen smiled. It will do your life harm if you tell anyone. I can't risk it, Naruto. I cannot risk anything happening to you. There was the chance that people would make connections. No, they would make connections. He wasn't worried about the Yandame's enemies. He was worried about the villagers. They could reject the truth and try to harm Naruto for claiming otherwise. It wouldn't be pretty. He took out a picture from his robes. It wasn't framed. He handed it over to Naruto who grasped it with both his hands. He was trembling. That Naruto is a picture of your mother. She was carrying you when it was taken. Like I told you, she died during the Kayubi rampage. Mother. Mother. His mother. Her hair was red. It was that crimson color. Dangerous color. He was blonde. Naruto didn't question it. For the first time in his cold brutal life filled with loneliness and contempt, Naruto had a mother. He had a mother. He wasn't the spawn of a demon. He wasn't the Kayubi. He was born of this woman. This beautiful woman. The picture. He held it against his raging heart and walked over to his bed. He sat down. He had a mother. Those words repeated a thousand times inside his head. Until. Until tears rolled over his eyes. He made sure he didn't water the picture. Naruto felt happy. He felt relieved. He felt as if something had closed in his heart. Hiruzen took out a shirt from the clothes he brought. He looked at the Uzumaki symbol for a moment before nodding his head. If it was going to bring Naruto happiness, then he would do it. He sat beside the blonde but didn't say anything. Not until a couple of minutes passed. He didn't want to ruin the moment. Hell, an Anbu even came before him to tell him there was an urgent meeting with his advisors, but he brushed it off. It could wait. He had much more important matters to deal with. Her name was Kashina. Kashina Uzumaki. The same name as his. Uzumaki. Naruto stared at his mother. But he listened to the Sandame Hokage attentively. He didn't want to miss anything. Most of your clothes have this symbol. You can see it even in Kanoha's Jonin vests at the back. This is the symbol of the Uzumaki clan. Your clan, Naruto. Your mother's clan. Before you get hopeful, there are no more Uzumakis out there. At least as far as I know. Your ancestral home. The home where your mother came from was destroyed during the Second Shinobi World War. He went on to tell Naruto the fame of the Uzumaki clan, its history with the Senju clan. He told the blonde most things. It wasn't a happy thing since the clan was destroyed and Yuzu was nothing more than just ruins. But he believed it would give Naruto a sense of belonging. No matter what people say to him, he would know he came from somewhere and his mother once belonged to a prestigious clan. Giji will you take me to Yuzu? I want to see it. I want to see it. He said those words with hope and excitement. Hiruzen frowned. But he didn't let it show to Naruto. Perhaps if he saw it, he would fully believe. It was one thing to be told about something than seeing it yourself. I will clear my calendar and take you there, but he pressed his index finger on his lips. Don't tell anyone about it. When we go, it will be just the two of us. No one in this village will know. Naruto nodded vigorously. He would not tell a soul. And Naruto had his eyes closed, standing on a tree branch in the middle of a forest, feeling the pressure of the wind. When it came to hiding his presence, Jiraiya was a master. 
to suggest that the perverted geezer learned this trade in order to peep would not be far off. Jiraiya had perfected jutsus for his lustful desires. He could deprive himself of sleep trying to figure out the defenses of a hot spring that that was locked away to hide from perverts such as him. He didn't open his eyes when the sanin flashed on behind him in midair. His right foot blasting the airwaves as it moved towards the back of his head. On his left hand, Naruto held a kunai before ducking under the fast coming kick. The moment it went above him, his body twisted in blinding fashion while he leapt into the air, getting away from the tree branch. Jiraiya grinned as Naruto faced him. He could see the kunai on his left hand. Naruto was deadly precise with those. It was always coated with chakra. Without blinking, the blonde flung the kunai. The hand movements weren't extreme. It just seemed as if he was flicking it. But the speed in which it traveled was dangerously fast. The grin on his lips disappeared. The toad sage bent his body backwards, his head facing the heavens as the kunai blasted past him. He felt the wind brush his face as it went by. The kunai hit a tree, blasting past it. Jiraiya didn't have the time adjust his body as Naruto flashed above him, a Rasengan on the palm of his right hand. He cursed the blonde speed. The Rasengan was slammed into his chest. When it connected, the Sanin exploded into puff of smoke. Pain. Fire dragon's breath. Jiraiya breathed out a stream of crimson flames from his month. He was standing on the ground, looking up as the flames rushed up towards Naruto was who still floating in midair, body positioned slightly horizontal after the momentum of his Rasengan. Looking at the incoming flames. Naruto moved his right hand across his chest. He closed his eyes and then snapped his fingers. A wave of his chakra was released from his fingers. It was invisible to the naked eye. The wave covered a certain distance and but what it did was blast the oxygen away. The effect lasted for no more than two seconds. The flames that had been coming towards him simply died off, just like that. It was the weakness of flames. They needed oxygen to burn. Regardless of power and speed, as long as there was no oxygen, the flames would not burn. Ah, he loved his jutsu. You're wide open. Jiraiya announced. He was on Naruto's right side, still in midair. There was no more warning when his left right foot slammed onto Naruto's shoulder, sending the blonde flying away. As the force of the kick carried him, Naruto avoided wincing. Jiraiya's physical attacks carried a brutal kind of strength. He flipped several times with his senses fully functioning. As he was about to pass a tree branch, he stretched out both his hands and grabbed it. He attempted to swing forward, but Jiraiya once again appeared. The Sandin was right in front of him, the man punched him on his chest. When the brutal punch connected, Naruto burst into a cloud of smoke. Jiraiya frowned before flashing away. He landed on the ground and leaned against a tree trunk. His eyes flashed open when he sensed something coming in fast. He couldn't react when a kunai went through on his right, it cut slightly his cheek before piercing through the trunk of the tree. Jiraiya sweated as blood dripped from his cheek. His heart pounded a bit with relief. That could have opened his skull had it been intended to do so. You're getting destructed. Naruto was in front of the Sanin. His right foot weaving through the air before slamming onto his chest. The attack planted the Sanin against the tree. With his foot still connected with Jiraiya's chest, Naruto formed a smaller Sengen in the blink of an eye. As he retreated his foot, he was driving the Jutsu towards Jiraiya's chest. The Sanin dropped to the ground, and Naruto's Jutsu collided with the trunk of the tree, breaking it. As the tree began to fall, Jiraiya did a leg sweep, making Naruto off balance and start to fall backwards. The Sanin flashed above the blonde. Naruto quickly crossed both his hands above him as the back of Jiraiya's right foot came crashing towards his face. His defense held firmly, and Naruto quickly grabbed Jiraiya's foot. He balanced himself quickly before spinning around in quick motions. He flung Jiraiya towards a tree. Futin. Wind bullet. He spat out a bullet of wind from his mouth. The bullet hit Jiraiya on his chest and propelled him further backwards. His back crashed into a tree with a sickening thud. Naruto was right before him, not easing up on his attack. He held a sword, coated with wind chakra. He swung it horizontally and seemingly cut through both Jiraiya and the tree, but the Sanin turned into a log. Jiraiya was behind Naruto, crashing down. His hands were held together, creating a giant fist. The slammed the hammer down with all his strength, hitting Naruto on his right shoulder. The force caused Naruto to fall to his knees, dropping his sword as his hand trembled and throbbed painfully. The Sanin wasn't done. The moment he touched down, he lifted his right foot, kicking Naruto on the back of his head. It was brutal. It forced Naruto to hit the trunk of the tree he just cut with his forehead. A sense of dizziness gripped his mind for a moment as his vision blurred. Birds chirped for a second. Jiraiya grabbed him and then lifted him up into the air. The Sanin was holding him up by his throat. Just one hand. Shall we call an end to it? Do soon. Naruto muttered. He moved quickly. Both his hands grabbed Jiraiya's arm. He put so much pressure on his fingers that he stopped the flow of blood and Jiraiya's grip loosened. His legs moved up and he wrapped them around Jiraiya's arm. The Sanin cursed loudly before slamming Naruto on the ground. 
There was a loud boom as Naruto crashed with his back. But he didn't let go. He even started twisting the arm. Gureya started tapping on the ground comically before yelling. Naruto you are going to break my hand. Do something about it. Naruto yelled back. Careless of Jiraiya's pain. You shitty brat, if you break my hand, I won't be able to do research properly. That is worse than death. Naruto shrugged. It will save you from pain, and women will have their dignity back. Gureya cursed once more and used his free hand to form a hand seal. His hair stretched and wrapped around Naruto. He strangled the blonde, forcing him to let him go. Once free, he hurled the blonde away. Naruto flipped several times before touching the ground with both his hands, trying to stop the momentum. Once he stopped, an earth spike burst from the ground. It was sharp and dangerously moving towards his chest. Naruto propelled his body backwards by pushing chakra into his fingers to push himself. The spike missed him, just by a whisker. Gureya expected this. He was upon the blonde. Twisting as he moved, he channeled chakra onto his fight foot and then slammed it on Naruto's face. The kick picked the blonde off the ground, but before he could do anywhere, Jiraiya grabbed his right foot and then twisted him up before hurling him towards a tree. Naruto didn't have enough room to balance his body, and so he crashed into the tree with his back. The sandan appeared in front of him, driving his punch towards his chest. Jiraiya sensed a spike of chakra and tried to retreat. The blonde burst into a swirl of hundreds of small wind blades. He landed a distance away, but before he could even glance at the damage, he felt the air leave his lungs. Naruto was standing just away from him, with a bleeding face, but he was sucking all the oxygen away. It became harder to breath for Jiraiya. He fell on his knees, clutched his chest, his mouth hung open. He was going to pass out. There was no relief when it stopped, Naruto kicked him on his forehead with a wind-enhanced kick. He guessed it was payback for his earlier kick. Jiraiya felt his head tremble violently. His vision blurred as dizziness took over. He didn't even feel it when he hit a tree with his back. His senses came back when something slammed into his gut, causing him to spit out saliva while falling on his knees, hands on his gut. The attacks were enhanced with wind. It wasn't like Tsunade, but they did the damage. Naruto fell down on his butt, his breathing labored. He wiped out the blood on his face and then fell on his back. He needed to rest. Once the pain was over, Jiraiya leaned against a tree trunk and looked at his hand. It was bleeding with several cuts. He applied his medical ninjutsu to stop the bleeding. The cuts were not deep, so they closed. After a couple of moments of silence, he looked at Naruto. His right hand still ached from that lock. The blonde was improving. He was getting better and better by each month. This training trip had been the best option for Naruto. If they hadn't done this, he wouldn't have gotten closer to his godson, he wouldn't be producing another shinobi who would surpass him. It was still early days, but one day, Naruto would surpass him. He would be better than him. Jiraiya was honestly proud. Minato had been a genius, but Naruto had potential, and he used it to his advantage. He knew his potential. The blonde was also willing to learn. I'm no longer taking it easy on you Jiraiya more or less grumbled. The last hits had been unpleasant. It has been quite a while since someone managed to hit him so hard. I told you to bring your A-game, even Sinjutsu if possible. I'd kill you with Sinjutsu. And I am soon going to cripple you if you're not careful. Naruto retorted. Jiraiya frowned. That was true. He couldn't deny it. It wasn't the arrogant speaking. It was a fact. Before their training ends, Naruto was most likely going to leave him bedridden for a couple of days. They did fight with the intention to kill. There was no friendly. You could break a leg. It was part of the training. Part of fighting experience. More than anyone, Jiraiya knew the experience was important for survival. Your reflexes are good and your speed is improved. But you need to stop leaving gaps between your attacks. Jiraiya lectured. You also leave yourself open each time you snap your fingers. It is only for a second. When fighting against normal shinobi, I can recover quickly. Don't take comfort in that. You will fight people even faster than me. If they are faster, they will attack on that lapse of concentration. If you cannot work around the problem, it is best you leave that jutsu for emergencies. I think that would be best Naruto said before going silent for a moment. It requires maximum concentration, and I must stop breathing monetarily. For you it might be seconds, but for me, it is like minutes. Well, we can't take away the fact that the jutsu is a work of genius. It basically makes the fire element useless against you Jiraiya smiled. When are you going to broaden your arsenal? You can't be satisfied with just wind. That aside, wind is weak against some elements. You must always be ready to adapt to any change, and using different elements helps in this regard. I can work something out with fire. Given my extensive knowledge of the element, using fire-based jutsus for me should require minimal effort Naruto said getting up. I will send a letter to Tsunade for her to send us some scrolls with fire-based jutsus he said while getting. Come on, let us go back to the town he looked at himself and frowned. This is going to drive away customers. 
Don't flatter yourself, you're not pleasant to look at even when you are clean. Iraya glared at Naruto. Neither are you. He spat. Naruto shrugged. I have never been pleasant to look at. I have accepted that he said indifferently. But you seem to be struggling with denial. You should sit in a dark corner and repeat after yourself, I'm not pleasant to look at, I'm not pleasant to look at. I know it will finally click in. Jiraiya didn't ease on his glare. The cold dark humor. Sometimes Jiraiya questioned Naruto's sanity. But he knew there was no harm. He was used to it. They would be laughing any moment. It has always been like this. At least he was with his godson. Who else did he have? The Sandane was gone, and that had truly shattered the blonde. The old man was everything to Naruto. And when he died, without saying a word to him, Naruto has suffered. And then there was Sasuke. The curse to Che. Thinking of him made Jiraiya angry. Well, not since they left Konoha has Naruto brought up the subject. Not once, not ever. Hell, the blonde didn't even talk about Konoha. And Jiraiya didn't push. He was getting close, there was no need to venture into territories Naruto didn't want to touch. But he understood that they couldn't ignore it forever. They would have to talk about it because sooner or later, they would have to return to Konoha. You could at least try to be nice you know my heart isn't that strong anymore he said with mock misery, feigning to be hundred years old. Old people are locked up in their homes Naruto said. He sighed and stared into the heavens. What do you think is up in the sky where we cannot see, sensei? Iraya cast his eyes into the clear sky. He stared for a moment before shaking his head. I don't think there is anything there. I don't think there is life there. Interesting isn't it? Naruto said. What? You say there is no life there, but up in there is where this world receives its life. If the heavens do not make clouds for rain, the trees, the animals, the grass, these things will die. The rivers will eventually run dry, and people will be next there is no life there, and yet, it is where we receive our lives. Once again, Jiraiya looked into the sky. He couldn't argue with the blonde on that note. One thing he has noted about the blonde was that he was deeply knowledgeable about many things. And he knew how to apply his knowledge. Perhaps it was the wisdom he gained from spending much time with the Sandame Hokage. When you spend time people, something about them also rubs off you. That is nature Jiraiya said. Naruto nodded. Yes, nature. So beautiful, calming and yet it can be so dangerous. I like nature. He said before changing the subject. I have been curious, you have no shame, have you ever tried peeping on Tsunade? Jiraiya's body froze. Yes it was more of a whimper than anything. He could never forget that memory. He still had those wounds from the beating she had dished on him. He fraught with the crazy side of him that said it was worth it because he had nearly died to die literally. Tsunade had pummeled him hard. She had broken so many bones the pain. Worse, she healed him after doing it and then threatened to beat him into the brink of his life again if he tried it once more. Well, those had been younger days. He could escape now, but he wouldn't dare try it again. He had learned his lesson. Judging by that response, you must have received quite the beating. You don't know half of it Jiraiya said with his eyes closed. He swallowed hard to banish the memory. She nearly killed me. Since then, I say anything to her but never again. Never again. But you did see, right? Naruto glanced at the Sanin. It must have been something else. She must have been a very delicate young lady when she was younger. She was Jiraiya said. She is still beautiful he added. Naruto didn't comment on that. He just nodded. Without much being said, the two headed back to the town. The walk was silent, both in their thoughts. Jiraiya was thinking about what they had to do next, while Naruto was thinking about certain things in his life. Once they reached their motel, Jiraiya took a shower and changed his clothes. There was no need to rest for the San and he was going out and likely not to return for the night. Naruto didn't question it. He knew what the San and was going to do. They had chosen this town because of its fun activities. There were casinos, brothels. Jiraiya's kind of hunting ground. He loved places like this. He always danced with joy when he thought of what kind of material he was going to gain through his peeping work or getting drunk with young girls who giggled and laughed hysterically whilst he tells them his legendary stories. The man walked out of the bathroom, already grinning madly. You could see it in his eyes, his body language. He was going to have fun. Well, the past four days had been spent training vigorously. The man probably felt he needed to reward himself. Iraya contained himself and walked over to the window. He opened it and then turned back to face Naruto. We are going to leave this town in the next couple of days. He said a bit seriously. They never stayed at one place for too long. The longest they had stayed was two months, they were always moving around, seeing different places. Sometimes they didn't even camp with people. They would stay in the middle of nowhere. For survival, it was hunting. They always made sure there was water close if they were going to camp in the middle of nowhere. We have stayed long enough and I am certain that by tomorrow, you'll no longer be able to walk in the streets without women chasing after you along with their husbands. Jiraiya glared at Naruto. It had happened at their last village. It hadn't been fun and he had been forced to depart early. 
He was surely not going to return to that village again. He would be burnt on a stake like a witch if he returned to that place. There were wanted posters of him in good spots. And whose fault was it that I was nearly killed? Burrito shrugged. You left without giving me money for food. What was I supposed to eat? You're a man you need to make a plan, and you didn't have to expose me like that. I wouldn't need to make a plan if I wasn't forced to use my money to bail us out after you lost your wallet when running away from one of your conquests. Gurea smiled. Remembering that day, ah, that had been truly a good day. That woman had assets as big as Tsunade's. She was just sitting there in the water, never minding her nudity, doing things to herself. Jurea had never been quite pleased. Anyway he fought the blush gracing his cheeks. When I come back, you must be ready. I will look for a mission you can do. This time, it will have to be difficult. Naruto sighed, so, you'll be gone for a couple of days. The Sanin nodded. He took out his wallet and stared at his money. He glanced at Naruto and then his money. He frowned. If he didn't give enough, Naruto was going to hunt him down and ruin things for him. He counted a few bills and put them down. I put enough for food and some fun he finished with a grin. With that, he jumped out of the window and was gone. Naruto shook his head and walked over to the window. He leaned against the window while sitting down, his right foot close to his chest with his left touching the floor inside. He rested his right hand on his knee and stared down at the streets. This was his comfort zone. How many days has he seen, sitting like this? He couldn't remember. They were too many to count. Almost all days he had a window, he performed this ritual. The streets filled with people. Mothers walking with their daughters, boys chasing each other, drunkards, walking past with a stench that turned people away. He saw this scene almost every day. Yet he was never tired of seeing it. The past 16 years of his life have never been dull. There was always something happening. Had it not been for the old man, it would have been chaotic at best, but when he saw those mothers, he remembered his own mother. The woman who gave birth to him. Now he knew he had a father. The Sandame had left it as his last revelation before he died. A painful experience that had been. Losing the one you loved, the one who saved your sanity. Gureya had come in, talked to Tsunade, and he was taken out of the village after a couple of months of misery and solitude. For more than two years now, he has been running around the elemental nations with the Sanin. He has seen many things. Many people, the shamefulness of Jureya and he had learned to drink. He had learned to speak to women. He was still young, but his body was growing fast. And again, the old man had always ensured that he ate healthy. After an hour, a bird flew over to Naruto and landed on his right shoulder. He stood up and walked over to a small wooden table in the wide room and sat on a cushion. He took the scroll it carried and the bird flew over to the window. It stood there, as if standing watch. It always did that each time it came. Naruto opened the small scroll and channeled chakra through it. Another scroll appeared in a puff of smoke it was another storage scroll. He channeled chakra on the seal, and then five mountains of papers appeared in a puff of smoke. He blinked work. It always came for him wherever he was. For five hours straight, without a break or anything, Naruto worked through the papers. Once done, he sealed them in the scroll and snapped his fingers. The small bird flew over to the table. He wrapped a small paper on the container on its leg. Do you need something to eat? It nodded its head as if it could understand his words. Naruto smiled and stood up. He returned with a small cup of water and fresh bread. The bird ate and then drank. If you drank, I'd give you some sake as thank you. The bird seemed to shake its head as if to say, alcohol. No thank you, Naruto laughed. Safe journey, he said. The bird made a sound before flying away. The sun was already setting, it would be night soon. He couldn't sit here forever, he would lose his mind. Naruto went over to clean himself and then changed his clothes. Once done, he took a nap. By the time he woke up, it was dark outside. He pocketed the bills Jureya left him and put his hands on his pockets before walking out. He was already familiar with the town. He knew where to go, but it usually depended on where the wind was blowing. His mind wasn't focused on the road head, so he only blinked when he stopped at a bar. He could hear them using blasting from inside, voices of male and females. Miserable people having fun and happy people expressing their joy. To be human, to be alive. People came here. There was a guard at the entrance. It was to guard against children walking inside. The young ones had a rebellious streak about them. They liked the joys of the adults. The forbidden ecstasy always seemed to be too attracting to humans. Naruto just still 16, still under age, but he was a shinobi. Those rules didn't apply. When the large man saw his headband, he merely grunted and opened way for him. The insides were dimly lit. The noise was too much. But those who complained about it shouldn't be here in the first place. They should be at home sleeping or reading night stories to their kids. If you couldn't handle the pressure, just stay away from it, or so a certain lady had told him. Naruto went towards the bar. He didn't sit, he looked around and saw a free table by a corner. It was dark and you couldn't see clearly. It was his perfect place. 
he ordered four bottles. Once they came, he took two cups and walked over to his little corner. Solitude, the alcohol, ah, the perfect combination to drown in bitterness. Hinoha, it has been two and a half years since Naruto left the village, and still, there was no mention from Jiraiya on when they would return. Her friend hadn't even been returning. He sent letters every now and then, but he never showed up. Even now, she was looking at his letter. She was going to write for him to show up before her. Tsunade missed them. She really did miss the two. They had brought her back to this village, and now they were running around in the elemental nation without her her old life. She hoped that Jureya wasn't teaching Naruto how to gamble. She had permitted them to go away because Naruto hadn't been the most happiest of people. He was miserable. The Sandame's death had affected him deeply, and from what she had learned was that the old man had been the only person he talked to before he made a couple of friends at the academy. It hadn't been easy and that only happened in his last year. Jureya said he was fine. But she was a bit concerned. He was family in a way. He was the son of Kashina, someone who had been from her grandmother's clan, and someone who was close to the old woman. She wasn't the one who was by Mito when she died, it had been Kashina Naruto's mother. So, she did consider him family. Tsunade placed the letter on top of her desk and tapped her fingers. Something, wrong, Tsunade sama. Sakura asked quietly. The slug princess glanced at the pinket. She had grown. Well, she had trained her well. But she was still obsessed with Sasuke. That rotten child. He had been spoiled rotten. From what she knew, Tsunade didn't understand why the villagers adored him. She didn't see why girls liked him. He had a cold personality and he was rude. Did the girls really like him like that? If someone said they had been brainwashed, Tsunade wouldn't disagree. Sakura had been willing to throw a fit if someone said bad things about her beloved. The damned itcha, no Tsunade said with a shake of her head. I'm just worried about Naruto. It has been two and a half years now and from Jiraiya's letters, they are still training. He is even requesting scrolls to continue with Naruto's training she explained with a frown. Naruto. Her teammate. The boy she'd been cruel to in their days. At some point, even Sasuke had yelled at her and told her that she didn't understand anything. She didn't know anything. Sakura had been hurt, but she hadn't understood why Sasuke gave her that reaction. Now she did. She had been cruel to him. She never acted like a teammate. There were good memories, but her attitude towards Naruto bothered her these days when she looked back at it. Perhaps it was because now she understood things about him. She knew his story. She knew why he got along with Sasuke. They were both lonely people. They both didn't have anyone. And she had mocked Naruto for not having parents. Sasuke didn't have them either, but she had considered that his had died. Naruto had never known his. He was an orphan, but she never considered Sasuke as an orphan, but he was in the same boat as Naruto. How is he? Sakura asked carefully. Ureya never explains in detail, but he is fine Tsunade said a bit bitterly. Sakura was surprised at the realization. So he has never sent you a letter. Tsunade nodded. No not even one, not since he left. I have only been hearing from Jiraiya. If this continues, I will order them to come back she said firmly. She didn't say anything as Shizun walked into the office, holding more stacks of papers. She frowned. Why do you have to bring that load now, I just finished another one. It is going to pile up if I leave it Shizun said calmly. There is also this she said handing a report to Tsunade. The god aim looked at the report for a moment before frowning. Troubling news. She didn't need it now. She closed it and put it on the drawer on her desk. She handled the letter from Jiraiya to Shizun. Please make sure you get everything in the list, I need to send them to Jiraiya. Shizun looked at the list. She left quietly without saying another word to Tsunade. Once Shizun was gone, Sakura took the opportunity to ask. Anything on Sasuke? She asked hopefully. Her eyes widened, she didn't want to miss anything on Tsunade's face. Tsunade shook her head. Still nothing. Well, he is with Orochimaru he is rather difficult to track down she frowned. But we must find him. The time is coming for Orochimaru to change bodies and if we don't act, he might take Sasuke's body. That will be over for the Ichiha. Sasuke-kun won't let that happen. Sakura said firmly. When Tsunade merely stared at her, she sunk down a bit and became nervous and worried. Do you think he will? That is the only reason Orochimaru gave him the cursed seal Tsunade said. That aside, Naruto did say Sasuke said he was going to sell his soul to the devil to get the power to kill his brother. If it means giving his body to Orochimaru to kill, Itachi, then he might do it. I wouldn't even be surprised if Orochimaru manages to twist Sasuke into allowing him to get his revenge for him. For a moment, Sakura's body froze. If that happened, she would never see her beloved. He would become Orochimaru. They really had to find him. If Tsunade wasn't winning, she would look herself. Can't you ask Jureya-sama to do something? I didn't want to burden him, but it looks like I don't have a choice. Tsunade said. Four days after Jiraiya left Naruto, it was in the afternoon when Jiraiya returned. He found Naruto sitting motionlessly by the window. 
perhaps it was something they had in common, but he never sat there like he was dead. Naruto never even used a window like the door. Never ever. Jiraiya had never seen it. Even when he was sitting there and had to go out, he went out through the door. It was strange, but Jiraiya never questioned. That took you long enough Naruto said without turning to face the Sanin. I'd stepped out of the town to receive some information. Jiraiya said as he sat down next to Naruto. He had his back leaning against the wall, the blonde on his left side. You know my network is very busy. I know, you sometimes leave for a month chasing shadows Naruto responded. He glanced down at the Sanin for a moment. What did you discover this time? Jiraiya realized there was no hint of curiosity. Naruto was rather good at it. He was never too eager to learn anything. Even when he was asking things considered secrets, he never showed you how interested he was. Sometimes it made it difficult to tell if he was serious or not. Jiraiya had learned to just share or say he didn't have to know. If Naruto was asking, he wanted to know. It is about Yuzu he looked up to see Naruto's reaction there was nothing out of fashion. My ancestral home Naruto said a bit lazily. There were many rumors going on about the land of whirlpools. The village had been reborn, but no one knew who did it and how it came to be. Suddenly one day, people just heard the rumors, and the wave country confirmed it because they traded with the village. What bothered people was that the land was being led by the unknown someone who was called the emperor. No one has seen him not even the people within the village. Considering how the village saw its end during the Second World War, I'm certain some people are very nervous. Naruto added, his blue eyes staring outside once more. Hiraya nodded. The village had been destroyed. It hadn't done anything to anyone. The Uzumakis didn't fight in wars. They were a peaceful nation, but yet, they were powerful. People were nervous about their power and ended up plotting their complete destruction. Now, there were just remnants of the clan. But with the village restored, did it mean that there were many other survivors of the clan out there and they had regrouped? The Wagakur is the one that is most agitated. Jiraiya said. They are concerned because if really it is the Uzumaki, they might have an enemy with a grudge. That is one way to look at it. Naruto said. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. He would not forget, Naruto was Uzumaki. Even though he didn't live there, it was still his ancestral home and his mother had come from there. How would you look at it? Naruto shrugged indifferently. My clan was peaceful, they did not support wars, and they did not fight. They were allies of Konoha but never partook in the wars. They didn't start trouble with anyone. They were hidden in their village, minding their own business, and yet some people felt threatened by them and decided to destroy them, what would you feel about that, sensei? There was no anger, no emotion, nothing in Naruto's tone. Again, Jiraiya couldn't tell what Naruto thought. As those blue orbs glanced back him, there was a hint of curiosity in how he would respond to the question. It is a difficult one, but you cannot say that what Iwa and its allies was just. It was wrong in every sense of the word. Yet, nothing was done, not even by Konoha. Again, Naruto looked outside the window. Our world isn't fair at times, Sensei. People with power always do what they please. Sometimes right is decided by those with power. I know that believe me, I know there was bitterness in Jiraiya's tone. This is why it is my desire to change this world. He said with burning passion. I admire your passion, Sensei. I'm sure my father shared it as well. Of course Jiraiya said with a grin. It is why he named you after the hero of my first book after all. Ah, yes, that book. You said my father liked it, I think I like it as well perhaps for different reasons, but Naruto wouldn't say. What would you have done in that situation, Sensei? In a world you desire, would you have allowed Iwa and its allies to get away with what they did? Their action was nothing but a slaughter of innocents. I say this not because it is my clan, but looking at it as someone who has listened to your desires. Jiraiya thought for a couple of moments before shaking his head. I don't know, Naruto. Iwa would say they were justified and they wouldn't back down. Anything would more forceful would result in bloodshed. He said. But if you have listened me to, you will know that I still don't have answers. Naruto nodded. Which is indeed a pity the blonde said. What of Kiri? They are the one should be most worried. Kiri is a bit far and we don't generally go there. It was locked up in a civil war. But I heard that the war was over and that a new Kage has been named. I'll go there sometime. Jiraiya said. Naruto didn't say anything else on the subject, he just nodded and asked. What is new in the information you received? Nothing much there are still many things we don't know. Getting inside is near impossible. I'd have to go there myself. But since it is something that will require time, I can't do it now. I would have to be away from you for a long time, and there are dangerous, spies get killed, their Jiraiya explained lightly. I want to focus on our training now. But I am checking Iwa's movements. What are they doing? Nothing as things stand, but they are watching. I wouldn't bet against them preparing naval forces to prepare for an invasion if they feel they might be attacked. Kill them first before they kill you Naruto said. It was the cold truth. Jiraiya could only grunt in response. What would you do if it came to that? Naruto took his time before responding. 
I don't know he said. You said we'd do a mission when we leave. Asana nodded. Are you ready? He asked. But let me correct you, I never said we. Naruto looked at the Sanin curiously. Why don't I like the sound of that? Gureya smiled. There is nothing to worry about. The Togakur, the Kukikuki Kukurachimaru laughed with throbbing joy, seeing Sasuke fight. He was sitting on his throne. The Ichiha was excelling and moving faster than he had anticipated. He had been right after all, and the Ichiha was a good candidate. But then again, he was never wrong was he? He was usually right because he made calculated moves. Kamamro had turned out a failure because of his illness, but Sasuke was perfect. The Sharingan would finally be within his grasp, and he would make sure that the body would last him. It was a pity he could not sit Sasuke on a chair, strap him up, and then begin to bisect him to an up close to what actually happened inside the Ichiha's body. Well, he just had to be patient. He would do it once he gained the body. He didn't have a problem with cutting himself up. Arachimaru went through a fit of coughs coupled up with blood. He frowned. This body had reached its limits. He really needed another host. He couldn't move freely now. And very soon, he would be bedridden, unable to do anything. The Budo walked up to him, medicine. Dutifully, the Nin gave him his medicine before glancing at Sasuke who was fighting in the hall. He is improving splendidly he said. Should we inform him of Naruto-kun's improvements as well? Orochimaru shook his head. Let us leave that for now. It might come in handy as a form of motivation he said. Did you bring what I asked for? The Budo nodded. I've also found something interesting that you might like to know he said lifting up his glasses. Orochimaru eyed Kabuto, was he being teased? If the man knew he was going to like it, why didn't he just say it? Kabuto was loyal, but sometimes Orochimaru questioned it. He smiled. What is it? It was appears that Gurin has once more surfaced in Yuzushi Agakur. Orochimaru blinked. Oh. That was indeed an interesting piece of information. His former number two had vanished from him along with that boy. He hadn't bothered chasing after them because they were no longer useful. Gurin had done what he needed her to do. Perhaps the only thing she could prove was that of danger to him was about what she knew. Well she has been gone for about a year now and nothing has happened so he thought he was safe. That aside, he hadn't thought she had gone to join another village. Well that could be troublesome since we don't know anything about the village Urachimaru finally said after weighing up his thoughts. Have you sent someone? Yes, but they didn't come back. Well well it is interesting Urachimaru. I could go myself but at this point I need to be by your side. A bitter reminder that he did need Kabuto at this moment. His movements were limited and very soon, he wasn't going to be able to do any by himself. The medicine wasn't for anything but pain. He couldn't stop the rot. So long as his soul remained here, the body would continue to break apart and he would experience the pain. Why didn't Kabuto just leave him? He shook his head. He needn't think about such things. There is something I have prepared, but I'd rather not use it unless there is no other choice I am not going to be like this forever anyway, but if Gurin was here, I'd take her body and continue to nurture Sasuke-kun until he is ripe for the taking the San and said. Call him. Abuto nodded and called Sasuke. The stoic-looking Achiha walked up to the two, his fully matured Sharingan glaring at the pathetic-looking San and with so much coldness that it filled Arachimaru with joy. What? I have a mission for you. I'm finally leaving this cage Sasuke said as he accepted a scroll from Kabuto. Everything is in there Rachimaru said. It is merely a test of your strength. I want to see if you can succeed smoothly before changing tactics for your training. River Country, Naruto sitting under a tree in a meditative position with his eyes firmly fixed on Jiraiya. The Sanin was sitting there with him. Plans were drawn on the ground. Naruto had already surveyed everything while Jiraiya watched. The Sanin hadn't commented and said he would not comment. Even if Naruto was making a mistake in something, he would not say anything, not until the mission was over. The Sanin had said he had to make sure no innocent person died, and if it happened, he would have to live with it, because that was what happened. The village close to them was being occupied by criminals, scums who were here for the loot. The village of Takumi has sent for help, and they had to remove the scums. Naruto had to do everything by himself. There were 30 enemies, but they were mostly just bandits. 10 were shinobi, but nothing strong that would cause him trouble. The danger here was that he had to make sure that they didn't kill the village people. If he made the wrong move, they would kill them, and the mission would be a failure. The leaders of the group were all located in a small bar having a meeting this was this was a perfect opportunity to strike. When all leaders were at one place. Seven were doing patrols around the village. He could easily handle those with his clones and silently as well. Five were guarding the daughter of the village leader who they were demanding a ransom for. These people were in different locations and he had to strike quickly. The rest of the villagers were in their homes. They were told not to make moves. For some reason, Jiraiya had leaked that Takumi had hired Shinobi and he had to deal with people who were aware that an enemy was coming. Remember Naruto, if you just leave this people, they are going to harm more people. 
If there was a mass jail for criminals, we'd capture them and send them there, but we don't have that. Killing is part of the job. Don't make it feel natural for you. It's not natural. Life is precious, but as shinobi, we cannot avoid it. You don't always have to kill. You have to determine what is safer. Naruto had shed blood before. It had been horrible. He hadn't meant to do it. The man was abandoned, and Naruto had put too much strength on his hands, he had ended up snapping his neck. That sickening crack when the head twisted, those eyes rolling with life disappearing, they had haunted him, but Jiraiya had been there. Jiraiya was taking him through this, just to prepare him, just to make sure that he would not freeze and risk the lives of innocent people locked up in their homes. At any moment now, these people were going to round up the villagers and use them as shields to deter Shinobi from attacking. This was why Naruto had to move now. I know, Sensei. Naruto said. Wish me luck. Just use your head. This isn't a battle that can be won because of physical prowess. You might have the power and still lose. Just know that you sometimes have to put aside all that power and use a kunai to get the job done. Naruto nodded. He stood up. Two minutes. He said. I mean it is more than enough for you. Jiraiya said. You have your shadow clones to help you. Since the enemy is weak, that is more than enough. But two minutes it is. Naruto stood up and jumped onto a tree. He would have preferred to just walk into the small village and crush the enemy, but he had to be subtle about things. There were not more than 15 houses here. It was a mining village. But the gold had run out. The bandits didn't know. Imagine their disappointment when they found out. Hage Bunch and No Jutsu Naruto created seven clones to deal with the bandit standing guard. He created eleven more to guard the houses where people were locked. The five guarding the important girl were inside as with the leaders, so he could get rid of the others without them noticing. Once his clones dispelled after completing their duties, Naruto ran. His movements were as smooth as a gentle breeze. He didn't make a sound as he danced through the rooftops before suddenly landing behind a group of four bandits. Hey, WH, he didn't allow them to say anything. He moved in the blink of an eye, jumping over the man. As he was doing so, three kunais were fling in three different directions. The kunais hit straight on the foreheads of their targets. They pierced through. He landed on the man's shoulders and placed his hand over the man's mouth to stop him from screaming. The others dropped to the ground before he hit the man on the back of his head, knocking him out cold. The villagers would deal with him. Naruto left a clone to tie him up before disappearing along with small gusts of wind. The house he appeared in was a double-story house. His target was upstairs with her five guards. There were ten downstairs, drinking while placing guards. They were laughing merrily while the villagers cried in their houses. There was no hope for tomorrow. They were thinking, at any moment now, they would be killed. Cold-hearted humans. But he had seen it handy. The ugliness of people. He had experienced it too, so he could understand. Naruto went behind the house and walked through the wall. He peeked through the window. The girl looked fine. She was small, curled up in a corner, trembling in fear, tears in her eyes. People were truly ugly, weren't they? A little girl, an innocent child and you did that to her. He had been innocent too. A child, younger than she was and ugly people had tormented him. He needed to get in silently and time was ticking away. He held a single hand sign and used Shunshin to appear in the room. Five kunais were in his hands, he twisted speedily and threw them all, each hitting its target. The bandits didn't see a damn thing. They fell lifelessly on the floor. Naruto walked over to the girl and knelt down. He gave her a warm smile and whispered something to her ear. He noticed she tensed. She was afraid. He created a clone which picked her up and left by the window. Naruto stood up. He was done with this part. He took out a smoke bomb and went downstairs. He threw the ball on the round table the ten were gathered around. It went off, quickly covering the room with smoke. Everything else occurred within seconds, and Naruto walked out safely with his hands inside his pockets. He could consider his mission done and dusted. He just had to interrupt a meeting and with everyone else gone, he didn't have to worry about the safety of the civilians, but the clones would still keep watch of everything. Naruto had manners, unlike a certain pervert. So he actually knocked when he arrived at the door where the leaders of the bandits were gathered. He knocked gently a couple of times before a large man walked up. He dwarfed his frame by sizable proportions. Even a Chunin would be afraid to face such a man whose face was a field of scars. What? The man demanded glaring at Naruto. He then noticed the headband. They sent a brat. A brat. He looked insulted for a moment. Naruto didn't say anything, his response was to punch the man on his face. But despite his size, the man was sent flying back inside the room. He crashed loudly onto a wall, face bleeding, teeth falling out. He cursed loudly as he staggered to get up to his feet. Naruto stepped into the room. They were all arch ugly man. They were the kind of perverts of liked little girls. Pedophiles. He counted them calmly before greeting them. They were not even the least surprised or alarmed. As large as the man he had punched, he was simply a doorman. 
Inoha Shinobi one of the men frowned looking at the forehead protector Naruto war. Is it true, I've had even though young, least Shinobi are strong one asked quietly. We are about to find out. They all readied themselves, grinning madly. He was just one, they were big and strong. They could handle this, or so they believed. Between mob justice and quick deaths, what do you prefer? Naruto asked in a calm tone. But a mob justice was no good, was it? Maybe the villagers would pay back the people who made them suffer, but it did nothing but incite violence in the hearts of people. Naruto nodded to himself. Although he offered that option, he wasn't going to go with it. Innocent people didn't need to dirty their hands. This was the duty of a shinobi. We pick neither option. The first one lunged towards him, attempting to plant the base of his foot on his face. Naruto side stepped the large food and raised his right hand, channeling chakra through it. He made a fast motion as if he was cutting something, and then blood gushed over from the man's knee. His leg was cut off from his knee. When the pain shot through, he cried painfully. You little fucker. Another yelled, swinging a right hook. Naruto caught the man on his arm, having avoided the punch. Chakra was channeled through his fingers and he pressed. There was a sickening crack or bones breaking. The man cried out in pain while gritting his teeth. When the last man hovered behind him, Naruto slammed his elbow on the man's chest, knocking on the wind of his lungs. He was a shinobi, and he had to finish this. He took out four kunais from his pouch and did what he had to do. Once done, he breathed in and out to calm his nerves. He didn't need to see anything. He simply walked out and made way for it. Jiraiya could handle the rest. They just needed to do what he did in mission complete. The village would be safe. Minutes later, Jiraiya walked up to Naruto. I can't complain he said of Naruto's performance. You okay? Yeah Naruto said with a grunt. Where to now? I doubt we are going to be staying here. The kumi to collect our payment you know someone has to pay for our living expenses Jiraiya said. We will stay in the village for a couple of days before deciding where we will go. I have to wait for something. Our payment? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. It is my payment, sensei and we are not sharing. I am the one who found the mission and we are a team. Takumi hired both of us, and they will pay both of us Jiraiya said. You should have asked the terms before you did anything. Well, I can always tell them that you didn't do anything and don't need to get paid. Naruto offered. I'm sure they'd believe me. You wouldn't. Naruto smiled. Of course not I wouldn't do something like that to my beloved perverted sensei. When Naruto first met the Bijuu inside of him, he had been truly frightened, not of those huge eyes or its eyes, but the sheer amount of hatred those eyes directed at his presence. He was surely just an insignificant person the Bijuu could squash under its massive paws, yet it could look at him with so much hate that his body trembled. Naruto had never felt something so powerful. Over the years, he has learned that it wasn't him specifically who was hated but humans in general. The poor beast was forced to remain caged because of its power. It was a sad thing. Of course, Naruto didn't pity the beast. He didn't hate it either. As he gently touched the waters, those huge eyes opened slightly. Naruto marveled the size of the Bijuu, its intelligence. People were missing out by simply brushing out the Bijuu as nothing more than a source of power, a weapon of destruction. Chaos incarnated. Those eyes I wonder if you stared at my mother as you do with me. She never visited. Karama responded calmly. Unlike with you, her seal was simply designed to suppress my power. The same can be said about Mido. So they all never used your power but just kept you at bay. The Shadai's words were like he has nothing against me, but I was too powerful to be left alone. So his wife sealed me within her. I have been confined for years you thinking of ending my term? A toothy grin. Naruto smiled. Yes those attempts. The Bijuu always attempted to entice him to let it go. To free it so it can finally breathe in the oxygen it has been deprived of for many years. But Naruto wasn't stupid. He wasn't going to do it. Releasing the Bijuu meant his death. He did not have the full genes of the Uzumaki to survive in extraction as his mother did. My clan was also destroyed for being too powerful. I guess we have something in common there. Naruto said. But that isn't why I am here. My power Kurama said. Naruto was like all humans. He wanted his power. He was the first Jinchuriki to use his power, but it did give him a sense of freedom. The seal held him, if Naruto was willing, he could draw out as much chakra as he was willing to give. Naruto nodded. I wish to learn to control it once more. Hirama grinned. I thought after you nearly killed that hermit when you lost control you wouldn't want to try again. Naruto shrugged. It would be stupid of me to leave this power like this. You are strong and I am your host. It doesn't matter that neither of us had a choice in our union, the fact is we are together and I am going to learn to control your chakra. I'm not stopping you. Yes because when I use the chakra, the seal weakens. I have been studying seals since I was seven. Although the old man never taught me anything special, he introduced me to Fuinjutsu and said it was the legacy of the name I carry. So I know what happens with this seal, and I know you laugh gleefully when I lose control. 
Garama stared at the blonde for a moment before laughing menacingly. You lose control because you can't handle my chakra human. Naruto shook his head. Yes, your chakra is potent and admittedly deadly to the human body, but it isn't the potency of your chakra that makes me lose control, it is the hatred. HMP Karama stared. If you can't handle it, then don't try to use it. I am hatred, it comes with my chakra. But you can make is worse because you want me to lose control. Naruto stressed those words. Look up. Karama did and saw structures. He frowned. He knew the seal. Naruto clapped his hands. You are very knowledgeable about seals. Then again, you have always been sealed within seal masters he said. That is insurance. You are not going anywhere unless I say you are. If more than six tails of chakra leak out the seal, that falls down on you and restrains you. But that said, it would be much simpler for both of us if you allowed me to use your chakra without doing anything funny that interferes with the process. A human, doing this to him. A child no less. It was humiliating. I have no plans on remaining here until you decide to transfer me to another host. I will make my escape. I know you will try. I'd try to escape too if I was locked up in a cage, but I still won't let you go. I need your power. I know you hate humans. If you force your way out of the seal, you're likely to kill me first and then incinerate my body just to make sure I stay dead. But let us make a deal that gives you a bit of freedom. Of course, you'll still be locked, but the seal is special and we can work out something. Naruto's eyes snapped open. They sharked when saw Jiraiya's foot heading straight towards his face. It was too close for comfort and he didn't want to get any unnecessary hits. He quickly fell backwards, lifting up his face while he raised both his hands. As Jiraiya's foot passed above him, he caught him just above his ankle. The Sanin raised both his hands up, surrendering. Naruto let go of the Sanin. Why are you attacking me? You were open. Jiraiya said with a shrug. Naruto stared. Is that how we are going to play it, Sensei? If one is open we attack them. It's not a game, but it's a one-way street exercise. I am the master and you are the student here Jiraiya said firmly. He was certainly uncomfortable with the idea of Naruto being given the license to attack him if he was open. That's not fair Naruto said. Here is my rule. To determine that you are still worthy to train me, I will attack you if you are open. I see no value if being helped on by someone weaker than me. Jiraiya stared. You still got a long way to go, Brat the Sanin said. He sighed and sat down next to the blonde. They were still in the river country, it has been a week, and he already had plans. He would have liked to start with other things, but there was something he had to do and it was important. Not to mention he still needed to see Tsunade. The woman had been forceful in her letter. He had to go before attending other agent matters that needed him, and he couldn't do them with Naruto. But even if he was to leave Naruto, it wasn't going to be much of a problem for the training the blonde had to go through. Naruto did his own training when it came to ninjutsu. Even as his sensei, he only informed Naruto of the basics, and the blonde did everything on his own. When they do get to fire, he would only teach Naruto the basics and the jutsu he knew. The blonde would learn everything by himself. He trained Naruto with tojutsu, kinjutsu and some jinjutsu. Naruto was not that good with the latter, so they'd shelved it and focused on simply being able to negate them. Troubled. Jiraiya glanced at Naruto for a moment before shaking his head. No, he said. I was just sorting out my thoughts. What were you doing anyway? Ah, when you interrupted me Naruto started. I was having a delightful conversation with the Kyubi regarding the use of its chakra. You'd loosened the seal before to allow me to draw out as much chakra as possible, but there were massive negative consequences to this. Jiraiya frowned. He still hadn't even told Tsunade about the incident. She would freak out, possibly question why Naruto even needed to learn to use the Kyuubi's power. But he believed it was necessary. Why have so much power inside of you and not learn to use it? Besides, with the way Minato designed the seal, it was designed for Naruto to control the power. The key was for this purpose. The cage could still be unlocked while keeping the Kyuubi sealed. However, if Naruto was consumed by the power, the Kyuubi got free. Don't remind me about those consequences. The toads won't give me the key again after that incident the Sanin grumbled. They'd questioned his decision. Well, he had been close to dying and releasing the Kyuubi at that time. If he had died, the Kyuubi would have escaped. Jiraiya laughed bitterly at the thought. It would have been a ridiculous end to his miserable life if his last deed was unleashing a hateful Biju into this world. It would surely leave a trail of destruction on its path and who would be blamed for it. Most of all, Naruto would be gone. He would have ended Minato's legacy. Naruto shrugged at this. He didn't need the key at this point. He had already copied it and memorized it. Without seeing it, he wouldn't be able to recreate it because the lock was hidden and the seal itself was worthy of Uzumaki. For greatness, we must be willing to take risks, Sensei. If everything came easy, things would be different. Naruto said. My conversation with the Bijuu centered on it allowing me to use its chakra freely. 
Of course, I can still use it freely, but when forced and taken in its raw nature, it leads to situations we'd both rather avoid. Gareya was silent for a couple of moments. Did it say yes? Of course not. The Bijuu wants to leave the cage Naruto said with a shake of his head. Even so, I still want to learn to control its power. We are fine with at least two tails, but anything more than that, it becomes a problem. I'm okay with that, but you must understand that power alone doesn't determine things Naruto. You can control the power of the Kyubi and still be unable to do anything. Naruto smiled. Sensei, you should know there is such a thing as soft power. Believe me, I know and understand it. Orochimaru doesn't use his physical prowess to entice his mad followers, he speaks to them, a language they can understand. That is politics. But the power of words cannot be underestimated. You can change things with words. You can influence how people look at things with your words. But as shinobi, there comes a time when words cannot save your life or protect what you value. That is where this power comes into play, don't you think so, sensei? Gureya nodded. Sometimes Naruto spoke volumes. Sometimes he spoke like someone who was much older. But he was just a brat. And of course, these were just moments. That is correct I see sensei taught you valuable lessons in life. It was necessary Naruto said with his eyes closed. The villagers glared at me with contempt, they said things in whispers, and it crushed me. There were no jutsus there, and yet my life could have been destroyed. That is just one practical example of how words can change things. The bitter days that he hadn't seen much of Jiraiya cursed his cowardice. Had he been a little courageous, he would have bothered trying with Naruto, but he did not. Even when he came, he watched from afar. His sensei had asked him, when are going to introduce yourself to Naruto? It didn't have to be anything related to his parents. The third was his beloved master. Naruto could have understood without too many questions. But he hadn't. He had said he couldn't do anything good. Sensei was really good to you, huh? There was sadness in his eyes. Naruto nodded. He was my family. He said and paused. A minute passed before he spoke again. When do we begin? Gureya gathered his thoughts for a moment. He gave Naruto a scroll and explained. This contains what you need in order to learn how to convert your chakra into fire before learning to use fire-based jutsus. Like what you did when you learned to bend wind. Naruto shook his head. He returned the scroll back to Sanin. I know how to that. Gureya blinked. When did you learn? You have never even tried using fire-based jutsus when sparring with me. You always use wind. About a year ago Naruto said with a shrug. I have been putting focus on learning to use wind chakra and controlling the air around me. This requires maximum focus. I couldn't allow myself to be preoccupied with something else. More than a year and he never said a word. Not a damn word. But then again, given that shrug, it was apparent that he didn't take it as something serious. You still don't know any fire-based jutsus. I have a good memory I most certainly remember the hand signs you have used for your jutsus. But I haven't tried it yet. Again, an nonchalant shrug. Gureya understood why Naruto never said anything. He didn't want to start learning to use fire-based jutsus at that time. We can't start your training now. The one about the Kayubi. Why? We have to go our separate ways Jiraiya said. I have some things to do and will be traveling a lot. You have to go to Sunagakur and try to finish your wind training there. The environment is very conducive there. I will send you a message once we are done and we can talk about concluding things. Last time I checked we didn't have a good relationship with the hidden sand. Suna had invaded the leaf and they had ended up fighting. He had fought and defeated Suna's Jinchuriki. Had Konoha had bad leaders, it would have certainly marched to decimate the sand. But good leaders avoided such bloodshed and were working on something else. That has been resolved, Jureya said. Tsunade soothed things out, but there are still some people who are wary. They did betray us, they can do it again. At least some people are thinking that. Naruto looked thoughtful for a moment. Then I must confirm how things are there before they take things to the next level. My training is nothing more than convenience. Jureya grinned. You're not a bad student, he said. Akashi always spoke about reading underneath the underneath Naruto said with a shake of his head. The desert is going to be unpleasant. If you get caught in a sandstorm. But it should be fine. You can always consider it a training trip. You really do like trial by fire sensei. You threw me in a deep pit to get me to learn how to summon the toads Naruto stared. One of these days sensei, you'll be drunk and wake up sleeping next to the old hag while posing nude. Gureya shivered at the thought of Tsunade seeing him naked before her when waking up. She'd kill him this time around. Let us not go that far he said nervously. I sent a message to the Subaku family to inform them of your visit. I thought it would be suitable they know. Naruto nodded and looked up into the sky. I'll camp by the border tonight and enter the desert before the sun rises. He said. Don't try to learn using the Kyubi's power there. We don't want you accidentally leveling Sun Agakur to the ground. Jiraiya said. He could actually see that happening. The Kyubi had enough firepower to do that. 
The only way he had managed to even survive was through suppressing the chakra. If not for Fuinjutsu, he would be dead, literally. Eh, eh, we shall see. Naruto responded with a shrug of his shoulders. A day later, hidden village in sand, traveling documents, those were essential, if you were going to walk through the gates of any hidden village, you needed them. It didn't matter if you were wearing a headband or just a civilian, you needed papers that showed who you were and where you come from. Security reasons. They didn't just want everyone and anyone entering their villages. Spies and dangerous criminals could walk through the gates if not watched, and that posed a serious risk to a village. Naruto looked up into the sky, this was his first visit in this village. He didn't know where to turn to. He didn't know anything. Perhaps this was why Jiraiya had contacted the Subaku family. Naruto didn't actually need them to get by. He could ask around. The wind around the village was pleasant though. A gentle breeze, a warm kiss of nature. It was unlike the desert. The wind was wild, untamed, a natural force of destruction. Certainly something that could destroy you. Listening to its whispers, how it caressed his skin, Naruto was tempted to dance right here and now with his bag hanging on his back. Someone hit him on the shoulder. That just ruined the mood. It felt like the wind suddenly disappeared on him. He looked at the man who had hit him, an apologetic smile. Naruto nodded and the man hurried somewhere. A minute later, two more people passed by him running. Naruto shook his head. A village may have different name, culture and environment, but people were still the same. He started moving once more and finally found a room to rent for a month-long stay. There was no hurry to see the Subaku siblings. He wasn't even sure how it would go, considering that the last time he met them, he had been battling Gara. Well, at least it had ended up pleasantly. Naruto placed his bag on the bed and turned towards the window. His calling. It was high up in the wall. He frowned. He stepped next to the wall and placed his hand on it. He blinked before smiling. He almost laughed. He was thinking of creating a window that suited his needs. Was he that obsessive about this? Naruto shook his head. The window was probably up there because of the conditions in the village. If storms came, they had to be safe. He placed his hands up and climbed up onto the window. He couldn't sit the way he preferred given the size of the walls, but it would do. Once settled, Naruto looked outside. It wasn't a pleasant view. Then again, he never visited the window for its view. Two hours went by before Naruto was snapped out of his thoughts by a knock on the door. He thought about ignoring it for a moment. His sentimental time was being disturbed. Silently shaking his head and went down and walked over to the wall. The young girl who showed him the room was standing there with a warm smile. Sorry to disturb you, but I just wanted to see if we'd take your food here or if you would eat downstairs. Gureya was going to shout and curse, but Naruto would only smile. He was renting a room in a five-star hotel. The Sanin would cry foul over his wasted money. Naruto was usually safe with the money the Sanin gave him. He rarely spent it all, and the man was more than happy to take it back. So, just this once, he could live the life of a spoiled prince. I will come downstairs. He said. Can I also get a small table I can use to ride on? I will speak to the manager about that. Thank you. The young lady gave him the eating schedule and before walking away. Naruto closed the door behind him and sighed. He should ease the tensions he felt on his body. Traveling in the heat of the desert is a bit rough. He would rest his body today and would go out tomorrow for training. Hidden leaf. The bandaged Jiraiya was sitting by the window with a frown on his lips. Naruto didn't do this to him. But Tsunade had to greet him by pummeling him. He couldn't do his job with his body in pain. It would be troublesome if he came across trouble when his body was still suffering from the effects of Tsunade's beatings. Well, he was used to it anyway. I can't believe you, you damn pervert. Tsunade sent a harsh glare towards her former teammate. Jiraiya moved slightly. He was ready to bolt through the window if Tsunade made a move. One beating was enough, he couldn't take another one. I just couldn't help myself, Haim. When I came in, I felt that I was being called. Being called my ass. Tsunade didn't ease up on her glare. For more than two years you don't come show up and when you finally do appear, the first thing you do is go on a peeping tour. He didn't bother coming to see her. He didn't come through the gates. If it wasn't because of the complaint she had received, she wouldn't have known he was in the village until he decided that he was ready to see her. Didn't he know that she had missed him not that she would even admit that to him. He would never stop reminding her about it. There was also too much to talk about that could not be said through letters. It has been over two years, damn it. I was going to come home, Jiraiya said lamely. But you didn't have to beat me like that and then tear my scripts. I'd been working on that for some time, he complained with a glare. Tsunade shrugged carelessly. I should be having someone remove all those images in your head. She said. Jiraiya wouldn't permit something like that he would fight tooth and nail to avoid it. Naruto let him do his research peacefully, as long as he took care of everything that the blonde needed. Sneaking in was a good idea though. He was already banned in most places. He just wished Tsunade wouldn't have her Anbu try to monitor him while in the village. 
They were not a problem, but it would just create an unnecessary problem for him. Anyway Tsunade turned serious. What did Naruto say when you said you were going to come here? For a moment, Jiraiya thought of lying, but he chose not to do so. He wouldn't do that to Tsunade. Nothing. He said. Tsunade was silent for a few moments. At this point, it was getting dangerous, but she didn't want to get suspicious or cast doubts around Naruto. But he could not mope around forever. Or maybe he wasn't moping around, but just had nothing to say. He hasn't had very good memories in Konoha. They certainly didn't give him anything. As far as she knew, the only good thing that had occurred for him in this village was when they cheered for him after he won his match at the Chunin exams. But that was the only thing. All other memories were bad, and the Sandame's former advisors seemed particularly worried about this. Then again, they dined with Danzo. There was always an ulterior motive. But they kept disturbing her about Naruto's return to the leaf. She certainly didn't want him to spend more years in the wilderness. She was sure he would be here when needed, but the leaf didn't need another Jiraiya. I was thinking that perhaps he would have said something Tsunade said in a measured tone. He doesn't talk much about anything personal. We get along just fine and I think he is fine, but we do need to start talking about these issues. Then again, it seems that unless I bring up something we won't talk about it unless it has something to do with training. But he does talk when the subjects come up. Gureya nodded his head. He isn't a silent person when you are talking to him, but he can be very silent. He does this thing where he can sit motionlessly for hours like he is a statue there was a bit of indifference about the way Jiraiya said those words. He even shrugged in the end. Why don't you sound concerned about it? It isn't a problem. He said. I think it is done out of habit. Sunaid was silent for a couple of moments. She couldn't get any reports the Anbu made on their observations of Naruto. There was a register that said someone was observing him, but there were no records of it. Not in this office, not in the Saratobi compound, not in Anbu HQ, and she didn't know who was doing it. Well, she had succeeded her sensei. If it was something dangerous, he would have made sure to keep it for himself only. The training is going fine I assume you don't really give a clear picture in your reports. Everything is going fine. If we end up taking more time, I will talk to the toads about teaching him senjutsu. But I will see what happens in the coming months. Forget senjutsu, why are you talking like you are going to spend more time away from the village, Jiraiya? You have to start talking about coming back now. There is a limit to how much I can tolerate this. I will talk to Naruto about it, but I did mention that we would have to talk about concluding things the Sanin said. Tsunade stared at the man. He didn't sound concerned and he wasn't saying they would come back. You're not concerned are you? You are happy you are spending time with your godson and are able to do some good for your past failures. Hiraya smiled bitterly. That might be true. It may be selfish on my part, but I am doing something good here. Naruto is learning and he will become a great asset to Konoha. It isn't like there is anything that really needs him here, so he can afford to focus on his training Jurei responded in a tone filled with regrets. I will talk to him about it. Let us just give it one more year, Haim. Tsunade sighed. The issue with Yuzu is becoming a problem. Naruto is Yuzumaki, and his continued absence in the village is troubling to some people and to me really. If there are survivors of the Yuzumaki clan there, would he decide to go there or would he come back to this village that has done nothing but treat him with contempt? Jurei frowned. He avoided thinking about this issue. He didn't want to question Naruto's loyalties. His sensei had never said anything about Naruto being a flight risk. But this was what Tsunade was basically saying. He could understand from her position. There was also the Kayubi to think about. What are some people plotting? I don't know as yet, but they will eventually. She sighed tiredly. Who could have thought that the revival of one small village could unsettle things so much? Well, you could understand why it was destroyed in the first place. Our world depends on Bijuus to balance power, but they had the power of making possessing Bijuus worthless. The Yuzumaki's sealing prowess was something that we can never see in this world. Jiraiya said. If they have come back, now you start questioning, are they going to come for us? A paranoid person like Danzo will also be thinking, will they also look at Kanoha? Why would they turn to us if they have indeed revived? Kanoha did nothing after Yuzu was destroyed. Nothing. Mito was married to the first Hokage, we carry their symbol on our shinobi vests, Kishina was sent to this village for the sole purpose of becoming a Jinchuriki. And yet, when their village was destroyed, we did nothing. Tsunade frowned. That just raises a new problem. We will deal with it when it comes. But if we are looking at it in that way, they have a lot of enemies. She said. We still don't know anything, so best we wait, have you been able to determine Naruto's standing in this? Hiraya shook his head. No, he said. He asks questions when talking about it and poses some things that get me thinking, but always does it objectively not as Yuzumaki. Naruto did that often. He didn't reveal his opinion on most things despite his willingness to engage him in any subject. You have to find out what he thinks Tsunade said. What do you have on Sasuke? 
He follows Orochimaru closely, but I think he has been around a Togaker in the past months. We never saw him anywhere. Orochimaru is the one who has been rather silent. Tsunade looked thoughtful for a moment. Since he has to change hosts every three years we can assume that his current host is starting to wear out. So he is limiting his movement she said. This would be a good moment as any to apprehend him. Gureya nodded. But we don't know where he is a Togaker is a massive web of hideouts. If you go to one, Orochimaru will know and escape. You really can't move unless you know exactly where he is. I expect you to find out soon before he takes Asuke's body. I personally don't care for the brat, but we can't allow Orochimaru to have him. I'm going to be looking around for the next couple of weeks. I will come with something, at least I hope. What of Naruto? I didn't tell you. I sent him to Sunagakur. He will be there for at least a month. If he didn't stop by the desert to train, he should have arrived already. Jiraiya said. You could have said when you came here, Jiraiya Tsunade said with a shake of her head. How long are you going to stay here? I will be gone by tomorrow morning. Jiraiya said. I have to do what I need to do quickly before meeting up with Naruto. I have given him a month, it will be best if I don't keep him waiting by taking too long. Sunagakur, Naruto was in a training ground, it hadn't taken long for him to find it. The whispers of the wind were just too much for him to ignore. The wind just felt so natural, so gentle so powerful. In the places he has been, he has had to use much of his chakra to generate wind jutsus, but here, you could control the wind itself. It was a difficult adventure, but nothing impossible. It could be done. You just had to learn to move with the wind and just be one with it. In this exercise, Naruto usually meditated and allowed himself to measure the speed and density of the wind. You could not simply wish to control something you did not understand and could not measure. He meditated for about two hours before standing up. He took a stance and breathed calmly. His breathing becoming silent, like an assassin. Once he had achieved this, Naruto lifted his hands up and then down again. He twisted around and the wind picked up. He jumped forward and the wind moved with him. He stopped and smiled. He didn't care that someone was watching him. It was only natural for them to observe his movements. He was still a leaf shinobi, and maybe they had become allies once more, but he was using their training grounds without even talking to anyone in their ranks. And by now, they probably knew that he was a Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. If they were willing to let their Jinchuriki run loose in Kanoha, they'd think the leaf would do the same. Naruto shook his head. Wasn't it something that such thoughts hadn't disturbed his breathing? Then again, for how long has he been doing this? The days in the forest of death, the days sitting by the window of his apartment in the leaf. It has been long. Many years. It was only natural for him. But he had forgotten when he started hanging out with people. He shoved the thoughts to the back of his head and returned to his training. He waved his hand across his chest, picking up wind, this time around, with dust. He tried spinning it around, but it fell down. His concentration. Naruto stood motionlessly for a couple of minutes trying to regain his concentration. Once he was satisfied, he started moving. He waved both his hands, moving the gentle air around him. He needed to move with it, he started walking around along with the wind. He did jumps while controlling the wind, moving it with him. He did this for an hour before halting. Naruto waved his right hand front of him in a quick motion. His sand picked up like a wave before it once more returned to the ground. Naruto clapped his hands together while standing motionlessly. Sand picked up around him and then started twisting. It was like a small gentle storm. Naruto was moving around with the storm, dancing around the training ground. He stopped, with the dust returning to the ground, sweat on his forehead, breathing a bit labored. Tamari stared at the blonde she had seen in Kanoha. At first he had been unimpressive, just another brat, but then he did something she never thought would happen. He defeated her brother, even though Gara had even transformed. It was something she could never forget. He had sacrificed himself that day. He could have died. Gara could have killed him, but he defeated Gara and returned her brother to her. Now he was standing there, looking at her, he had grown, he still looked slim, his hair was long, reaching over his shoulders, and it looked like it was never cut because it was messy, but it could be because of the dance he was doing. He was dressed long black pants and a black long-sleeved shirt with a swirling symbol in the front. He had truly grown a bit of something to look at. That was impressive Tamari said walking over to Naruto. Naruto shook his head. He had a small smile on his lips seeing the blonde Kanoichi. It was nothing he said. Just requires a bit of concentration and energy he paused. You don't have a problem if I sit down, do you? I am a little worn out than I look. The exercise took out a lot from me. Damari shook her head. She glanced at him with a curious eye as he settled down. On first look, it appeared that you were controlling the sand, but that isn't it. Naruto glanced up at the blonde. Subaku no Tamari. The eldest of the past Kazika Gay's children. As far as he was concerned, this village has yet to elect a Kage since Rasa was killed. This was the daughter of that man and a brother to the puppet user as well as Gara. 
His memory of her was when she brutalized Tenten during the Chunin exams and looked irritated when Shikaku quit in their match. Oh yes, she did blush when she first saw Sasuke. What is so funny? Tamari more or less demanded. Naruto shook his head. Sorry, I was thinking about something. When we first met, you blushed when you saw my former teammate. Tamari sent the blonde a slight glare. She didn't want to be reminded of that moment. I thought he was good looking and impressive, but he was a rude person she said with a frown. Well, you looked delightful in person to look at first glance, but were rather brutal in your battle. Naruto said. First glances don't always reveal everything do they? Tamari looked away from a moment. He had just complimented her. When was the last time someone did that? Oh yeah, it almost never happened. She was the sister of a bloody killer. Even though Gara had changed to the people of this village, he was still the bloodthirsty killer who killed people just for looking at him a bitter past that just didn't seem to stay away from them. She coughed once before responding. No they are not. I brushed you off at first glance you looked like some weak brat who was just playing shinobi with a headband. But you truly are impressive. No, you shocked me. I didn't think you'd be able to defeat my brother. Naruto smiled. Well, there is really nothing that is impossible he said. Brother you are speaking of him fondly. Last time you were truly afraid of him I guess things really did change after my fight with him. Tamari nodded with a smile. They did I guess that is thanks to you she said. I am a Jinchiriki, perhaps it is the territory Naruto said. You really have a clean eye to be able to tell that I wasn't manipulating sand, but rather wind. You are looking down on Suna's strongest wind user. Tamari said proudly. Oh really Naruto said curiously, a little charming smile on his lips. Tamari thought he was mocking her. She looked at him sternly. What is with that response? Naruto shook his head. No offense he said with both his hands in the air. He looked up in the sky. I have been around and I haven't come across anyone who says they are the best in their village when it comes to wind. Then again, I have mostly been dealing with civilians. I am also a wind user, as you saw, so that makes me curious. Damari stared, looking at him skeptically before finally accepting his response. Any reason you didn't to see us when we were expecting you? This is my first time in this village. Damari stared, unimpressed by Naruto's response. Are you trying to say that you didn't come because you don't know where we leave? She asked, a bit rhetorically. And yet you still found a hotel to stay and even managed to make your way to a training ground she paused. How stupid do you think I am? Naruto didn't respond to that trick question. I wanted to look around the village by myself without my hosts because it is my first time being here. Being able to navigate around unfamiliar places is important for Shinobi. You're not always going to go to places you know. Damari was a bit embarrassed for her rant. She jumped to conclusions. She glanced at him at the corner her eyes, he had his face staring at the sky, his eyes clear. She couldn't read anything from his face, but he had stopped smiling. As sorry it was truly difficult saying that. Naruto shook his head. I led you to it. He said. Damari stared at him for a moment trying to understand the meaning of those words. She couldn't figure it out, so she ended up just shaking her head. It would be of service to us if you came to our house we are your hosts after all. I'm staying here for at least a month besides that, I am more comfortable in my own private space Naruto said calmly. But invite me tonight for dinner and I will come. Damari blinked. It usually goes the other way around, you know she said. Eh, you can't always confine yourself to the norms Naruto said with a shrug. He then held out his right hand. Tamari looked at it for a moment before helping him stand up. I need to rest up a bit and do some reading, but before that, you won't have a problem showing me to your house, yes? He paused. Oh, you still haven't said you are inviting me. Tamari smiled. He was certainly a bit weird. Then again, she didn't deal with people she casually talked to like this. You are invited. She said. Come on she said and started walking away. Naruto walked by her side silently. He only spoke when they arrived at the streets of the village where people could see them. He noticed the reaction of the male population and glanced at Tamari who was walking normally as if nothing was wrong. I'm certain I will have people blocking my path when I go back to my hotel. Tamari glanced at him for a moment before responding. Why? How often do you walk with a young man around here, Tamari? Tamari was caught off guard by the question. It took some time for her to stutter a response. W why are you asking that? Oh. Naruto smiled. Well, that reaction is a bit interesting. I'm guessing you don't do that. Surprised, I am truly surprised. I mean you are a beautiful woman, I thought both lustful and mad and love boys would be throwing themselves at you. Damari frowned. They can't do that. They are afraid she paused, shaking her head. They are afraid of my brother. She didn't explain why. And um thank you. Who for? Naruto knew why, he just wanted her to say it. She was a tough person, but yet still innocent. And he was used to dealing with the perverts that Jiraiya surrounded himself with. Not only that, but in the bars he visited, he saw some crazy things. Alcohol was a mad demon. 
Damari sent Naruto a look. Naruto laughed, raising his hands. Forgive me for that he said. I just thought it would be adorable if you said it yourself he said. But there is no need to thank me. I am not giving you a favor by complimenting you. You just need to smile and appreciate it because that is the truth. He put on a thoughtful look for a moment before speaking again. Well, I can't think Gara would compliment you, and your other brother Naruto shook his head. What of my other brother? Naruto shook his head. Nothing, he said. He didn't step into Tamari's house, he just looked and then turned around to leave. Tamari offered to walk him to his hotel, but he shook his head, it was a gentleman's duty to walk a lady home. Her reaction had been a bit amusing once more. Later night, while there was no emotion in his face, Gara was a little happy knowing that Naruto was going to come to have dinner with him. The blonde had told him some important words that changed the way he views life. He was content with his life as he was, and the voices had died down. He could now sleep peacefully. It was perhaps safe to say he was at peace. He wouldn't go as far as to say he was happy, but all was well. His siblings didn't look at him with fear, and that was fine. He still needed to do a lot to change things for his past behavior. If people hated or fear him, he could understand. His actions hadn't been just, and he could not excuse it by any reason. He had been wrong and he was working on to correct those wrongs. He could only thank Naruto for this change. Why didn't you invite him to come stay with us? Gara asked his sister. He had returned a bit late. Training with Baki and meetings with people who couldn't stand before him without their knees trembling was exhausting and it took too much of his time. I did and he said he was fine being alone Tamari said. Alone, this word got her thinking. Naruto was like Gara. He hadn't been batshit crazy, bloodthirsty and frightening, but he had been lonely. He didn't have family, and he hadn't had friends. A miserable existence the fate of Jinchurikus wasn't pleasant, and with what she saw with her own brother, she could understand. We do have enough room here Gara said. He couldn't understand why Naruto wouldn't want to come here. But if someone didn't want to do something, you didn't have to force them, lest you make them uncomfortable. Well, that is his decision he said. Isn't it fine as things are? Kankuro said. The letter didn't say we had to give him a place to stay. That may be true, but we were asked to make him feel comfortable and look out for him, well in this village Gara said calmly. The woman who helped around the house came up with Naruto to the dining room. She then walked away. Tamari realized Naruto was dressed differently from earlier. He must have been wearing training clothes when she saw him during the day. And his hair didn't look out of place. Naruto please come through Gara's voice snapped Tamari out of her thoughts. Naruto nodded. There was little emotion in Gara's voice, you couldn't even tell if he was smiling or not, if you didn't look properly like an experienced shinobi. Tamari had a smile and Kankuro looked bored. He must be thinking about developing new skills for his puppets, a rare trait of skills for the hidden sand. He sat down next to the bored looking man and faced Gara. Thank you for welcoming me to your home he said. Gara shook his head. You helped me, this is nothing he said calmly. Family dinner. Naruto never had this. He had eaten with the Sandane there and then, but it was not dinner with his blood family. He would never get this chance unless he forms a family of his own. What a miserable existence this was. Although he had said Tamari could invite him, he was suddenly feeling a bit out of place. He wasn't used to this. He rarely even ate with Jiraiya. He really had to stop putting himself into things when he would be have difficulty carrying them out. But he still couldn't let his discomfort show. He had to play his part. He couldn't make this awkward. He tried but he didn't speak much for the first couple of moments. He responded to questions until they finished eating and they moved to another room. How are things in Kanoha anyway? Gara asked quietly. Naruto shook his head. I actually haven't been in the leaf in more than two years he said. Three siblings were surprised. The letter they received didn't say anything and neither had really gone to the leaf since the invasion. It was a difficult time between the villages with negotiations between carried out over their actions in the invasion. But at least it was settled. Why? Naruto looked at Tamari who'd asked. Training trip, he said with indifference. She was still surprised. You haven't been home for that long and you've been just training. What else have you been doing? You know, traveling around. The world is huge, there are many places to visit that is why it is trip Naruto explained lightly. I didn't think you'd need to train more you were already strong even when you were a Genengara said. Naruto shook his head. I did not defeat you because I was stronger than you. You cannot think that. I defeated you because you had a glaring weakness that I could expose. I still lost in the end Gara said. Everyone does have a weakness and people just have a better way of handling it. Power isn't always determined by your physical strength. For the first time since he arrived here, Naruto smiled. Well, that is something I can agree on he said. How are things around here? I never followed the negotiations between the Leaf and Suna. Then again, Genins are not given that kind of information. Wait wait Kankuro said. You're still a Genin? He asked, surprised. Naruto nodded. 
I have been away from the LEAF over the past two and a half years, so I haven't had time to participate in the Chunin exams. I can't imagine myself playing over that field though, I think I laughed at those who were repeat offenders. Damari laughed at this. We are all Jonin she said. But you are not too old to enter the exams. I do think you are much stronger to be ranked a Jenin. Burrito shrugged. I don't usually think about that he looked thoughtful for a moment before speaking once more. Well, I do think it might pose a problem when taking missions. Jenins get to do chores while those higher ranked missions their rank. I'm sure they won't give you chores Gara said. Things have been a bit difficult, but as you can see, we are managing. You are leaving out that they want to make you Kazika Gay Kankuro added in. It is nothing Gara said. Naruto smiled. That was something interesting, Gara the god in Kazika Gay. In what world was he living in? There were certainly more suitable candidates, but he wasn't going to ask why. It wasn't his business. Still it was good that a Jinchuriki with a past such as Gara's was becoming a Kage. He was truly going to become the youngest Kage, and since he doesn't look like a bad person, things would go well with Konoha. Congratulations, Gara, Naruto said. I think that is something special, regardless of the reasons. Certainly, they wouldn't put the Jinchuriki up as a figurehead. There had to be someone they could put in that position. Suna didn't even need to pretend to be strong. It was weak. Its failed invasion in Konoha and proved as much. Not yet Gara said. They are still considering it. This village hasn't had an official Kage since the past Kage. There has been someone who assumed the role of leader, but no Kage I still have to be appointed and do the job worthy of a Kage to be congratulated. You'll do a great job Gara Tamari said reassuringly. You've got us to back you up. Ah, family, Naruto lost his smile. He stayed with the Sand siblings for a little while longer. But once time had come for him to leave, he bid them farewell. It hadn't been a bad night. A bit uncomfortable but he had soldiered through it. There were moments, but it had been quite lovely. Are you going to be using our training grounds often? Naruto nodded. This is also part of my training trip. He said. I'll come and fetch you tomorrow around 9 am. I will show you another training ground where you can train privately. If I feel like it, I might join you. You sounded a bit skeptical when I said I was the strongest wind user in sooner. Naruto smiled. I wasn't he said. But it would be lovely to have you join me, Tamari. You are another wind user after all. Gara alone said he would walk Naruto. Kankuro wanted to follow, but he was told to stay behind, and he obeyed very quickly. Then again, Gara was someone who you listened to carefully when he spoke. They started out silently, but the walk was slow. I actually wanted to talk to you Gara started calmly. I have come to consider you as a friend. And I hope that we can be friends. It can happen Naruto said. There was nothing stopping that from happening. It was either he said he didn't want to make friends, or Gara was just too much that he decided it wouldn't work out. There was nothing wrong with making friends either way. I thought so Gara said. I'm not actually being made Kazika gay because of my abilities, the village council just fears me, and they want to keep me happy and in control by giving me this responsibility. They probably think I will wake up one day and destroy them. My change hasn't done to anything to lift the burden, it has made them even more suspicious since they can't tell what I am thinking. They are putting me here to say, we trust you and want you to lead us, but I know the truth. Even so, I will accept the job. They probably think I will fail, but I won't. I have done many things that I will probably never earn forgiveness for, but I still want to do something different. I want to correct what I did in the past. I cannot erase the past, but at least I want to protect the future. And for those who I never wronged, perhaps they will remember me for the good work I did. But even if they choose to remember my past, that is fine. Naruto was honestly surprised by those words. He was silent for a couple of moments as digested them. Forgiveness is truly difficult, especially when you have filled your heart with nothing but hate. But it only damages those who hate. I have never truly seen anyone who stepped out of the darkness to march in the light in the same way as you. People never truly want to accept that they were wrong, and they are more willing to pretend that the past never happened. It's safer than apologizing. People want to be forgiven, but not willing to do everything to be forgiven, and when they are not forgiven, they turn backwards. You are willing to walk your path even if people do not forgive you, even if people choose to remember you for the dark days that is special. Naruto looked up to the heavens for a moment. You have taught me something important, and I will admire your courage and willingness to stand in the midst of those who hate you and still do good that isn't something people are willing to do. A couple of weeks later, for how long has it been since he came to this village? Weeks, and there was still no word from Jiraiya. The Sanin had a way, don't contact me, I will contact you. He didn't even have a way of contacting the Sanin except through the toads. But the time here hasn't been all disturbing. Quite honestly, it has been refreshing. And he learned a lot of things about this village and the Sand siblings. It was truly apparent, Gara wasn't the most loved. It just reminded him of his past in the Hidden Leaf, but at least Gara could explain why they hated him. 
Nevertheless, he was truly a menace in the eyes of the villagers, and yet, he was still willing to lead this village. It also didn't make things easy for someone like Tamari. She was honestly a beautiful person. Over the past month, he has been training with her, a bit constantly that he had thought he would when she offered to join. She wasn't a bad person and she was truly skilled. But at this stage, she wasn't going to get loved in here. People feared her brother. And he had noticed that Gara was a little protective of her. If someone hurt his sister, the old Gara was certainly going to come out and there would be a sand burial. Thinking of this, Naruto laughed. Someone is going to think you are crazy one day, you know Tamari said with a raised eyebrow. Naruto shrugged a bit carelessly. People will always have an opinion about other people, Tamari. I have to come to learn that with being human, you think about what you see and you form an opinion of it. I generally don't care about what people think of me. The indifference, Tamari realized, it was something he had about a lot of things. He smiled and spoke well, but he was obviously indifferent to a lot of things. He had opinions, but it wasn't always personal. Even now, she really didn't know a lot of things about him personally. Just because he talked and talked didn't mean he opened the doors. No, perhaps the talking was a way to keep you busy. It was strange though, how do you spend so much time with someone and feel like you know them yet realize that you really don't know much about them? What did she know? Personal things. His views. She could never tell. He used I, but there was always a lack of emotion in it, a general lack of connection between what he was saying and himself. Was it purposeful perhaps? You're staring, Tamari. He was looking at her with those clear blue orbs. They were clear, almost pulling you inside, and yet, there was nothing inside. I was thinking. She said. Naruto was careful about these things, so he didn't ask what she was thinking. He could almost assume what she was thinking, but he wasn't sure. I would assume so. That was it. Tamari could never tell what Naruto was thinking. That was the issue. She had no idea what Gara was thinking, but she felt that there was no disconnection between his words and thoughts. She had a nagging feeling that there was with Naruto and it was very big. Are you here for a session or do you find something interesting in my body that you like? Naruto asked smiling. I realize that I won't win beauty contests, but you certainly don't get eye burns from looking at me. Tamari smiled. Somehow, he still managed to be honest. Perhaps at times a bit extremely so, but she liked that about him. I brought my fan. Naruto suddenly leapt into the air. Futon. Great wind breakthrough. He released powerful gusts of winds to the unsuspecting Tamari. The powerful gusts slammed into the blonde Jonin and sent her flying backwards. Tamari flipped several times before landing on a knee. When she looked up, Naruto was right in front of her, he kicked the ground and dust picked up and into her face. Tamari quickly closed her eyes to avoid getting blinded. Naruto twisted around swiftly and kicked Tamari on her forehead, sending him flying backwards once more. He didn't attack her again, he stopped and watched, almost impatiently waiting for her to explode. What the hell was that for? Tamari shouted, glaring at Naruto. I didn't say we could start, you just went on to attack me like that. What if someone thought you were really attacking me? Naruto shrugged a bit carelessly, almost on purpose. I was really attacking you he responded. Tamari responded opening her fan, she swung it a bit violently. The fan released multiple blades of wind that sped towards Naruto. He knew they could chop down a tree the blades. It was that dangerous and yet, Tamari released such a jutsu. She was mad at him for his careless response and was enticing a response from him. Well she was asking for it. He did hand seals. Violent sand storm. It was like a blow of wind. Sand picked up, twisting violently and in great speed. The jutsu didn't travel much. It was short range and could be used for defensive purposes, but the speed of the sand within the storm could blast through human flesh. The jutsu blocked Tamari's before dying down slowly. Tamari flashed behind Naruto, some distance back. She attempted to swing her fan, but Naruto suddenly appeared in front of her. He stopped her from swinging her fan by grabbing it forcefully and then pushed her back. Tamari quickly recovered her balance and stood still. You should really work on your short range skills. I dislike depending on one thing because the moment you lose it, you're out of your comfort zone. Jiraiya taught me kinjutsu, but you'll never see me carrying a sword. However, when the situation comes, I am able to handle it. Tamari was a bit annoyed by that lecture. If you want to see my tajutsu skills, we can have a go. Naruto shook his head, smiling. I've seen it and I don't want to get hit by your fan again he said. Tamari was silent. You're a bit rough though she said massaging her temple where Naruto kicked her. He wasn't very merciful. There were those who said they couldn't hit a woman, Naruto could hit. And he did as hard as he could. Perhaps that was the good thing about him. He didn't take it easy on her. He fought seriously. Gentleness is when we are naked in the bed, Tamari well, unless you like it rough. Bam. The fan landed on his left shoulder. A flustered Tamari was glaring at him, trying to fight off the image Naruto had just painted on her head. It could be that he was a pervert. But he really did like teasing her. Was it because she was innocent? 
I'm going to shove this fan down your throat if you keep saying things like that. While massaging his shoulder, Naruto still laughed. Don't be like that, Tamari. You are not a child anymore. And I am helping you get used to such talk. You are already at that age. Naruto didn't mistake that Tamari was older than both Gara and Kankuro. And of course him. How can you be comfortable saying things like that? You get used to it, Naruto said. My sensei is a man who proudly claims he is a super pervert. If you spend time with him, you'll pick up things. There were days I used to receive nosebleed seeing him with women, but I am used to it. And I hang around that ground as well. They say things a bit for graphically while touching you. Damari had to mentally slap herself from imaging Naruto with a woman touching him while whispering things to his ears. That happens in the bars. I know you go there. Naruto shrugged. I don't go there to meet people or do anything. Why do you go there? Naruto was silent for a couple of moments. He was thinking if he should answer or not. In the end, he responded. Observation maybe drunk people amuse me and I go there for the show they put out. Aside from madness, what would you observe? That madness Naruto said. Madness aside, you see many people in bars happy, sad, miserable lost. People go there for different reasons. Some are running away from their problems, some are busy making deals, some are exchanging information, and some are with the wrong crowd. You see many things in a bar full of people. Why would you want to observe such things if you are not going to do anything about it? Naruto shrugged. Who knows maybe it helps me understand people better maybe I don't even go there for that only, but just want to get drunk and forget about the troubles of being a shinobi he shook his head. If you want to see Gara liven up a bit, take him there and get him drunk. Damari tried to think about it, but she couldn't even form an image because she could never imagine her brother getting drunk. Would he even agree to go to a bar and drinking? No. He would not. If he does, it was just one cup and he'd nurse it for seven days. I don't think that will happen Tamari said. Are you done for the day? Naruto nodded. I have always been curious Tamari started slowly. You are always in your hotel room from noon till late, what do you do alone? Naruto looked up into the sky for a moment before looking straight at Tamari. In my first year at the academy, I had no friends, no one. The kids avoided me and their parents openly told them not to play with me. During lunch breaks I sat alone, being ignored. In the streets, people looked at with contempt so after classes, I would immediately go back to my apartment and sit there. What would be the purpose of going out if people didn't want me in the streets? Naruto asked before shaking his head. Perhaps these days I do it out of habit more than anything. That was perhaps the first time he said something about himself without looking indifferent, without shrugging. She felt those were his thoughts, his experience, that was the question he had asked himself back then. Tamari felt sad. Yet, she felt there was something she was missing. Damari felt sad, realizing just how miserable life had been for him. What were you thinking about while alone? Naruto merely smiled. Damari realized. She wasn't going to get a response. You ever thought of breaking that habit? They, I hold things of the past too closely just can't seem to let go easily Naruto said. There was the indifference, yet this time, Tamari didn't feel annoyed by it. It isn't that much of a habit, is it? Perhaps not Naruto responded calmly. A couple of minutes later. When Naruto arrived at the hotel, he found a message waiting by the window. Jiraiya, he thought. He opened it. Tenzaku Gai in seven days. He could do that. But he had to leave as early as tomorrow. He wanted to travel slowly by the fire country. He could speed through the river country and rest once he crosses the border. They didn't leave. Anzo, we have to do something about the Kayubis Jinchiriki Kaharu said to the Warhawk. It has been more than two years and he isn't coming back Tsunade isn't even saying on the matter. Anzo didn't react visibly to this. This was a troublesome issue, yet nothing new. But with Tsunade present, he couldn't get close to Naruto. Well, with the blonde outside of Kanoha, he could make his move. Jiraiya wasn't always with the Jinchiriki. The Sandame had stonewalled all attempts to get close. He had blocked him and threatened him. His former teammate was willing to turn a blind eye on most things, but when it came to Naruto, he had been immovable like a mountain. There had been no forgiveness, even Kaharu had been told that she wasn't to bring out Naruto when they talked unless she was asking his health or how he was doing in class. If she persisted, she would be sacked as an advisor. He is a flight risk and we cannot afford to lose the Kayubi. We have already lost the Sharingan, we can't afford this loss Danzo didn't generally care for the boy, he cared for the Kayubi. He is currently in Sunagakur training there. Soon to have they selected a Kage, yet. No, he said. If I had my way, we would have just taken control over it. There wouldn't be a need for a Kage, but Tsunade has been unwilling. Well, for someone who has fought in wars, Tsunade can be quite naive at times Kaharu said. What are we going to do about the Kayubi's Jinchiriki? I have a plan Danzo said. Naruto didn't know how it came to this, but he was standing at the gates of Suna, with Tamari beside him, Gara holding out his right hand. 
the man who was going to become God in Kazikage, was being guarded by a man he learned to be Baki, the man who has been the sensei of the sand siblings since they were young. He was their sensei when they went to Kanoha for their Chunin exams, and he was helping Gara prepare for his role as Kazikage. When he informed them he would be leaving, he was told to wait for a day. They would make preparations to send Tamari to Kanoha so that she could inform the village of Gara's appointment. She was the one who would be handling dialogues between the two villages. Naruto had waited. Gara had asked him. I was just a single day anyway. There was no smile on Gara's lips when Naruto shook his hand. I hope you come again soon to visit us, Naruto. I will try to make time. Naruto said. It wouldn't be any time soon. He was going back to his journey. His training with Jiraiya and once he was satisfied, he would think about Kanoha and what he had to do. There was no hurry to go back. He was content as things were, and the San in training him wasn't complaining either. You will always be welcome. You have been a good friend. Gara said. Please take care of my sister along the way. This time, Naruto smiled. I will try to do that, but she is plenty strong he said, eyeing the blonde sister of the Kazikage. For some reason, Tamari looked annoyed. Come on, we don't want the sun to set while in the desert. She said to Naruto. I will be safe, Gara. You don't have to worry. Aki shook his head. You really have to be careful, Tamari. There are elements within the hidden leaf that don't like the fact that things are being done this way. You never even know that other forces are watching. Someone might just decide to do something just to make sure that Suna and Kanoha never become allies. Naruto could understand what the man was saying. Dangerous creeps were always lying in the shadows, and it was truly interesting that the man was willing to say in front of him, a Kanoha shinobi. For sure the man probably didn't trust him, but was going with the flow because the sand siblings trusted him. Which forces wouldn't want the relationship to work? No, within Kanoha, the dark forces only wish for Suna to surrender itself to Kanoha. There were such forces. There was a saying, everyone has darkness. Kanoha had its darkness and so did Sunagakur. The difference was how people dealt with their darkness. Damari pulled Naruto away before Gara could say anything. Naruto had noticed that the Jinchuriki hadn't been particularly pleased with what Baki had said. If anything, it looked like he was contemplating on having someone else go with her as her guard. As they sped through the desert, Naruto glanced at the silent Tamari. I never asked, how are you dealing with the change? Your brother usually threatened you, but now is very protective. I'm just happy that I have my younger brother again. He was a very gentle child before our father sent people to kill him. Our father viewed things based on their value, even people. If he no longer saw value in something, he would get rid of it. He tried doing that to Gara, but my brother would kill all the people, and so he stopped trying to do it. It was easy to understand why Gara turned in the way he did. To have your own father try to kill you because he viewed you as a failure. But it wasn't Gara's fault. It was their crappy few injutsu users who couldn't devise a seal capable of allowing Gara to use Shukaku's chakra without the Bijuu influencing him. The Yuzumaki would never create something so pathetic. Few injutsu in some other villages was truly cheap imitations of the work of art that his clan was able to create. The seal that housed the Kayubi was an example of this. It may have been used by his father, but the basis of it came from work of the Yuzumaki, something that his mother taught the Yandame. He looked displeased. Naruto smiled. Got lost in thought he said. I don't know what I would if my own father was trying to kill me. Then again, had it not been for some of the Sandame's laws, I might have just hanged myself. Damari frowned. He could say something like that and yet sound so indifferent. Regardless of how you thought of it, that was just sad. Do you really have to say something like that in that tone? This is because it is the past, Tamari. That aside, I have come to understand that only hopeless people will think of ending their lives. My situation wasn't hopeless, I'd just yet to see the light. Naruto said a bit firmly. I'd like to camp somewhere closer to the border of the fire country, can we speed up a bit? You do know that I don't have as much stamina as you do right? Well, if you get tired, I will carry you Naruto said with a smile. I'd rather you not. Naruto just laughed and they ran through the desert, taking water breaks in there and then. By the time they reached the river country, the sun had already set and they stopped running. They walked slowly for a couple of hours before they finally reached a place where there was a stream of water and decided to rest close to it. Fire was set and tents were put up. Naruto collected the wood and did the fishing while Tamari watched. He seemed like he was used to this kind of thing. His tent though, it was big and she had peeked inside, it wasn't the kind of thing Shinobi carried. It looked just way too comfortable for camping through the night. Then again, this wasn't to make you suffer. You couldn't mistake the symbols on the tent. It was the symbol she saw on every shirt he wore. Where has she seen it again? Tamari couldn't recall, but it was obviously something that had a meaning to Naruto. She was alone with Naruto, only separated by the burning fire that kept their bodies warm. Tamari hadn't really thought such a moment would come. She hadn't thought it would feel so weird. They were alone. No witnesses. 
He was the person who said things that provoked her to think thoughts she would never think. It worried her. It wasn't her physical safety that worried her but her emotional state. Naruto's face was strange, since he walked away down the water stream and disappeared, he was strange. She couldn't see it clearly, but she could feel that there was something different. I would thought you'd be saying all kinds of things now that we are alone Tamari said. It wasn't that she wanted him to tease her. She didn't want it. But she had nothing better to say to break the awkward silence. It was the first time she was experiencing this moment with him. Then again, she had never been so alone with him. Naruto's eyes moved towards Tamari they could clearly see her. He could feel her breathing. She wasn't calm. She was having a difficult time. He could feel the slight tension in the air around them. Perhaps it was his silence. He'd never been so silent with her. You have your guard up, I'm waiting till you get sleepy before pouncing. Tamari smiled hearing those words. It didn't make her uncomfortable it made her happy that he had responded positively. That reminds me, I'm sleeping with one eye open. Can't trust you not to peek while I sleep, can I? Naruto shook his head, wagging his index finger. You're thinking peeking, I'm thinking you waking up in the morning next to a nude me. Tamari shivered at the thought. She fought hard to avoid picturing him naked. She was glad for the fire that he couldn't see the pink tint on her cheeks. Now that she thought of it, she hadn't even seen his chest. He really did like covering up his body. Forget his chest, she hadn't seen his arms up his to his elbow. He always wore long-sleeved clothing. I'd have to be dead for you to get that clothes, even if you do get that clothes, when I arrive in Kanoha, I will also be sending my condolences for their loss. Naruto laughed. You wouldn't want to kill your brother's friend, would you? Damari shrugged. I'm sure he'd understand if I say his so-called friend was trying to violate me. Naruto looked thoughtful. Well, I can see him nodding, saying that you did the best thing the blonde said. We will separate here, Tamari. I won't go anywhere further with you. I have to turn towards Takumi. I could escort you near Kanoha and still be able to meet Jiraiya in time, but I'm you'll be safe. He was serious. Tamari was a bit surprised for a moment. Not at those words but the seriousness of his tone. It sounded like she was talking to someone in power, someone who was dishing out instructions that were not to be questioned. Why? Naruto knew, she was asking why he didn't want to get close to Kanoha. She was curious. My training trip wasn't supposed to take long, but it has been over two years, and we are working towards a third. They probably want me to return, but Jureya and I still have many things to do. If I go near, I will be forced to get into Kanoha. The moment I step through those gates, I won't be able to leave again. My training trip will be over. That was reasonable, Naruto thought. For some reason, Tamari thought he just didn't want to return to Kanoha. She couldn't understand why. He didn't talk much about the leaf. He almost never said anything unless you asked. She didn't want to be nosy, but she was curious. She nevertheless didn't ask him. She didn't want to be a bother. I see Tamari said she paused and stared. She wanted to ask, but she didn't know how to say it. When do you think we will meet again? At that moment, Naruto realized he had grown a little too attached to this person than he would have liked. He had trained with her for many days. He had shared many laughs with her. He had seen her smile. He had seen her flustered. And honestly, he thought it was adorable. His smile would only make her angry. But that was fine. That was Subaku no Tamari. Naruto smiled. Tamari saw it. When Naruto realized he was smiling and he had been caught, he didn't drop it. He was used to her presence, her curious glances. She was always trying to figure him out, trying to study him. Perhaps it was dangerous for him. But he was okay with it because she never asked. She never tried to sneak behind him to see what he was doing. She was curious, but she knew not to pry. Naruto didn't hate her. But what? He shook his head. He was overthinking things once more. He did like people at a distance despite openly chatting to them, didn't he? Was it because he always wanted to be in charge? Once more, he shook his head. I don't really know, but if you miss a training partner, let me know. I don't even have a way of contacting you if you are not going to be in Kanoha Tamari said with a frown. Sometime in five or six months, we should be making way towards Kanoha. Jiraiya said we'd have to discuss the conclusion of things, but we will surely see each other, soon Naruto said. That was the truth. He would see her again. But, Lord, he was walking into another dangerous situation. But this seemed fine. Her brother looked like decent person. She was a pleasant person. He had his issues. He could work on them. And nobody needed to get caught up in it. Naruto smiled inwardly, was it concern for other people? He has truly become soft in the inside. He could blame the Sandame Hokage for this change. He had stopped caring. But Team 7 made him see things. It made him experience new things. Perhaps he enjoyed those fleeting moments a bit too much than he should have. Connections. Friendship, they were never meant to be lasting, he was never meant to be attached. Damari smiled. I hope so she said. A moment of peace settled in. She enjoyed it. How different her life has become over the past month. 
it was amazing how things could change. But then again, she never had a boy who wasn't her brother close to her. She had someone she could call a friend. Someone outside of her family. It was a good feeling. She glanced over at Naruto, his eyes were on the fire. She cast her eyes at the burning flames. She listened to the sound the wood made was they burnt. She laughed. She was amused at herself. When did she start doing this? She really needed to get a hold of herself. And you were saying people would think I was the crazy one Naruto said after a moment. Damari realized she'd make a sound. She wasn't embarrassed she just shrugged carelessly. Oh, brother, she was picking up his habits. I couldn't help myself. She was glad Naruto didn't ask. That happens he simply said. Say, Naruto Tamari started, staring deeply into his eyes. When he stared back, she shook her head. She could ask another day. Never mind she said. I'll ask when I see you again. It was unlikely to be soon, but Naruto wasn't that curious to know what she wanted to ask. His mind was already filled with too many things. I'll remind you I'm going to check the parameter he stood up. Take my tent for the night, I will keep watch. Not for the whole night, wake up me so that you can also rest. Naruto nodded. I will do that. He would not. He did not. Damari only woke up early in the morning, and when she woke up, he was gone. He wasn't taken. He had just left her. Yes, she thought it like that. He had left her. There was only a letter beside her. A couple of words that didn't give her comfort over the loss of her companion. Tamari took the letter and hugged it. For the first time since he came to Suna, Tamari felt lonely. She felt alone. A Megakur, a shinobi world was ruled by power, it was those with power that determined everything. Nagato had power, a Megakur had power. The great five nations were powerful. That was why their wars always affected even the smaller villages. They were always caught in the crossfire, they always get crushed under the weight. A Megakur had wounds from wars it did not start, wars it had no part of. He had pain, memories that he could not remove from his head. Because those with power used it recklessly and they suffered from it. But they would suffer no more. A Megakur would not suffer anymore. This village, this home of his it was firmly in his hands. The grip of the past dynasty he had crushed it. There wasn't anything tangible that remained of it. Nothing. He eradicated it. It was nothing but just memories from the minds of people. But that would, too, disappear. This village had a massive population. But it didn't have many shinobi. That was why it was considered weak. That was why it was indeed weak in the past. But it was weak no longer. Over the past five years, he had been building its military strength. It had shinobi who could fight, shinobi who could stand behind to withstand the might of any hidden village. Inchurikus were not a consequence. He could handle them because he was strong. Conan Nagato glanced over his shoulder as his partner walked towards him. Itachi just left the village did he say anything to you? Conan nodded. Sometimes the Ichiha had a tendency to walk away from the village without saying anything. The journey always ended up in the Fire Nation. She had always assumed he was going to check on the hidden leaf, but he never said anything, and they never asked him. He is going to offer his services to Yuzu Konan handled the Akatsuki, while Nagato handled duties of the village. She handled all mission requests made to the Akatsuki, and she assigned them to whoever she thought was suitable. But Yuzu was always specific in their demands. It was always Itachi. Nagato went there occasionally. I hope he is careful this time around. Last time he returned before the mission was over because he had put some people under Jinjutsu Nagato shook his head. The Ichiha was smart. But those people in Yuzu were not to be underestimated. Even if Itachi was powerful, those people were not the ones to be fooled easily. The visual prowess was a thing to behold, but the eyes in that village saw everything. They said they made preparations this time around. He is going to stay in places he has to see I doubt he has seen anything they don't want him to see. Nagato nodded to this. We are going to be doing more missions these days. But it will attract attention he said. He was referring to Aim Shinobi. But it can't be avoided. We are ready for the world. The village will however remain closed. It isn't time yet. Iwa is trying to hire the Akatsuki to look into Yuzu. Any other village trying? Conan shook her head. At least we know who the enemies are, but we can't afford to do anything at this time. The risk is too great for us. But if they try anything, they will be crushed. Nagato said. We are going to change this world, and there will be no one who will stand in the way. Those who try would be crushed. We have been wrong too often and because these people have power, they have always gotten away with it. We shall no longer allow them to make us experience pain. If they tried, it was them who would be made to experience the pain they have felt. Perhaps they would understand. Maybe they would not. But this world had to be changed. This order of things would be changed. And they would do it. They would not fail. Conan looked down at the streets. This was at least something they had managed to do. Secure a Megakur. The village that once reigned constantly now saw daylight. It was a beautiful sight. It was their home. The home they fought to protect when Yuhiko was still alive and the home they now controlled. 
Izushi Agakar was a good friend of theirs. They could not accept any mission that required taking action against the land. It had already seen destruction, it would not see another one. What do you think will be Jiraiya Sensei's response when he hears that we are still alive? For some one reason, Conan felt like asking the question. Their sensei. The man who taught them ninjutsu. The man who showed them love. He was a good sensei. A good person. When his teammate offered to end their lives, he offered to give them tools for survival. I wonder Nagato said. But what he says is irrelevant. We have our dreams, Conan. No one will stand in the way. Not even Jiraiya. Later that day, Hidden Leaf, Damari had indulged the thought that Naruto had been watching her all the way. She had felt like she was being watched along the way. But when she stepped into the leaf, she felt like she was really being watched. The eyes were not friendly. She could feel it and it made her uncomfortable. She really wanted to get to her business then just get away from the village. Aki had been right, there were forces that were not pleased with how things were progressing. But at least no one in the village was glaring at her. They seemed to be over the invasion. Then again, Suna had really lost as well. Their leader. Her father had been murdered by Arachimaru. Tamari wasn't particularly sad by it. Even so, had he been alive, things would have been difficult. The leaf might have forced them to surrender. It was different because they knew and understood that they had been tricked. Tamari glanced at the person beside him. The Nara she fraud in the Chunin exams. He was the one who welcomed her. He really looked happy with the silence. He was part of the team that entered the exams with Naruto. She wanted to ask, but she bit her lip. She didn't want to pry. Naruto never spoke, it was better to keep things as they were. You people are rather forgiving. If she was able to walk freely here, then her brother would be welcomed when he comes to this village. It wasn't a bad thing it was good and she couldn't have it anyway. She wished Suna was like that. She wished people accepted her brother as she has, but she had to forget about it for now. It wasn't going to happen anytime soon. She still held hope nonetheless. She did wonder though, did they treat Naruto in the same way? Tamari shook her head, she was thinking too much about that person who left her without a word. Now she was angry. She just wanted to hit him. Not everyone Shikamaru thought for a moment. I think they just realized it would be too bothersome to hold grudges. Suna didn't cause the Sandame's death, it was Arachimaru he paused. It is possible that they are blaming everything on Arachimaru. Well, you got to have someone to blame for everything Tamari said. The most convenient choice was always the best that was how people behaved. That was how people did things. In this case, it isn't exactly wrong Shikamaru said. Do this, Tamari nodded. Arachimaru had been the one fighting the Sandaim Hokage, and he was the one who murdered her father. If there was someone to hate for the invasion, it was him. Sun Agakur still held some fault nevertheless. They still played their part. Her father had negotiated with Arachimaru. He wasn't killed before plans to invade Konoha were made, he was killed when going to Konoha for the finals of the Chunin exams. The rest of the walk towards the Hokage Tower was in comfortable silence. Tsunade stared at Tamari for a long minute before looking at Shikamaru. Thank you Shikamaru. I will call you if there is something else. Hi the Nara said lazily before walking away. Tamari was amused. To her, it seemed like he was saying, I really hope you don't call me. Please it, Tamari. Tsunade said to the Kinoichi. The goddamn Hokage leaned back to her chair and stared at the young woman. She really had nothing bad to say to her about Sunagakur. They had already discussed things with those in charge at the moment and she was pleased with how things have progressed. She didn't want any bloodshed. She didn't hold any grudges. But it was a fact that Suna had betrayed them even though they were allies. She almost snickered at the thought that after betraying them, Arachimaru had gone to betray them. It was like this in this world. You could never trust anyone with your back. You betray people and others will betray you. She still had to work around that issue. Suna had betrayed them. The village was struggling with resources and it did depend on the hidden leaf on many things. However, Kano has sold them cheap things of low quality because that was what they could afford. There was no charity. Even Kanoha had to look after itself. But their situation didn't excuse their actions. Tsunade really didn't want to talk about Suna and Kanoha. That was settled. But she knew Danzo wasn't happy. She knew he was probably plotting something. His suggestion had been to even take the Sand siblings and make them Kanoha shinobi. Ridiculous. How long are going to stay here? I plan to return tomorrow morning. Tamari responded calmly. She took out a scroll and handed it to the goddamn Hokage. She didn't have to answer anything, she just had to give the woman the scroll. That was her mission. Tsunade nodded. Please see me before you leave she said. I need to make preparations for your departure. I will have a team take you back to Suna. She said in a serious tone, but she would not explain anything or her reasons for doing what she was doing. Damari frowned, but she wasn't going to ask. She knew why. Someone had really been watching her since she stepped into this village. This was really a dangerous world, wasn't it? Kanoha was big, it was to be expected to have so many forces. I was told that Naruto was in Suna. 
Damari nodded. He stayed with us for a month. He left after receiving a message from Jurei Asama she was surprised with her response. She didn't say that she left Suna with him and wasn't planning on saying it unless the Hokage led her to it. I'm going to ask some questions, you don't have to feel pressured or forced to answer them, Tsunade started calmly. Who did he spend time with? Was he alone? What was he doing? She was worried, Tamari realized. It was like a mother asking about her child. The look her mother had. This woman did care for Naruto. She really did. But Naruto never spoke about it. He never said anything. You wouldn't think there were people who cared for him and the leaf with how he avoided it and kept silence on the subject. Naruto had spoken to her freely and she had a choice here. Tamari decided. She decided it was best to relieve the goddamn Hokage of her worries. I spent time with him I was the one who was actually training with him. I saw him every day. Tsunade's eyes lit a bit brightly. I only hear things from Jiraiya, but not from another set of eyes who have sat with him. When he left here, things weren't great. That is why I allowed him to go on the training trip. She paused. How close did you get to him? I don't know how, but we talked to Mari managed a small shrug. Just like how Naruto would respond to the question. God, she was copying his tendencies. Naruto didn't have a lot of people around him when growing up and trusting people was a little difficult. But when he got into a team, he trusted his teammates they were friends, but the person who shared his loneliness betrayed that trust and nearly killed him. Damari now understood things, she understood why he looked so welcoming yet not very close. She could only think that it was the Achiha who did it. What a horrible thing to do. But Naruto still didn't look like someone who had trust issues. He talked to people, and he smiled. He hadn't pushed her away. Damari nodded. He is fine after spending time with him, I can't really say there is something bothering him. She would not say though that he didn't talk about many things personally. She would not say he never brought up Kanoha or the Achiha who nearly killed him. The Achiha who betrayed his trust. I want some details. Tsunade said. It was more like an order than a request. For a moment, Tamari thought of rejecting the request before nodding her head. She could indulge the goddamn. Perhaps she would get to see how the experience affected her. Talking about it. Sharing her experience with Naruto to someone who was listening so attentively, Tamari felt like she was just breathing new air. It was a good experience. It made her free. She didn't say everything. She kept some details to herself. It seems that he is doing well, Tsunade said with a smile. I was really worried. The goddamn looked at the scroll she had been given. She looked at it for a couple of moments. She'd already received a report that it might be so. It was perhaps good that this was happening now. A blessing that Naruto had befriended Tamari. She was going to be the Kazikage's sister. They could use her. If things were not going smoothly, she could demand a political marriage. That would bind the hidden sand from doing anything. She could use this card to silence some critics over the way she has handled things. She wasn't going to do it, she was going to wait and see. Her brother is still young I haven't met him, so I am going to be honest, what do you think? Tsunade asked the blonde wind user. He is capable and Baki has been preparing him over the past year, she would not say that he was simply being put in his position because the council was afraid of him. But that was Suna's internal problem. They would deal with it. If Kano have found out about it, they would work it out. But this didn't mean he didn't have the qualities. He had them and he would do a great job as Kazika Gay. That isn't very reassuring, but I have seen enough not to underestimate someone because they are young, Tsunade said. I will write to him. Kanoha is still open to trading with Sunagakur, but we will have to revise things a bit. Tamari managed a smile. I will pass on the message she said. A couple of days later, when Naruto walked into the room he had rented in this gambling town, he found himself standing face to face with blood red eyes. Sharingan. Those eyes. Those damned eyes. Naruto really didn't like them. He wouldn't go as far as to say he felt nothing but contempt for them it would be extreme. He knew this person. This was the elder brother of Sasuke. He should be afraid. He should be worried about the motives of this person. But Naruto was not. He was only curious, but he didn't show it on his face. His heart was beating a little fast, but he wasn't concerned. He needed to silence it. It was a dead giveaway. He walked past the man and settled by the window. Jiraiya was already in town. It was only a moment of time before the Sanin found him. Maybe he was already on his way. Itachi watched Naruto carefully. He should be surprised too by the blonde's reaction to his presence, but he wasn't. He didn't even raise an eyebrow. He just watched the blonde walk past him. If Itachi wasn't seeing the blonde, he wouldn't say he was there. He had managed to completely erase his presence. It was remarkable. The tools a trained silent killer. He didn't have much time with the blonde, Jiraiya was probably charging to this place he stood. I want to speak to you, Naruto-kun. Naruto didn't turn to the Achiha, he merely responded in a cold tone. You have my ears. But not his eyes. Though, I find it interesting that a known S-rank criminal would be interested in just a mere genin. 
I think we both know you are more than that Itachi responded calmly. I once served as an Anbu in Konoha, and the Sandane trusted me very much. Naruto glanced at the Ichiha through the corner of his eyes. I know I did see you once or twice. He did speak very highly of you, even after the massacre then again, he was still fond of Orochimaru despite everything. The blonde paused. Like I said, you have my ears but I may not respond. If I want to get answers from you, I'd be forceful Itachi said calmly. It is about Sasuke-kun. Naruto said nothing. I know you were friends with him I know things happened and he ended up joining the ranks of Orochimaru. He is training now, trying to gain power you once tried to get him to return to Konoha, would you try again? Naruto faced the Ichiha with a look of indifference. Why? That baffled Itachi, but he didn't let it show. You no longer consider him a friend it seems there was still no emotion in Itachi's tone. Naruto looked away from Itachi without saying a word, after a couple of moments he responded. I can't really figure out why you are asking. I don't even know why you left him alive. I was thinking perhaps you just couldn't kill your younger brother he shook his head. Sasuke decided that joining Rachimaru was the best possible cause for him he wanted his revenge whether Rachimaru allows him to get it or not is his problem. I would be happy if he somehow kills Rachimaru, but I won't thank him. Rachimaru once tried to take my body if he is going to use the same technique as he did with me, he will fail Itachi said. I merely wanted to confirm if you were still willing to save my brother. At this point, even if he does get his revenge, he is likely to dive deep further into darkness. The man who massacred his entire clan shouldn't care, now should he? Naruto said. You shouldn't stay of course, Itachi. It makes you look concerned, and that isn't the Itachi the world knows. Itachi narrowed his eyes. Those words were dangerous. Naruto has grown. He did observe the blonde a bit. He had been close to Sasuke, after all. The way they parted wasn't great, but still, he didn't expect the blonde to be so cold. What do you want from me, Itachi? I don't think you have come here for Sasuke. I have been around people, and when they want something, you sense it. This wasn't even the kind of crowd he hanged around with. Having such people with curious glances was even dangerous for him. Never did he even think that he would end up getting a visit from this infamous man. Kanoha once worshipped him, but now he was just another Orochimaru. Pitiful. But Naruto didn't care much. He wasn't even fond of the Achea. For some reason, the Bijuu inside of him seemed to appreciate his dislike for those damned corrupted eyes that had the power to bend your will. I wanted to confirm something. Did you? If Naruto was curious, he didn't show it. There was still an air of indifference around him as he responded. Itachi did not respond to the question. He asked a question of his. As far as I am concerned, you are the only other Yuzumaki who has no connections to the revived Yuzu, have they not approached you? I would find it curious if they have not. Naruto glanced at the Achiha for a moment. This was an interrogation. A soft one. Those eyes were watching every inch of his body, waiting for any sign of deception. Have you been searching for the Yuzumaki, Itachi? You're not answering my question. I'm not obligated to answer when you ignore mine Naruto said with a shrug. I have been to Yuzu and I have traveled around a lot. I haven't come across any Yuzumaki. The world is big, Itachi. The survivors of the Yuzumaki clan scattered across the elemental nations after the destruction Naruto said. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? What? In asking that, Itachi realized Naruto hadn't answered his question and he was steering him away from it. His eyes narrowed dangerously. This was no normal teenager. He was at least able to confirm that. But Yuzu would not show him anything. Maybe someone would slip in something to him, but it was unlikely. Yuzu and Kanoha were like brother and sister, and yet, none of the survivors ever took refuge in the hidden leaf Naruto paused for effect. That is a puzzle, isn't it? It is Itachi said. I will also reveal a little secret since you don't want to cooperate with me. I am indeed a criminal and massacred my clan, but I still kept contact with the Sandame Hokage. You see, when it came to you, he did not trust any of the Anbu. He contacted me. I was there when you two visited Yuzu. Naruto turned to face the Ichiha. The mask on his face didn't slip, but he did have a raised eyebrow. Well, that is interesting. Well, at least no one in Konoha knows about it. He turned his eyes outside once more. What else do you know? Admittedly, nothing. This is why I came here. You were interested in Yuzu back then, but now there is nothing. Why? Itachi asked. My time is up, but we shall talk again hopefully. The Achiha disappeared from the room after those words left his lips. A few moments later, Jiraiya burst into the room, looking worried. Naruto turned around to face the Sanin. I'm not paying for that damage. He said. Naruto was fine, but there was no sign of the Achiha. Jiraiya frowned. He was late. But at least there was nothing wrong. Then again, he didn't exactly think that Naruto would have been harmed. What would Itachi have against his student? The Achiha was a member of the mercenary group Akatsuki, but they wouldn't be after Naruto, would they? Glancing at the door on the floor, Jiraiya sighed. 
I didn't book the room, I can't pay. I was never even here. Naruto sent the Sanin a look. You will regret many things, Sensei that said, he looked back at the window. What took you so long? I got held back some someone Jiraiya said with a grin. The young beautiful lady and you just couldn't resist until you realized she was being manipulated, Naruto said with a shake of his head. You can be remarkable sometimes, Sensei. You were only saying that because you didn't see her, Naruto Jiraiya said. He was firm, anyone would have been distracted. But sometimes Naruto did act like he didn't recognize beauty when he saw it. Now that Jiraiya thought about, he never saw the blonde with a lady, even though he visited bars. He always came back alone. He was truly missing the joys of life, and this was his student. I'm sure I wouldn't have behaved in the same way as you Naruto said with a shrug. When are you going to follow me? It would be nice to show you off. I did it once, never again Naruto said with a slight shake of his head. How was your work? Jiraiya looked thoughtful for a moment. There was no harm done with Itachi, so they would discuss this issue some other time. He would not forget. For now, he was happy. He didn't want to ruin the moment even. Fruitful the Sanin said calmly. I heard you got close to a certain blonde head a grin plastered his face. Naruto faced Jiraiya for a moment. That look. The smile. It suggested something, but Naruto wasn't going to think too deeply about it. Tamari is a delightful woman. But that was that. Jiraiya shook his head. I don't have to teach you how to get close since you already know the trade, but if you keep watching the birds, they will fly off. You must make a move. He said seriously. You are still too young to talk about marriage, but you need to have fun, Naruto. You mean your kind of fun, Naruto said. I am not exactly a boring person in case you forgot. You know, I just am more controlled than you. Certainly, the blonde knew how to act. He could sit at a bar and laugh with a couple of ladies while drinking, but he would end it there. Jiraiya could confidently say the blonde knew the body of a woman, and yet, he never seemed eager. The toad sage sighed and settled on the bed. Sunade was as asking about you. I'm sure she was. As she does in her letters you have a tendency to leave them open so that I can comment. And you don't. You pretend as if you didn't see anything. I don't pretend anything. I just keep my thoughts to myself. Besides, if you didn't ask for my opinion, I can't give it Naruto said. How long do we have? She didn't stipulate and I'm honestly fine with the way things are. I failed to do so many things in your younger days. I'm watching you grow, we are close, I am happy with that. But things had to come to an end. Nothing was forever in this world. He knew that. He had experienced it too many times. This end would be on his terms and he would be content with it. There was nothing that could take away the memories he shared with Naruto. There was nothing. The memories were his and he would make some more. But we are still wanted in Kanoha Naruto said. There was no emotion in his tone. And he wasn't looking at the Sanin. Jiraiya couldn't tell if the blonde was displeased. Yes Jiraiya said with a small nod. We have to cover your Katen training and the Kyuubi's chakra. And we have to do missions for you to earn yourself more experience in battle. If the toads are willing, you will learn Sinjutsu. Well that is quite the schedule Naruto said. We can do fire and Kyuubi's chakra simultaneously. It isn't my favorite meal to do two training exercises at once, but since we don't know when we will end our time together, we don't have a choice Naruto said. Jiraiya could work with that. Are we going to talk about your skills in Fuinjutsu? His tone was serious. I don't usually push you for answers, but it is important if we are going to learn controlling the Kyuubi's power. Naruto glanced at Jiraiya at the corner of his eyes before looking at the streets. This town was lively. This wasn't his first time here. He'd come here looking for the old hag. What of my Fuinjutsu skills, Sensei? I put it wrongly Jiraiya then corrected himself. What is your knowledge regarding Fujinjutsu? You might not be able to apply the art in practical use, but Sensei gave you many books about the art to read. He even had me hand over scrolls I have obtained from Minato. He would not tell me what it was for, but I suspected it was for you. He did give me things to read. Naruto said quietly. The third had me consume as much knowledge about Fuinjutsu as I could filter through my head. He said it was fine even if I didn't understand. I just had to consume the knowledge. He said it had to be on my head. When I was alone, sitting like this, I could search my memories and try studying the structures of seals. Since it was difficult, it would be enough to preoccupy my time. He had two reasons for this. He said it was my legacy. It was the legacy of the Yuzumaki. The second was that he wanted me to think about something useful. He didn't want me filling my head with thoughts of my loneliness. Because I could concentrate, it was easy just thinking of diagrams I couldn't tell describe. At the same time it was frustrating. But I also needed something to think about, so I filled my mind with those diagrams, arrays, drawings. Jiraiya was silent for a long minute as he absorbed those words. He knew of Naruto's habit. He knew the blonde could sit by the window for hours without moving. Why haven't you attempted learning it? Just because your mother was good at it doesn't mean you'll naturally be good at it Naruto responded calmly. 
Those were the words the old man used to tell me. Gureya sighed. Do you know the secret of the necklace Tsunade gave you? It is a sealing technique I know, but it can easily be crushed because it works best with Mokuten. It is the Shadai's jewel after all Naruto said. What of it? Gureya shook his head. That is just another measure we have in case you lose control. But I don't know what it takes for it to activate. It didn't activate on four tails. There were still five my tails missing Naruto said in a flat tone. We will work something out. Those tags you created are still useful. Yes Jureya said with a nod. But he was looking for something a bit more permanent. Those seals required one to get close and Naruto couldn't apply them himself. There had to be something that could be activated automatically or through a hand sign. He would think of drawing up something. But at this stage, his mind could only think of a chakra suppression seal. How was the situation in Sunagakur? Ah, he did have a side mission. And now he had to give a briefing. Gara is going to be made Kazikage. I don't know when they will do the coronation. But you can rest assured, he is a good person who won't think of doing what his father did. I think by now they already know their village is weak. I didn't actually think that they would make him Kage Jureya said with a shake of his head. He is still just a brat. And Suna is a mess. Last time I checked, the Wind Daimyo was no longer even funding it. Their failed invasion hasn't even earned them new allies. That may be true, but Gara is willing and has a lot to prove Naruto said. You thought they'd put Baki. Gureya nodded. He was the Kazikage's right-hand man. Whatever he did, that man was in it too. The man explained. He then stood up. Let's go out. The day is still in its diapers, we need to let loose of some steam before going for our training. We can stay here for a couple of days before departing. Once we go to it, we'll spend at least two months away from people. Best we stock up for those days. Naruto shook his head. You didn't stock up on fun like it was a nutrient that could be stored in your body, but this was his sensei. His perverted sensei. Their time was running out. Perhaps he should indulge the man. He got out of the window and then stared at the sanin. If you misbehave, I will walk away. Gureya grinned. I will be on my best behavior. He said. In your best behavior, you drooled from your nose while peeking through a hole on some naked woman Naruto responded flatly. That's called research. Jureya said. You should try reading my books. You have all the copies, even ones I have yet to release. I have written one, I don't need to read them Naruto said with a shrug. You do know Icha Icha is for perverts, right? Gureya shrugged and they then started to leave. He picked up the door he had broken and created a clone to take Naruto's things. They'd have to look for a new place to stay. How sad was the old hag? Very Jiri Aya said after shrugging off his surprise at the question. You do need to write to her. Why haven't you? Gureya, aren't I reactive to the matters of the heart? Naruto asked. That was a false impression, but who cared? She hasn't written to me either. Tell her to write something and I would respond. Isn't she the parent in this situation? You know, you can be frustratingly simple at times. Jiraiya said with a shake of his head. She'll probably hit you. Ooh, we can't have that Naruto said with his eyes closed. Where are you taking me? We are just going to drink. I haven't seen you get drunk. I need to see who will first get drunk between me and you. That isn't a fair competition, sensei. You are a professional and I am just student Naruto said with a shake of his head. And I only started drinking like last year. If you can't handle it, just say so, but I will consider it my win. Naruto eyed the Sanin for a long minute before speaking. Let us make a wager then. I'm not making a wager with you Jiraiya said. Last time I ended up walking into a hot spring while naked a women's bathing place. You were confident you could win if I had lost, I would have been the one doing it. Jiraiya glared at Naruto I doubted you have a smooth tongue when you want to use it. You could have ended up convincing them that you truly thought it was a men's place. You overstate my abilities, Sensei Naruto said with a shake of his head. Your student cannot talk a woman who has had six bottles to share a bed with him. Gureya thought about it before bursting with laughter. He walked closer to the blonde and put his right hand over the blonde's shoulder. Now that is an exaggeration he said in a whisper. I know you can do better. Naruto glanced at the firm hand on his shoulder before looking at the road ahead. We shall see. The Wagakur, what took you so long? Anoki asked with annoyance as Kuritsuchi walked into his office. I called for you an hour ago. No Kuritsuchi said with a shake of her head. It was ten minutes ago. You are losing your sense of time, old man. Can't you even see? Should I get a bigger clock for you? Are you even hearing me? Anoki frowned. If you keep talking like that, I'm not going to retire. Kuritsuchi shrugged. It doesn't matter. You are going to kick the bucket very soon anyway. Anoki thought of sending the black hair to glare, but he held himself. He tossed aside the mocking of his age and stared at the scroll before him. I have a mission for you. Kuritsuchi smiled at hearing this. She has been holed up in the village. It was nice to be able to go out and do a mission. There hasn't even been anything worthy of her skills. If her grandfather was sending her, then it must be something challenging. 
What do you want me to do? I want you to go to a town in the Fire Nation. Book a room and a certain man will approach and give you a scroll containing information. Don't lose it. Return immediately upon receiving it. Gritsuchi frowned. There are messengers for that kind of mission. There is a danger that this person is being followed. If I send someone else, they might not return. Enoki said in a firm tone. The information is also very important. It affects our security. When you leave, please stop by Han and tell him I wish to see him. There is something going on, isn't it? Kuritsuchi asked in a stern tone. Ghosts of the past Enoki said. I will explain it to you once you return. With the information you will receive, there should be something to talk about. The Togakur, as the days pile up, his master was getting worse. He was coughing blood and now they had bandaged most of his body. He kept in his room. It was almost pitiable. His once active and flexible master had been turned into something, human. Something so fragile. Arachimaru was strong. He was powerful. Kabuto knew it better than anyone. He was the best of the Sanans, but now he had been reduced to a fit of coughs, a pained man who couldn't do things himself. It was a spectacular fall. But Kabuto knew. His master would rise up once more. Once he took Sasuke's body, he would be unstoppable. He would become the master that Kabuto had come to respect. For now, he could only watch the pain of his master. He couldn't do anything against it. He entered Arachimaru's room carrying the now customary tray. Arachimaru was sweating badly. A normal person couldn't tolerate the pain. But he was going through it. Your situation is getting worse, Arachimaru Sama Kabuto said. The body had given away far quicker than both had anticipated. At this point, we will have to move things ahead. There is no need to hurry, Kabuto Arachimaru said with a shake of his head. There is something that can cure this, but it is a temporary fix. You have to leave here to get it. Kabuto raised an eyebrow. Arachimaru trusted him with all his experiments, and he did conduct some research for the man at times, but this was the first he was hearing about it. Should I leave everything you'll need? Yes, Arachimaru said. Behind my throne. There are three scrolls. Take the smaller one. It has everything you'll need. Hi. How is Naruto Kuna training progressing so far? Ah yes, the mysterious blonde who was being trained by his former teammate. Smoothly but there is still a lot I don't know. He is still traveling with Yurei-sama, so their movements and activities are always covered Kabuto said. I said we should keep his strength as a secret from Sasuke-kun, but when you come back, we shall go out on a hunt. You're thinking of using him to try to awaken Sasuke's Manjekyo? Arachimaru nodded. He didn't want to admit it, but it was unlikely for him to unlock it. He needed Sasuke to do it for him. Naruto-kun hates Sok now, but they were still friends. Sasuke might be able to awaken the Manjekyo after killing him if it doesn't work out, it will be a good workout to test his strength. Will Jureya-sama allow them to fight? Arachimaru grinned. You should know they are not always together we will wait for that moment. Hans Akugai. The conversation was going to come at any moment. Naruto had been counting the stars, waiting for Jureya to finally say the words he has been meaning to say. Itachi's appearance should have given him the energy. There were a lot of things that the Sanin has been refusing to say. Perhaps he was enjoying the moment and didn't want to ruin it by saying something that would displease him. For a man who thought himself as a failure, that was one reasonable thought Naruto came up with. Well, they have been on this journey for a while, and he had known it would come up. He wasn't dreading the subject. He could take it on without flinching or being all dramatic. He was normal regardless of the subject being discussed. It was perhaps something he learned from that old man. Thinking of Hiruzen, Naruto couldn't help but play a couple of memories from the past. The good days. The whole of Konoha was against him. Academy teachers didn't want to teach him. They made sure to screw things up for him. It was a miserable existence, but Naruto had lived through it. He had endured because that old man was there for him the Kyubi's Jinchiriki. What did Itachi say to you, Naruto? Jiraiya finally asked. His eyes never left the blonde, they were stern. He wasn't going to back down if Naruto said he didn't want to talk about it. He was done being careful. Naruto glanced at Jiraiya from the window. The air was flowing nicely. He could use some warm-up once he is done with the perverted Sanin. He had questions. About Sasuke and Yuzu. It was a curious encounter. Why would a criminal be curious about my thoughts if Yuzu approached me? Ureya's eyes narrowed sharply. It was a curious thing. But then again, Itachi's actions have always been strange. Jiraiya couldn't understand what motivated the man. He couldn't figure him out. But then again, when he walked in a room, the Ichiha jumped out through the back window. They could never meet, but he was really looking forward to that meeting. That is indeed curious Jureya said in thought. What did he say when you asked? Said his time was up Naruto said with indifference. I was interested in his answer though. The way he asked didn't exactly sound like man corrupted by power. Then again, you can never be sure about appearances when it comes to the Ichiha the blonde finished calmly. What if he is working with Yuzu? Jureya said. Itachi has an affiliation with the Akatsuki, but I don't know anything about it. 
I'm merely speculating but it could make sense if he was asking on their behalf. Gareya thought there was a chance that Yuzu recruited rogue shinobi to protect itself. There couldn't be powerful shinobi in the village so they had to be thinking about hiring shinobi who can protect them. He could be wrong. There wasn't that rumor out of things that reached the wave country. Well, he is a powerful shinobi, but again, you still question his motive Naruto said. Gareya nodded. What did he say about Sasuke? Strange Naruto said. He asked if I was still willing to fight for him to try to bring him back to the good side. I was given the impression that maybe he doesn't actually hate his younger brother. From what I hear, Itachi loved his younger brother. It could be that he left him alive because he just could not kill him Jiraiya offered. But that still does leave the door open to many questions. And zero answers Naruto added. Jiraiya grunted in response. That is true he paused before asking. What did you say about Sasuke? Are you still willing to try to get him back to the hidden leaf? Why? Naruto said. That is the response I gave Itachi and I am giving it to you, sensei. Naruto said there was still no change in emotion. His voice never faltered. He was neither cold nor hot. This lack of emotion frustrated Jiraiya. Not because he expected the blonde to throw a fit. Naruto never did that. He was reserved and controlled. But this indifferent response meant he couldn't read him and that is what frustrated him. He was your friend Naruto. You cannot erase the past you shared with you. Regardless of what happens, the Sasuke you shared a past with will always be there. Jiraiya said in a stern tone. Regardless of what happens, Sasuke is a former Hidden Leaf shinobi and the people there still want him back. If you are ordered to bring him back, would you say why? When a shinobi is given a scroll and told to deliver it, does he ask why and what is in the scroll? Gureya frowned. Although Naruto wasn't looking at the Sanin, he could tell he was frowning. Exactly, Jiraiya. I would carry out my duty. Itachi was asking for my thoughts on the matter. If it was my choice, what would I do? You didn't answer his question and you didn't answer mine. Your responses have been with questions. Jiraiya said. I gave you a reason, he was your colleague, now, you can either choose to ignore it or accept it. I have no attachment to the Ichiha Naruto responded. Honestly, his attachments to the people in Kanoha were fragile. He never got too close because he knew it was a fleeting moment. I have not really thought of him since he departed Sensei at this point, Sasuke is irrelevant to my training and my future. Regardless of how you look at it, those words were just cold. Then again, how many years did he spend chasing after Orochimaru did he succeed? Of course not. I really hope I don't become irrelevant. Naruto glanced at the Sanin for a moment before shaking his head. You can be miserable at times, he said. But it is a fact, Sasuke and I were friends. It wasn't what he wanted. He played the role of a mere genin all too well. He ended up getting attached. It wasn't supposed to happen. But he got closer. It was his mistake. You really couldn't fully predict the human emotion. He wasn't sad things ended up in the way it did. That was why he wasn't moping. Perhaps people thought he had been miserable after Sasuke left yes he was, but not for the reasons they had in mind. What of Konoha? You've never talked about it. There isn't really nothing much to tell or talk about. That aside, I really didn't want to focus on the leaf. I just wanted to get my head straight into training and forget about Konoha. It doesn't work like that, Naruto. Konoha is home you have to think about it. Perhaps but we are still going back. The village isn't under attack, I never felt like talking about it Naruto said carelessly. What are you worried about, sensei? Are you thinking that if the Yuzumaki come knocking I will drop Konoha off the bat without blinking? Gureya wasn't that concerned about it, but to say he didn't think about it would be an outright lie. Naruto would have every reason to depart the leaf, and honestly, Jiraiya would not blame him if he decided to leave. Konoha hadn't done him any favors. Minato would be disappointed. The leaf was supposed to be home, but it certainly hadn't treated him like it had been his home, and that was because he was the host of the Kayubi. Yuzu was still Naruto's home. His mother came from the land. If he wanted to go back, there shouldn't be complaints. But Kanoha would not let him leave. They would allow it. There was a sense that the blonde belonged to them. The Kayubi was their property. Gureya sighed. Don't say it like that, Naruto he said calmly. I understand but there are people in the Hidden Leaf who are asking questions. I'm a shinobi of Kanoha, it is only natural that I be concerned. Naruto didn't offer an immediate response. A couple of moments passed before he spoke. Well, you still don't know if Yuzu is an ally or an enemy. There should be concern there he said. Everyone is worried about that Jiraiya said with a nod. Tsunade wants us to be on the lookout for Sasuke. If I get information about his whereabouts, we will move. Any time now, Orochimaru might take over his body. Well that is what he wants he is willing to sell his soul to the devil Naruto said without emotion. But Sasuke is an emotionally unstable spoiled child. I guess it can't be helped. So you won't have a problem. Naruto shook his head. Not at all a mission is a mission, and we can't have Orochimaru becoming powerful it would become a problem he said. When do we move? 
I'm still waiting for some information Jiraiya said. He was silent for a couple of moments before speaking. I feel that there is a storm that is coming. It is making me nervous. This world might become unstable and the peace might be threatened. Naruto wasn't all that deep into the talk of peace. Jiraiya surely loved the subject and Naruto had indulged the salmon on a couple of times. Well, we must be prepared for everything. In this world, you never know what is going to happen tomorrow. This is why we must always be prepared for anything. Do this, Jiraiya nodded. I'm going to see one of my contacts the Sanin said standing up. You want to come? Naruto shook his head. I have had enough activities for the day. I wish to stay and I will go out tomorrow to stretch some muscles. Jiraiya nodded and walked away from the room. But the Sanin gone, Naruto released a long breath he'd been holding. Naruto was sitting on a clear field just away from Tenzaku. He had an expressionless mask on his face, staring down at a couple of lines he'd drawn on the ground. Sometimes he liked to keep up with sealing. He didn't need any more training. Manuals. Many seal structures and what they did, they were memorized inside his head. The Sandame Hokage had made sure his mind was a field of seals. Sometimes it made him crazy. Sometimes whenever he closed his eyes, he could only see the marks, the tattoos. They were complex and he'd obsessed trying to untangle them. At least spending hours each day just thinking about seals had driven away the demons. The laughter inside his head, the whispers from the villagers, those eyes that glared at him with nothing more than contempt. He'd forgotten about them. Even when teachers at the academy refused to give him anything good and actively tried to sabotage his grades, Naruto had found comfort in Fuenjutsu. His legacy. His savior. Because of the role he has had to play as a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf, Naruto had been forced to forget about Fuenjutsu practicing it and using it. But he didn't want to lose his touch. Yet, having a paper and a brush would earn him questions from Jiraiya. It was a dangerous situation. He avoided dangerous by abstaining from things whenever possible. But since the man had brought up the subject, it was safe to study. Space-time ninjutsu. A rather delicate art. It was complex, yet very useful. Perhaps he would have never gotten this far without it. To be able to move from one place to another in the blink of an eye. It was a tremendous ability. His father had truly made himself famous by taking the Nidame Hokage's jutsu into another level. People praised Minato for his genius, but Tabarama was the true genius. He created so many jutsu some now forbidden in the hidden leaf. The kunai flew towards him from behind, Naruto tilted his head to the left while raising his hand. He caught the kunai through his fingers and looked at it for a moment. Without even looking, he flung it backwards before stood up. It almost never happened that he found himself a target of an attack by someone. Naruto hasn't gone around pissing off people within the elemental nations, and his actions since he saw the result of Yuzu's destruction have always been subtle. He never got too involved. His hands were free. It wasn't to say they had no blood in them. He was a shinobi. That was bound to happen. Because there were few people who'd have something against him, Naruto concluded that this was Konoha's mischievous people. He wasn't too sure, so he would have to ask. He doubted they would talk, but he would still ask. There was no harm in asking, was there? Naruto looked at the four masked men with an expressionless mask. He was being disturbed from his training. He generally didn't like it because now he would have to go again in reorganizing his thoughts. One of them lunged towards him, having spared with Yureya for countless times, Naruto could see the mask shinobi coming all the way. He felt bored. But he could still use this as a training session. He hasn't had one where bones could be broken. He could do this. But they would still have to pay disturbing his time. The masked man stabbed a kunai towards his face. Naruto side stepped the strike and twisted around swiftly. He lifted his right hand and slapped the man on his shoulder, sending him off balance. You're slow you need to increase your speed. He stated calmly. The man responded by twisted clockwise while lifting his right foot. Naruto watched the incoming attack. If he stood still, he would be hit on his shoulder. He jumped back, slightly, avoiding the kick. Only his left foot touched down the ground. He'd sensed more movements. A second after touching the ground, another masked man flashed just above him, he swung his sword in a downward slash that was aimed at his right shoulder. Naruto leapt into the air and twisted around. He slammed his foot on the man's shoulder, sending him flying away. He then landed gracefully. Hain. Great fireball. The fireball was coming in from behind. It was a pathetic excuse for a fireball. Naruto had seen something bigger from Jiraiya. Hell, even Sasuke did better than this. Almost lazily, swiped his right hand and then snapped his fingers. The flames just died down in the blink of an eye. You're all not very strong. It is quite pathetic really for shinobi who wear masks, Naruto said with a shake of his head. Come on, let me end this he said motioning for them to come. Perhaps he was being too rough of them. He has been training with Yureya and he wasn't exactly weak. He was strong. Even so, it was quite disturbing to learn that they could not even touch him. He should have just broken them at first glance. 
when they didn't attack him, Naruto took out kunais from his pouch. He held them all with just his left hand and then flung them towards the masked men while charging forward. The man he was facing dodged the kunai by tilting his head to the side. When he saw Naruto coming, he threw a right hook but slowed down, falling backwards slowly and watched the punch with both his eyes. He held out his right hand and channeled wind chakra, forming an invisible blade. He swung it and cut through the man's elbow, separating his arm from his shoulder. There wasn't even a sound from the man when the sword struck. When the man attempted to run away, Naruto took out a kunai, channeled wind chakra through it and flung it. The kunai pierced through the man from the back of his neck and went through his throat before dropping dead. Naruto fell on his back when he saw another masked man stomping downwards. He rolled to the side just once to avoid the blow. When the man's foot crashed into the ground, Naruto's right hand moved swiftly with his wind blade still activated. The blade cut through the man's left leg, just above his knee. He stood up and another swing cut through the right shoulder, and blood gushed out as the man fell down. Two more to go, they both charged towards him. Naruto stood still and waited for what felt like eternity. They flanked both his sides, swinging their blades in horizontal slashes. The swings cut Naruto, but he turned into a cloud of smoke. Naruto flashed behind the man he'd attacked him from the left, he grabbed him by the back of his neck and pushed him towards his colleague. He shifted to the right when the other man pierced through his comrade's gut in order to get him. Naruto did the same, but his strike was marked towards the man's heart. It just pierced through and he dropped dead. Naruto twisted the man he held and lifted him up into the air. Foundation he uttered. I find it convenient that after Itachi leaves, you guys appear. Is Itachi in contact with Danzo? Did he threaten your master with intel? Are they working together? He shook his head. The man said nothing, and talk Naruto said. I really don't have the time to torture you. Take the pieces of your colleagues and go away. Do tell Danzo that I wish you not do this again. Naruto dropped the man to the ground and walked towards where he had been sitting. He stood there for a moment before shaking his head and then settled down. What was he busy with, again? Ah, yes space-time ninjutsu. The jutsu he had in his position wasn't anything like what the Nidane created. His jutsu wasn't for battle. It was purely made for traveling long distances. He still burnt a lot of chakra using it, and he needed to find a way to do it without burning as much chakra as he does when he uses it. He couldn't test anything now because ever since he became a genin of the hidden leaf, he deactivated all seals he was attached to. He was playing a role. To be able to work on it, he would need to activate the seals. He couldn't do that now. It was dangerous and would attract too many questions. Naruto shook his head and rubbed away all the drawings on the ground. He closed his eyes and decided to meditate. After an hour or so, his eyes snapped open as Jiraiya walked into the field in a leisurely pace. Something happened here the Toad Sage said calmly. His eyes glanced around before looking back at Naruto. Your timing sucks, Sensei Naruto said. I was still busy do you also come early? It took a moment for Jiraiya to understand the meaning of Naruto's words. When he did, he grinned. I knew you were no innocent. You act like you have no interest in women, but you are not so innocent. I never claimed I was innocent, pervert said I just have my days. I don't know what is with you. Maybe you are trying too hard to be loved because someone refused to love you or because you really are just a pervert Naruto shook his head. Either way, you shouldn't read too much into my actions. For me, it really has to do with convenience most of the time than desire. I'm surprised you even have desires Jiraiya said. You generally don't show any desire in anything aside from training. Even so, you are never too excited. Naruto shrugged. Everyone has a desire sensei. Everyone dreams of something. I have dreams I just choose not to make them public. What are those dreams? Naruto appeared to be thinking about a response for a couple of moments, but he didn't respond to the Sanin's question. Something did happen masked men attacked I think they might be from Kanoha. Jiraiya's eyes narrowed sharply. Can you describe the masks? And Naruto did so. The Toad Sage frowned. They are indeed from Kanoha what do you know about the Danzo? The Sandame's former teammate and someone who considered himself to be his rival but still could never hold a candle to the Sandame. He warned me. If someone called Danzo approaches you, come to me immediately and don't talk to him Naruto said. I trusted the old man so I never asked too many questions. Danzo leads an organization called the Foundation. He has done many experiments with it and they are basically the dark horses of Konoha. Danzo says they live to protect Konoha and will do the dirty work that the Hokage cannot do. He has his own agenda of course. But Sensei always thought he was useful and never got rid of him. When you were younger, he fought. He pushed and pushed for you to be given to him so that you could be trained as a weapon that would only live to serve Konoha. You see, Danzo teaches his forces to abandon all emotions. They are nothing but tools. The mission is important than their lives. Naruto looked into the sky for a moment before responding. This power within me does attract all kinds of vultures, doesn't it? 
well, the Kyubi is still the strongest Biju and control over its power means you have a powerful weapon Jiraiya said. It has an unlimited supply of chakra. That was an overstatement. As long as the Kyubi was a living thing, it could not have an unlimited supply of chakra. If it was a force of nature, then he could understand. The fact was that by human standards, a Biju's chakra supply was enormous. You didn't have any human who could rival it in terms of pure chakra. This is the reason people even hunted them in the first place for their chakra. If was like that in this world, if you had too much power, you either joined them or you faced destruction a corrupted world. But those with power controlled it and the weak could only complain about in their dark little corner of misery. Our power that is something people desire. Some will do everything for it kill, betray, sell their souls. Power is everything or at least fools think Naruto said with a shake of his head. I was being tested. Probably Jiraiya said. Did you give them a good spanking? Naruto shook his head. No, he said. Are you going to warn the old hag? Can you stop calling her that? Naruto stared for a moment before shaking his head. When we arrive in Konoha, I will sweep her off her feet and call her princess, will that make you happy? Jiraiya painted the thought on his head and tried to imagine just how Tsunade would react to it. Try it, he said with a grin. You're being mischievous, Naruto said. Then. Of course I have to warn her, the Sanin said. Danzo is dangerous and bad news. I will step on his neck if he is trying something. There had to be a reason the man was making a move now. It could not be that he was simply trying to examine if Naruto was learning something new or not. There was always something with the Warhawk. Jiraiya really didn't like dealing with that extremist. It was never good for anyone. I guess he is also the dark force Suna was concerned about Naruto said in thought. You didn't say anything about that Jiraiya said to Naruto. You never said Suna was worried about something happening in Konoha. I didn't. Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. It must have slipped my mind because it was something that occurred when I was coming back. But if Princess Tsunade is doing things, there shouldn't be anything to worry about unless Danzo taps into the village's council soon as council I mean. I don't think he'd go that far Jiraiya said. He could just plan for something to happen to Tamari and then blame it or any other village. That sounds like work. Danzo is work. Jiraiya said in a firm tone. In the third shinobi world war, he was pushing for Kanoha to pin Iwa down and maybe take over. The village was willing to talk at that point, but he didn't want it. He wanted I would destroy it. I wouldn't be surprised if he even tried to sabotage them the San and paused. I thought you'd show some concern for Tamari. Naruto eyed the San and very carefully for a moment before shrugging. Tamari. The blonde sister of the Kazikage he'd come to know. She was truly a delightful person and to say he got along with her wouldn't be a lie. Still, Naruto wasn't going to stress over it. Perhaps I have to believe that the people in Konoha are not ignorant of this, and Suna seems to be aware, so it should be fine Naruto said. Jiraiya shook his head. What did he expect? Did he expect Naruto to cry over it and think of rushing over to the blonde side? At this time, Jiraiya even considered if Naruto was even really mad that Sasuke tried to kill him. He wondered if the blonde was just perhaps mad that he allowed himself to get close when he had grown up distrusting people. That's what? Jiraiya said, trying to change the subject. That's what? Naruto responded. Jiraiya frowned, positive he wasn't going to like Naruto's game. What? He forced himself to say. I don't want to play. The Tsuchikage's granddaughter is within the town, you have to go to her and speak with her. The Toad Sage in a serious tone, ignoring Naruto. More schemes by Jiraiya when it came to collecting information and data, the Sanin really went all out. But Naruto was certain that Jiraiya wouldn't have come to him if he could do it himself. Naruto really never bothered himself with Jiraiya's services of gathering intel. He always made sure to keep a safe distance. Why can't you speak to her? Obviously you want to find something about her and Iwagakur Naruto said. Jiraiya nodded his head before smiling. Well, I don't want to go anywhere close to her. You know young girls sometimes don't like older and experienced men crawling up close to them he said. Besides, it will be more interesting with you speaking to her. Ah, Minato wasn't a famous person in Iwagakur they held a grudge for his actions in war, but that should be over now don't you think? Jiraiya nodded. They won't have anything against you, but when you keep your hair long like that, you turning into him the Sanin said with a slight shake of his head. The outside world never knew of Kanoha's Jinchiriki, and I don't think even now they know. But there were things happening and we need to know what is happening. I doubt I will get much from just speaking to her, and you are obviously aware of this Naruto said with a stare. Are you trying to fix me up with her? Jiraiya merely grinned, what would be the problem if I was? I don't find it amusing. Naruto said. What is she doing here? Well, you see one of my contacts is an Iwa spy she is here to meet and Jiraiya said, he seemed really pleased with himself. After meeting him, she will leave the town, so you have to speak to her today. I don't want to miss an opportunity. More like you don't want me to miss an opportunity Naruto said. Are you sure my performance is that interesting? Jiraiya nodded. I'll be watching. Don't Naruto said. 
I will be uncomfortable knowing that a perverted hermit is busy giggling with his notebook while dreaming about a potential pairing and harems you'll create for me. That wouldn't be a bad idea, you know Jurea said in thought. I won't watch, but I still want a detailed report. Since when have I given you a detailed report? Jurea frowned. You will have to stop doing that the Sanin said sternly. We shall see Naruto said as he stood up. When are we leaving? We have to wait for Kakashi he is coming here with something from Tsunade. After that, we'll disappear. Jiraiya explained lightly. What were you working on? Before I came here, I first stopped by somewhere to fetch my armor. I was preparing things and I want formalize myself with it. In our next sparring session, I will be wearing it. About two hours later, Kuritsuchi. The granddaughter to the Tsuchikage a young black-haired woman who was obviously very attractive. She was obviously a very capable Kanoichi, if given the way she carried herself meant anything. Then again, she was related to the current leader and was thought to be on the front seat to replace Anoki once he does retire from his position. The old man was currently the oldest Kage alive and active. The Sandame had made him learn everything about the Kages and their power a bit of history about them. Information was always essential before you made a move. Naruto was certain though, none of the current Kages could be compared to Hiruzen in terms of strength. In his prime, the Sandame had no one to rival him. It did make Naruto wonder just how the old man who stack up if he was pitted against the first Hokage or the second. Shaking his head, Naruto reminded himself of where he was in a bar. Shinobi liked this place. Not for the drinks or the pleasures, but exchange for information. It was a good place to overhear conversations, to accidentally bump into certain people. Or maybe to poison someone. Such places existed in another world, far away from the normal things that occurred in the streets. Naruto picked up his bottles and walked over to the Kuritsuchi she was sitting alone by a corner. She was obviously looking for someone. She didn't show it, but Naruto had observed people around this place that he could tell what they wanted, judging by their body language. Kuritsuchi looked up when the blonde walked up to her. She stared at him, seeing the headband on his forehead it was bit hidden by the wild blonde air, but it was Konoha. She frowned. She wasn't looking forward to dealing with Leaf Shinobi. Not now, not at a place like this. But this was the Fire Nation, Leaf Shinobi were everywhere, so it could not be avoided. When did she last someone a picture of such blonde hair and blue eyes? Oh yes, the Yandame Hokage a very famous man. Kanoha worshipped the man, while Iwa was a little bitter that one man had forced them into the negotiating table during the last war. She was well aware that if not for the Sandame Hokage, the man would have done more damage than he did. At least it was what her grandfather told her. She didn't see it. She hadn't been born into the world, so the fame of the Yandame was nothing but a story to her. You just didn't think of Kanoha's yellow flash, did you? Naruto asked in a light tone, a small smile on his lips. He was still standing. Kuritsuchi blinked. I just did she said with narrowed eyes. I bet people who have seen him will be thinking the same Naruto said with his smile. Can I join you? No Kuritsuchi quickly said. I won't take much of your time, Kuritsuchi. Naruto said, looking straight into her eyes. Oh, and I will tell you a little secret that not even Kanoha knows if you let me sit he said in a whisper, a sly smile in his lips. Kuritsuchi frowned. He knew her name. He came here because he knew her. Well, there was no harm in letting him sit with her. She was getting bored alone and was even thinking of leaving anyway. She still had the rest of the day and tomorrow. You can join me she said. What is the secret? Naruto settled gracefully. He noticed, although she had a bottle before her, she wasn't drinking it. Naruto Uzumaki, a shinobi from the hidden leaf he pointed at his forehead. Uzumaki? Kuritsuchi asked. She was immediately interested in listening to that person. She was surprised to see someone from that clan here. Not to mention, as a shinobi of the hidden leaf. There were issues with the land of Uzumaki, so seeing another one of them here was a good thing for her. Ah yes Uzumaki Naruto said with a smile. My mother was Uzumaki, born in Yuzu, but because of the friendship with the hidden leaf, she moved there at a young age. Kuritsuchi nodded. Why did you decide to join me? You are a Kanoichi of Iwa and you are sitting here alone it gives you away Naruto said with indifference. Besides, you are a rather attractive woman. As a man, I can't ignore you. Kuritsuchi snorted. Easy pickings. Naruto laughed. Not at all, he said. Do you think I came for that? If you want easy pickings he said, turning around and pointed at a woman was drinking heavily, you go for that you don't approach a woman who isn't even drinking her alcohol, and her defenses are as tight as a seal holding back a jinchuriki. Kuritsuchi stared for a moment. That is a funny way of describing someone's defenses she said. But if defenses are not up, scums walk all over you I don't have time for that. I would think so Naruto said. Do you just perhaps enjoy the challenge? Kuritsuchi asked. You could never be too sure when it came to shinobi. Some people were just suckers for punishment. She could never understand masochist. Naruto smiled mysteriously. Who knows? That smile. Kuritsuchi couldn't read it. 
She couldn't read a damn thing. She couldn't even read the blonde. It made her uncomfortable. What is the secret you wanted to tell me? Naruto smiled a bit sheepishly. Well, the truth is, I really didn't have any secret. I just wanted you to let me sit with you. He said. He would admit he lied with such a smile on his lips. She shook her head. So you are Yuzumaki, any connections with Yuzushiagakur? Naruto took one bottle and put it on his mouth, he took a couple of gulps before putting it to the table. That hit the sweet spot he said smiling. What were you doing alone? People come here with boyfriends, friend to have fun I came to drink you are not drinking, and since this is far from home, we can rule out friends found love with a man far away from home. Naruto glanced around the place. Now which one could be your type? I figure he has to be strong, good looking or do you perhaps like women? What? Kuritsuchi looked baffled. Naruto laughed. I'm just messing with you he said. I wanted to see your reaction, but I am curious, do you have someone you love? What does that have to do with anything? I said you were an attractive woman. No. Naruto grinned. Would you like to be friends with me or maybe more than that? Even a friend is better. I don't know you, but I want to know you. Isn't that wonderful? I'm sure as the Tsuchika gay's granddaughter, you probably don't get a lot of friends, and I'm sure boys are intimidated by you to even come close. The last one hit the spot, but Kuritsuchi wasn't all that concerned with it. She didn't even spend her time thinking about such issues. There were more important issues in life. You must be thinking you don't have time for it because you have to think about your career, but I must ask, wasn't it the same for your grandfather? It is especially worse with him since he lived in the times of war. He still made time for family. He had one of your parents and your parents had you. It is only natural for you to continue with the cycle. But that alone isn't enough, it is happiness that matters the most. You should ask your grandfather why he had a family in a time of war. Kuritsuchi was silent for a couple of moments. What do you know about happiness? You seem rather happy gulping down the alcohol. Naruto smiled a small sad smile. I'm a miserable person who wants to bring happiness in his life he said. What do you say to my offer for friendship? Shinobi want to benefit in everything I will tell you this I actually look a bit like Kanoha's yellow flash, because I'm his son don't tell anyone about it, it's a secret he said in a whisper. So, what do you say, don't you want to befriend someone like me? Given the history with Iwa and the fact that you are Yuzumaki, I'd rather kill you than befriend you. All the better become close to me and you decide whether I should be killed or befriended. You can do that easily while close to me. Kuritsuchi thought about it before smiling. That makes sense she said. You have deal. Naruto tilted his head the side. His stare made Kuritsuchi uncomfortable. Before she could ask, he spoke. You have a beautiful smile he said. You asked if I have any connection with Yuzu I can't answer that, nor can I tell you if I can use my father's jutsu we will talk when we meet again. We are going to be friends, right? Kuritsuchi frowned. That was disappointing. She had been hoping that he would start singing like a bird because he was drinking. Wait, if she let him continue, drinking, wouldn't he end up getting drunk? He didn't seem like someone who was fearsome. But you could never know with Shinobi right? There was no harm in entertaining him for a bit longer to see if he would sing. So Kuritsuchi paused, trying to figure out what to say. I have said a couple of things about myself, you haven't, why don't you start? Or we can hit a battlefield if you think that is dull a sparring session could be good, I hear some people understand each other better when they cross blades Naruto said with a shrug. You don't really believe that, do you? If you close your heart, no one will get to it by fighting you unless you really want them to do so. If you, Kuritsuchi, don't want to be a friend of mine, sparring with me will only change if you find my skills acceptable Naruto said. But I do believe a man and a woman can understand each other better when they do for play you get to know your sensitive areas, and maybe when you hit the good spot, some secrets slip out. You're pervert, aren't you? Naruto shook his head. I'm merely stating what I believe he said. What is it going to be? Kuritsuchi would rather have him continue drinking so he gets drunk and start talking. I'll talk. Naruto nodded. But I have a rule he said. If you lie and I spot it, you take a drink he pushed a saucer towards her. It wouldn't be fun if I got drunk alone, now would it? Kuritsuchi frowned. She was going to get drunk. There was a reason she wasn't even drinking in the first place. But Naruto was already way ahead of her, and if she doesn't admit that she is lying, how would he tell? Of course, she had no intentions of telling the whole truth. Fine. Oh, she regretted that choice. Later, Naruto was sitting by the window, looking over at the streets of the town. Nothing was ever like Kanoha. There was peace. There was freedom. Kanoha had restricted his movements with its contempt for him and really made things difficult. He could have left any time he wanted. Yuzu was his home it was the home of his mother. But it was dangerous. The people in Kanoha would have turned the world upside down looking for him. If they found out he was in Yuzu, they'd raise hell. People like Danzo would be at the forefront of the attacks. The man would be looking for his biju the Kayubi. When it came to him, the only thing the man was interested in was the biju. 
It didn't matter if Yuzu and Kanoha were technically still allies, Danzo would try to invade Yuzu. If he could not, he would entice the enemies of the Whirlpools to do it for him. The Warhawk was capable of doing something like that. Being here was safer. And as long as he gained strength, it was more than enough. There was not even a need to rush things. He was growing. He needed to grow. They needed to be careful, lest they suffer another tragedy. Their ability to remain still for hours still amazes me, Jiraiya said. He was standing next to Naruto, eyes glancing between the blonde and the streets. I have been doing this since I was five, Naruto said. When you do something repeatedly, it becomes natural for you to do it. Well, not all things, Jiraiya said with a sly smile. What did you do to that Tsuchika gay's granddaughter? Nothing. Were you threatened by someone? Jiraiya shook his head. No, but she was drunk. Oh yes, we were playing a little game, and she was a bit too confident in her ability to lie. Then again, I'd made her a little curious by telling her some things Naruto said with indifference. She is an excellent Kinoichi. Even though intoxicated, she didn't say anything. I just helped her to her hotel. You don't sound like you got anything out of her. It wasn't my intention to get something out of her, Naruto said. I just wanted to lay the foundation for future relations. I'm sure tomorrow or when she wakes up, she would be very pleased that I was a gentleman despite there being occasions she felt compelled to ask if I was a pervert. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes. Are you saying that you will see her again? Naturally Naruto said with a nod. Who knows, we might be friends. Can you try to be a little enthusiastic about that? Jiraiya said, seeing the indifference in Naruto's body language. Kakashi will arrive tomorrow. After he leaves, we will depart. Do everything you need to do by the end of the day because we leave tomorrow. There isn't much for me to do Naruto said. Some rest will do he said with a yawn. I think I will sleep for the rest of the day. My mind is a little tired and I don't want to be seen by Kuritsuchi. A year later, she'll look at me and think, oh, this is the guy who I got drunk with and then walked me to my place and laid me on my bed. A bit of an embarrassing moment if she tries to think of what if. Your cruel Jiraiya said. She is going to be thinking about that the moment she wakes up. You didn't leave any letter, nothing, you just left. That rings curiosity and the desire sensei. Naruto said in a simple tone. When you passionately kiss a woman and then leave her with a hand on her lips, thinking wow. She will think about that kiss when she wakes up, when she kisses another man. Speaking like a corn artist you do that often. Naruto shrugged. You jealous that I can do that? Well, I could understand, I don't see any woman chasing after you, saying they want more. I haven't seen any woman chasing after you either. Nice touch, Naruto grunted. But you should be satisfied that we shall speak again, no. For better relations with Kanoha and Iwa, that is suitable I bet the creepy geezers in dark corners would be thinking about a political marriage. Three months later, Jiraiya damn sensei, Naruto couldn't understand the San in the times. He really did like doing things at his own time and wouldn't allow anyone to interfere. He never really did like spending too much time at one place. They'd spent two months training together and the San and then suddenly said he was going and would return soon. He never returned. He left him and never returned for a whole month, and now a letter came, saying they would meet in the cloud so that Naruto could test himself against another Jinchuriki. Naruto hadn't been afraid of being alone, but that he had been warned, don't use the Kyuubi's chakra while I am away, just continue learning using the fire element. Of course, Naruto hadn't listened to those demands. He had promised, but he didn't follow through with it. Jiraiya couldn't force him to do what he didn't want to do. Besides that, Naruto had seals in place in case he lost control once more. He was currently walking through the land of hot of water, coming all the way from the land of tea. It was a long journey but Naruto's thoughts came to a halt as he sensed something. He immediately twisted around. A large snake was hissing loudly as it slithered towards him in speed. Naruto stood still, watching it with indifference. The snake didn't stop, it continued to charge towards him. As it neared him, it lunged towards him, trying to smash him with its head. Naruto merely raised right hand, with its palm open. The snake slammed into the hand, coming to a complete halt. Naruto didn't move, not even a muscle. He might look a bit slim, but he had conditioned his body. He might not be in the standards of someone like Guy, but he could hold his own in terms of physical strength. Naruto ignored the hissing snake and looked up. Orochimaru he said seeing the snake Sanin, standing atop of the snake with a wide grin, hands folded across his chest. Naruto should be afraid of Orochimaru. There was no question that the Sanin was a powerful shinobi and not someone who should be taken lightly. But Naruto wasn't afraid. He was merely curious. What did the snake want with him? He was getting guests these days. First it was Itachi and now it was the snake. It couldn't be any good if someone like Orochimaru had to come himself. Their last encounter hadn't been a good one. He had nearly died after facing Kabuto. Orochimaru looked at Naruto with interest. The blonde's hair had truly grown and a bit wild. But that interested him was the way he dressed. It was a bit like Madara, but the armor didn't have shoulder plates and the blonde wore a crimson shirt and with gloves that matched that color. 
You could hardly ignore the Uzumaki symbol on his chest and around the metal plates. You have taken quite the transformation, Naruto-kun. Naruto shook his head. This has always been in design, Orochimaru there was just never an appropriate time to wear it. As you can see, it does draw some inspiration from a rather infamous Acha. The blonde explained lightly. Orochimaru laughed. I didn't take you for a history fan not to mention Acha. Naruto shrugged. But history is origins, Orochimaru. In some way or the other, our pasts are what shape our futures. I'm not a fan of the Acha, but well, Madara had something I like about him. Oh? Orochimaru was immediately interested in what Naruto had to say. What is that? Nothing really, I was merely interested in your reaction Naruto said with indifference. I hear you love yourself some Ichiha the Sharingan to be precise. Well, to say love is corrupting the word. Let us just call it a perverse obsession. Kukukukukukukuku. Arachimaru laughed hysterically at the response from Naruto. I get the feeling that you have always been like this, Naruto-kun. Naruto raised an eyebrow, well, that would certainly be an interesting development. He said carelessly. Yes, and it does draw me closer to trying to study more about you. I'd always dismissed you, but when we first met you seemed rather mysterious, and you never stood out, but I'm beginning to think that was by design, and dismissing you might have been an oversight on my behalf. Orochimaru actively searching what he can about him. Now that was a dangerous development. Naruto didn't want that, but he couldn't tell the Sanin to stop. I'm certain I will have nightmares about this the blonde responded calmly. What can I do for you, Orochimaru? Don't be so hasty to end the conversation, we were getting along just fine Orochimaru said with a laugh. You proudly wear the Yuzumaki crest, but yet don't have a connection with Yuzu that does set the mind racing. I'm sure the people in Konoha will be on guard if they see you boldly wearing the symbol of the Yuzumaki. Well I am Yuzumaki, and anyone who says I can't wear the symbol of my clan is just being ridiculous. I doubt Konoha will even have a say about it when they also wear the symbol. Once more, Orochimaru laughed. So when are you going to Yuzu to be with your people? Who doesn't love their clan? If they invite me, I will surely be interested in seeing my fellow clansmen Naruto said. I see, you brought your little pet project with you. I was praying that you'd have consumed him by now. He is still training Orochimaru said with a grin. You don't mind being a test subject do you? With that armor, you should be at least a good punching bag. Not to mention you have the Kayubi with you. I want to see how my Sasuke has grown. Sasuke isn't worth me using the Kayubi's power. He is just a little child with some mental problems. Well, you two suit each other well. You both have loose screws up in your heads. Perhaps Sasuke has been suffering from the mental effects of his brother's Jinjutsu Naruto said in a cold tone. I think I am beginning to like you Naruto. Naruto shook his head. I'm afraid I don't swing that way. Orochimaru frowned. The blonde was mentally strong, unlike Sasuke. But truly, he was proving to be an interesting subject. If he does manage to survive here, Orochimaru wouldn't mind taking him back to the hideout. Sasuke, you can come out. The Ichiha flashed behind Naruto. You have trained your dog well, Orochimaru. I didn't think that you could train it better like this. Kukikuku Orochimaru chuckled lightly. Sasuke-kun is more than that. Oh, I am very much aware what he means to you, Orochimaru. Naruto said with indifference. Sasuke stared at Naruto with an expressionless mask. This person had made him jealous of his growth. But he was here. He had trained hard under Orochimaru. He had abandoned all emotions and focused on his training. He was confident that he could beat him even with the power of the Kayubi. This is rather interesting, isn't it, Naruto? Sasuke started in a calm tone, eyeing the blonde. He had yet to even activate his Sharingan. I guess you can say that, Naruto said. You do mean the fact that last time we stood like this I was chasing after you, and now you are the one who has run after me? Yes, Sasuke said. Naruto shrugged. Well, I have never been the one good on chasing people. Admittedly, I don't really care what you do. Even if you strip down and bend down for Orochimaru to screw you, that isn't my problem. Naruto said indifferently. Nevertheless, Kanoha has ordered that you be returned before you carry Orochimaru's children. And as a shinobi of the leaf, I must follow those orders. Sasuke didn't like those words. It was insulting to think of what Naruto was saying. But in the end, he ignored those words. Let us hope that the armor isn't just for show and you can actually fight. And I hope that you actually learn something Naruto said. He clapped his hands together for a moment before, stretching his neck muscles. Come at ya. Show me if you can really dance. That is some tough talk from someone I beat you've never been able to beat me, and there will be no change. In terms of arrogance, yes you will win Naruto said. Admittedly, you had more skills than I do your sponsors liked you because of those skills, and not to mention the Sharingan. Sasuke smirked. So you do admit that I was better than you? Yes painfully so Naruto said calmly. I am not the one to fail to recognize someone's skills when they are better. But of course, that was the past. Are you saying you are better than me now? Sasuke asked with narrowed eyes. 
he always did feel superior, but Naruto always had to undermine him. He always had to show that despite all his efforts, he could still get better. Sasuke had hated it. He had hated that someone without a bloodline could match him. Even when he was doing better, they'd always been a feeling that Naruto's wasn't really giving it his best. They'd always been a feeling that the blonde could do better than what he showed he could do. And that was always pissed him off. Naruto tilted his head to the side. Who knows? If you're still the same child who sees hatred whenever Itachi's name is mentioned, you can't defeat me. Sasuke glared. Sasuke Kunarachimaru called from the sides. Don't kill him. He could prove to be a very useful subject. Laughable Naruto said, but he didn't look the least amused. The arrogance in Arachimaru to assume that Sasuke could kill him, it was mystifying. Arachimaru, this arrogance of yours is the reason you actually believed that you could destroy the hidden leaf. What a miserable person you are. You lost the use of your hands in your arrogance and had to crawl to Tsunade looking for help, please don't incite Sasuke to do something reckless, I will gouge his eyes out, have them crystallized and then put them on display in my throne room. Kukukukukuku. Arachimaru laughed. Big words, Naruto-kun. I can see why Sensei replaced me with you the snake grinned. Do it, Sasuke. A bit annoyed at being commanded like that, but Sasuke still dashed towards Naruto. The blonde didn't move, but just watched him with sharpened eyes. Sasuke reached Naruto and unsheathed his sword, he swung it across Naruto's chest in blinding speed. Naruto took a step backward slightly and watched as sparks flew with a blade running through his chest metal plate. He held out his right hand and summoned the sword of the thunder god from a storage seal on a plate around his waist. Seeing the sword, Sasuke encased his own sword with lightning and swung it towards Naruto. The sword clashed with Naruto's creating a huge spark of lightning. He attempted to push the blonde backwards, but Naruto didn't budge. Not even an inch. Sasuke jumped back while flipping his sword to his sheath. The sound of birds chirping invaded his ears as he summoned lightning on his right hand. He pointed towards Naruto. Jidori Iso. A lightning spear spread through quickly towards Naruto. The blonde reacted instinctively by shifting his body to his left while positioning his sword to block the jutsu. It managed to graze through his right shoulder before Naruto pushed it away with his sword. Sasuke cancelled his jutsu and burst towards Naruto. He flipped several times as he neared and tried to slam his right foot above Naruto's head. The blonde took a step back to avoid the kick. Sasuke managed to flip once more and touch the ground with his hands, his body positioned upside down. He quickly bent his arms before going airborne. Peyton, great fireball no jutsu. Sasuke breathed in before exhaling a large fireball. The flames sped towards Naruto quickly. Sasuke was left puzzled when the flames suddenly disappeared into thin air, as if they had just burnt out. When Naruto flashed in front of him while he was still in mid-air, Sasuke activated his fully matured Sharingan and saw the incoming punch directed at his chest. He quickly flipped, twisted above the blonde. He stretched out his hands and touched Naruto's shoulders before using them to propel himself further away. He twisted around in flash and tried to kick Naruto on the back of his head. Naruto held out his right hand and gathered wind around the tip of his middle finger. He gathered enough chakra for the Achiha to even spot the chakra buildup. Wind bullet. Sasuke still couldn't react swiftly to avoid the bullet that sped through in the blink of an eye and collided with his chest. There was so much force behind it and Sasuke felt the air leave him for a moment before he was sent flying backwards. He recovered quickly by flipping once before landing down. A second later, Naruto crashed in front of him, driving his fist towards his chest. Ichiha twisted anti-clockwise while unsheathing his sword. He did not swing it, but rather raised his left leg and tried slamming his right foot on Naruto's gut, the blonde caught his kick with his left hand. Sasuke smirked before swinging his sword in a slash aimed just above Naruto's shoulders. The blonde reacted by leaping backwards and then did a sudden pull on the foot he caught. The sudden movements made him lose his balance and just sword just flashed past Naruto's face. Naruto pulled Sasuke towards him while still holding him. He slammed a brutal wind-enhanced punch on the Ichiha's chest. Sasuke felt something crack before spitting out blood. His whole upper body ached as Naruto did a quick twist before hitting him on the forehead with a powerful kick. Sasuke was sent flying backwards. He crashed into the ground and laid there for a couple of moments. He clutched his chest for a moment before getting up. He cursed as he saw Naruto jumping into the air before kicking a dark orb of flames towards him. His Sharingan could see the wind around the blonde's foot. The speed in which he kicked the ball was just ridiculous. More so the speed of the flames. Yet, Sasuke straightened his body and shifted to the right a bit. He felt intense flames burning his chest as the ball sped past him. It was only for less than a second, and yet it managed to burn his shirt around his chest. Sasuke didn't get to thank his Sharingan when he felt the tremendous explosion of the flames and the heat it produced, Naruto had appeared before him, stabbing his sword towards his chest. Sasuke managed to move his body a hit to avoid it, but the lightning sword pierced through his shoulder. 
Naruto didn't step there, he slammed a small Rasengan on Sasuke's chest, sending the Achiha flying backwards. Shit Sasuke mentally shouted after crashing. He was seriously hurting. At this point, Naruto was going to shatter his ribsage. He couldn't allow that to continue. His eyes widened slightly as sensed a heat wave coming towards him. Sasuke gritted his teeth before activating his level 2 cursed seal. The flames touched him and exploded into a massive cloud of flames. The Achiha burst out of the flames with wings behind him. Seeing the Achiha's form, Naruto shook his head. How unsightly he said. Then again, this is how far you are willing to go for power. I don't want to hear that from a Jinchuriki. Naruto shrugged indifferently. I didn't seal the Kyubi within me. He said. Doesn't matter Sasuke's wings flapped before he vanished from sight. He appeared behind Naruto and kicked the blonde on his back. Naruto flipped several times before twisting around. He landed gracefully. Sasuke was right above him, a Chidori on his hand. Naruto summoned a Rasengan and slammed it towards Sasuke's jutsu. When the jutsus collided, there was an explosion of chakra and lightning. Seeing that he was being pushed back, Naruto jumped backwards to create some distance between him and the Achiha. But Sasuke cut the distance in the blink of an eye. The Achiha attempted to kick him straight on his face, but Naruto crossed both his hands, and the kick hit the defense. Naruto's body slid through the ground considerably after being pushed back. Dodori Senbin. Sasuke fired multiple Senbins towards Naruto in quick succession. Naruto frowned before summoning his lightning sword. His hands blurred through the air as the sword collided with the Senbins, but a couple hit him on his knees and left shoulder. While swinging his sword, Sasuke flashed below him. Chidori. The Achiha slammed the jutsu on Naruto's gut. But the blonde suddenly burst into hundreds of sharp almost invisible wind blades that cut through Sasuke's hand although his elbow. Sasuke cursed feeling that some chakra points had been damaged. Naruto appeared on the Ichiha's left side with a wind blade on his right hand. The blade extended massively. The Emperor's Cutter. He swung it in a downward slash and it cut through Sasuke's wings. Sasuke cried out in pain as the stage 2 failed him. When he saw Naruto swinging his sword once more, in panic he released a jutsu. Jidori Nagashi. Naruto didn't even wince when Sasuke discharged electrical currents that hit his body. It rendered him motionless for a moment, and Sasuke used that chance to get away from Naruto. The Ichiha cursed inwardly as he breathed heavily. He wasn't going to lose this battle. He would not lose it. Stage 1 of the cursed seal was still active. He could still fight. Disappointing Sasuke, I expected better from you Naruto said with a shake of his head. Oh, right, three months ago, I was with Itachi he says hi, but at this point, I will be the one to kill him before you do. It will be sweet, isn't it? If I take away your precious revenge away from you. Sasuke was angry. He was mad. He forgot about the pain and lunged towards Naruto, but he was stopped from doing as a large snake appeared in the middle. We are leaving, Sasuke. Arachimaru hissed while standing atop of the snake's head. No, the Ichiha said. I need to finish things with him. It is no longer possible, Arachimaru hissed. Come on now. He almost shouted. Too late, a giant toad crashed into the scene. Jiraiya was standing atop of the toad. The legendary Jiraiya Sama has arrived. Kukikuku Arachimaru greeted his former teammate with a laugh. Well, I would like to play with you, Jiraiya, we were on our way. Oh? The Toad Sage grinned. Do you think I am going to let you escape? You just attacked my apprentice and I know why you are in a hurry to leave. This is a good opportunity to take both of you to Konoha. Some other time? Arachimaru said. Sasuke. He hissed and this time, the Achiha listened. It was a pleasure, Naruto-kun. We shall speak soon perhaps next time, I'll be the one entertaining you Rachimaru bowed mockingly. Explosions started to tear through the ground like a chain reaction. Massive amounts of flames and smoke covered the area for a couple of minutes. When everything cleared, Rachimaru was gone. Bam Jiraiya cursed. Got away again. Thanks Gamma Bunta we could have been late. The Toad Chief didn't respond to Jiraiya and turned towards Naruto. He had kept his eyes on him. Even when that explosion occurred, he hadn't moved. Not a muscle. He just stood there without even shielding his eyes. The Onaruto said to the staring Toad Chief. I'm not bleeding, am I? No, Gamabunta said. Jiraiya the Toad said before disappearing in a puff of smoke. Jiraiya landed gracefully and checked Naruto for a moment. He wasn't completely surprised to see that Naruto looked perfectly fine despite this encounter. Sasuke had used the cursed seal, but Naruto still didn't use the Kyuubi's chakra. There wasn't even a sign that Jutsus had been thrown around the area. Well that was close, I am glad that he didn't want to fight we'd have been screwed. Naruto looked thoughtful for a moment before shaking his head. You're a clone he said. But I wasn't concerned about anything. Hirachimaru would have taken me to one of his labs and molested me if I had lost nevertheless. Jiraiya shook his head. I'll be waiting for you in the cloud we'll talk about this I'm almost out of chakra. When Naruto stare, just do the obvious, book a place and I will find you. And if I hide. Jiraiya shrugged. 
You are going to wander through a bar one day I'll find you he then disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto shook his head and looked at himself for a moment. He dusted himself up and then frowned. He needed to clean himself up. But he wasn't that much of a mess. He started walking slowly towards the hidden cloud. He would need rest once he gets there, this fight wasn't something he'd wanted to do. At least he'd managed to save Chakra, and had Jiraiya not showed up, he would have been forced to use his ninjutsu arsenal to try to counter the threat the Ichiha posed in that form. Admittedly, he would have been in trouble. After walking for a couple of minutes, Naruto's movements came to a halt. He glanced on his left. Itachi was sitting on a tree branch, watching him carefully. Itachi, I thought you wouldn't show up he said. But you are a clone Naruto started walking away again. You reached out to me and you are going to walk away. Naruto stopped walking and glanced over to the Ichiha for a moment. He realized that Itachi he didn't have his Sharingan activated. But that wasn't the reason that made him turn over to the Ichiha. Naruto walked over and leaned against the tree trunk, folded his hands across his chest and then spoke. I am listening. Itachi started in a measured tone. You have truly improved but not surprising since you are being trained by Jiraiya. Why do you talk to me, Itachi? You are a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf, was a teammate of my brother, and you are Yuzumaki Itachi explained. Those things matter, more so than you are willing to admit or to show. But I am here because I am connected to all three parties in some way. How connected how are you to Yuzumaki, Itachi? Yuzu but I cannot get into those details. Perhaps I will never get to them with you. Itachi responded. Let us talk about your connection with my brother and Kanoha tell me, although you are Yuzumaki, you are still a Kanoha shinobi, should things come to a point in the near future that Sasuke tries to attack Kanoha, would you stop him? Do you no longer care that you are more than willing to kill him if it meant protecting Kanoha? Naruto glanced up for a moment before closing his eyes. That raises questions, Itachi. Why would Sasuke even try to destroy the hidden leaf? He left it to gain power. Sasuke is gullible and can easily be painted any color by anyone with the means. The fact that he left Kanoha to join Orochimaru is proof of this. Orochimaru tried to destroy Kanoha once and failed, if he has Sasuke and regains his strength, wouldn't he try to do it again? Unlikely but for argument's sake, let us say he does and Sasuke is with him, why are you talking to me specifically? Because you were the only friend Sasuke was able to make. I realize that you are not going to try to talk Sasuke into returning to the leaf. You didn't say a word about it when fighting him. Naruto shook his head. Just because I didn't talk to him about it doesn't mean that if I'd broken both his legs and clipped his wings, I wouldn't have dragged him to the leaf. Despite my views about him, if the mission is to stop Sasuke by any means, I will do it. I see Itachi said silent for a couple of moments before speaking again. I am speaking to you because I want to understand you and your motives. You want to get stronger, but for what? You haven't shown any desire for anything, but I know you are not completely without any desire. You have hopes, you want something, but I don't know what it is. And that makes you nervous of the Uzumaki's revival. Naruto asked. But what is my connection to this? Yes, I do have dreams, but I am not the one to share them a public knowledge. Still, that doesn't answer the core question to your interest in my dreams and the potential connection to the Uzumaki. I am a rogue shinobi of Kanoha and wanted, but I don't want to consider you an enemy. However, I must know. Where is your home, Naruto? Uzumaki is more than just clan politics, but it is home. It is the place where your mother was born as your home Kanoha Yuzu. Itachi asked. You have always proudly worn the symbol of your clan, and even now, you wear it. You are proud of being Yuzumaki, which begs the question, why are you not in Yuzu? Whether we are enemies or not depends on my response to your question, Itachi. And although I do not wish to make an enemy out of you, I don't want to share anything with you. You are not my friend and your motives are unknown to me. You seem to concern yourself with where my loyalties lie, but how does that affect you in any way? Itachi was silent for a moment. He really hoped that he wasn't wrong. Naruto was more than someone who was ranked a genin by Kanoha. Itachi was almost certain of this, but there was no evidence, and Naruto wasn't going to admit it. Despite everything that has happened, I was a former shinobi of the Hidden Leaf, and I do care for what happens in it. This is why I ask if you'd be willing to stop Sasuke, and if you are loyal to Kanoha. Sounds like Kanoha's Dark Knight Naruto said with a shake of his head. As long as I am a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf, I will fight for it. I have already said this to you. And when you are not, who knows? We are not at that time yet. Naruto said calmly. My life is simple. I have a simple way of doing things. I don't care about a lot of things. I'm not bound by hatred. But I am not a truly happy person. I do desire happiness, who doesn't? What of what Kanoha has done to you? Your life in Kanoha has been nothing short of misery I can understand why you'd be miserable. There has not really been any reason to be happy when Kanoha hasn't made it possible for you. I was wronged, but no one will admit that. Should I just forget it, Itachi? 
Should I say that yes, those people made him miserable, they treated me with nothing but contempt. I was mocked for being an orphan yet the very reason I became an orphan was that they could live. What would you feel? The Sandane used to say that I should work hard to prove to them too that I am not the Kyubi, but a hero. It was laughable. My parents sacrificed their lives, they sacrificed me I am okay with that. But to treat me with contempt, for the wrong reasons, to blame me to the deaths of your loved ones when you really did nothing but just an innocent child that, I cannot accept. They told their kids not to play with me they isolated me. I was a danger, for 11 years straight, and I must work to show that I am good. I have nothing to prove. And I will not accept people who loathe my existence for years and to suddenly shift and smile while ignoring the things they did to me. To be forgiven, you must ask for it. You must work for it. There must be a balance. They were wrong, they must accept that. I was not wrong. I did not kill anyone. But I was used as a tool to stop the destruction, the killing, and yet, the hatred. Naruto said in an icy cold tone. Those are thoughts Itachi, am I wrong? Naruto's tone was cold, it made Itachi uncomfortable, but he could not sense a bit of hatred, but there was anger, yet it wasn't in Naruto's tone. He was unnerved by it. How do you say such words without expressing anger and hatred? One who becomes a Kage is one that is recognized by the people. The people are Konoha. Perhaps I would have told you the same thing the Sandane told you. To work hard to prove to Konoha that you are truly a hero, because if you really love Konoha, you would do that. People are emotional, they will always overreact. They will be bad apples, and maybe sometimes it is the majority, but we cannot let that define what Kanoha is. You sound like someone who does love their village and that is okay. I have nothing against that, you have to love someone, but my question isn't about the love for Kanoha. Before we get to that, we must talk about what is right and wrong. If we simply brush aside that, we become fundamentally flawed. Naruto said. There is the truth, right and wrong. I do not love blindingly. If something is corrupt and you love it, you will try to correct, but there will be limits. If Sasuke cannot be saved and attacks Konoha, he must be killed. That is what you are saying. But why must he be killed? If Konoha's Kage suddenly decides to invade another village for the simple reason of expansion, do you support it or do you do the right thing and kill the Kage? Those are my thoughts, Itachi. You decide what you think. Naruto said in a firm tone. In the meantime, you have your issues to deal with. When I am in Tenzaku, we shall speak again. How were you even able to keep tabs on me? Naruto merely smiled. You have your secrets, I have mine perhaps in our next conversation, we shall share. The Togakur, it didn't often happen that Orochimaru would end up being disappointed having assured himself of success, but truly when things did go left, it really did sting. The last time his sensei had truly done him a number. Taking away his hands had been a rather sinister move. He had cursed his sensei, but he couldn't be mad forever. This time around, it had been Naruto. But the blonde hadn't been in the way. In fact, Orochimaru was happy things turned out the way they are. It wasn't what he had gone expecting, but he was fine with it. He had something else to look at now and it was certainly something very interesting. Naruto had not only managed to hold his own against Sasuke, but he had managed to deal some damage that forced the Ichiha to utilize the cursed seal. It had been unexpected, but nothing to be too shocked about. He was going to be grounded once more. He had avoided fighting Jureya because it wouldn't have been healthy for him. Orochimaru glanced at the breeding Ichiha for a moment before laughing. It was a bit gleeful. Both he and Sasuke had been confident that the latter would win against Naruto, but it hadn't been going according to plan. Sasuke did not lose. The battle hadn't ended yet. Maybe Sasuke would have won, maybe he would have lost, they couldn't be certain about anything. But to Sasuke, it felt like loss. Orochimaru wasn't that concerned by the Ichiha's wounded pride. There were more important matters to deal with. Are you that afraid of Jiraiya? You can ask him, Sasuke-kun, but Jiraiya knows out of the three Sanans, I have always been the strongest. None of us have surpassed our sensei, but I was strongest Orochimaru said. Admittedly, the condition of my body doesn't allow me to match him. I'm afraid fighting him would result in more severe consequences for me. Sasuke snorted. I came to you for power, Orochimaru, but you have not given- I can only push you so far, Sasuke kun Orochimaru responded calmly. There are some things that you cannot be taught. You need to look at where you have failed. Power I have given you. You depended on my cursed seal to defeat Naruto the last time and this time around, you still used it. He was using the power of the Kyubi last time. Yes, frightening power, but Naruto has no bloodline, and still this time around, he didn't use the chakra of the Kyubi Orochimaru pointed out, a little amused by Sasuke's glares. At this point, he was going to end up taking Sasuke's body even when he wasn't ripe. You're the one who has failed. If you cannot improve me, there will be no reason for me to stay with you, Orochimaru after saying that, Sasuke stomped away from Orochimaru. The Buddha looked at the retreating Ichiha for a moment before turning to his master. He looks like he has taken quite the knock. Orochimaru shrugged carelessly. 
Sasuke has grown strong, but he fails to control his emotions when Itachi is mentioned. Unable to control himself, he doesn't act rationally. Naruto didn't do anything impressive the Sanin looked thoughtful for a moment. But admittedly, he is truly better than expected. It could have gone either way. Well, Kabuto could understand why Sasuke would be displeased. Naruto's growth was the reason Sasuke had felt like he needed to get away to gain more power. Sasuke was strong, Kabuto could admit that much. But this was going to turn things back a bit. Are you going to have another try? Not at the moment, Orochimaru said. He was grinning. You should have seen the way he handled himself. Even when I was there, he didn't blink. He just stared into my eyes and asked me what I wanted. He has a way with words. Should we increase our efforts on him? Orochimaru nodded. You need to work quickly. I don't know how this body will hold on. If we don't take Sasuke, I will have to find a new host. It is becoming troublesome since he is talking about leaving Orochimaru couldn't allow that to happen. If Sasuke left, he might never be able to get him back. To stop him from leaving, Orochimaru would be willing to take over even when the time wasn't right. There hadn't been this threat before, so it was never a consideration. I will get on it. And the other thing. It has been wiped clean of everything. There was dust, so I assume they did it some time ago Kabuto responded calmly. Well, it is safe to assume that there are possibly people who saw Yuzu's destruction and who know about its secret hideouts and possessions Orochimaru said. Even though the mass temple was in the outskirts of Konoha, it wasn't something that everyone knew. Considering the things that were in there, it did make sense to keep its location hidden Kabuto said. How has Naruto been able to improve drastically in such a short time? There are two possibilities. It is either he has always been good but chose not show it or he has one big appetite for learning new things. He proudly wears the symbols of his clan, and yet even though it is revived, doesn't claim to have any desire to reunite with his clansmen, isn't that strange? Are you suggesting that Naruto has a connection with Yuzu? Yes, Orochimaru said with a nod. We just have to discover what that connection is. Kumagakur, a hidden cloud. A power-hungry nation it once was. Perhaps it was still power-hungry. Had it not been for the Sandame's methods and the Hyuga's sacrifice, maybe Kanoha and the Leaf would have gone to war over something the village was truly guilty of doing ridiculous. In this world, right no longer mattered. Power was everything. The strong did as they pleased and the weak suffered. Maybe Kumagakur felt confident it could boss Konoha because it had two Jinchurikas who are known for being the best in the shinobi world. Kumo's Jinchuriki knew how to control the power of their Bidjuus and they stood out because of this. The beast inside of him had resisted plots and attacks from the hidden cloud. When none wanted to come near because the Kayubi was too powerful, Kumo was more than willing to send its shinobi on suicide missions. Power. Bidjuus. The ride in this world. The cloud was rather lovely, and perhaps Jiraiya would be having the joys of his life. Kumo and Kanoha didn't have the best of relationships because of the past. Then again, none of the great nations were truly friends, there was always some bitter history between the nations. Wars haven't done any favors to the relationships of these villages. Naruto didn't dwell much on the scenery within the village, he walked around for a bit. He was mindful that he was being watched. Perhaps he had been watched too often that he could spot a pair of eyes staring at him even from across the seas. But he didn't mind it. He had metal plates around his body and looked like he'd been in battle. It was understandable for them to be curious. He found himself a good place to rent and rested for about two hours. It had been afternoon when he arrived in the land. Once up, Naruto went to the window and settled nicely for about two more hours while staring blankly into the streets. His little birdie friend appeared before him. Naruto let it rest on his hand before smiling. You've come a long way from home he said, walking over to the small table he'd requested. The bird nodded and flapped its wings a bit. It looked tired. Was it dangerous? Naruto asked, taking out the scroll it had. Five mountains of paperwork appeared in a puff of smoke. For a moment, Naruto stared at it before shaking his head. He looked at the bird and waited for its response. The bird nodded and showed him the inside of its right wing. It had a wound. People do try to attack the messenger birds. Naruto put his finger on its head, as if to pat it. Ask for a vacation when you get back home. I'm sure they'll grant you. He said with a smile before turning his attention to the paperwork. He glanced at the bird for a moment before speaking once more. You don't need to keep watch you can go on to rest I'll wake you up once I'm done. The bird nodded its head and gave him a look that clearly said, thank you, master. Naruto just smiled and went to work. Darkness had already descended on the village by the time Naruto was done. It was time for scums to wake from their slumber. The night was full of many things. Many evil. But Naruto liked taking a stroll through the night. It had been safe in Kanoha to do so. The hateful glares were not there. There was nothing but a silent breeze that kissed his body with relaxants. With his armor off, Naruto was wearing dark clothes. They suited the night. He strolled around for a couple of minutes before finding his place. 
the bar entrance was never an issue with Shinobi. This was a Shinobi place. There were Kumo headbands everywhere. Naruto felt like he was the only foreign person in the place. It didn't bother him. He just danced around the tables and sat by the counter on a stool. It was fully loaded. His usual place was occupied. A pity. For a moment he wondered if he should go tell those people that they were sitting on his spot, but he realized it would make a scene. And he was far away from home. He didn't need to get kicked out. Since he was sitting by the bar, Naruto ordered one bottle but told the barman to keep them coming. He had paid already. There was no opening of a tab. He wasn't at Kanoha. For about an hour, Naruto drank alone. He was at peace. The noise around him was non-existent. He was lost in his thoughts, but he never missed his drink. He continued drinking absent-mindedly. When his thoughts deserted him, Naruto started to look around. He saw two women sitting by themselves. They were not civilians. He could see their headbands. Kumo Kinoichi. Well, he could indulge himself just this once. When was the last time he felt compelled to approach people and dine in the pleasures of the body? Naruto ordered two more bottles and walked over to the women. He smiled charmingly. While he continued to say he would not win any beauty contests, Naruto knew he had a certain look about him. He would not compare himself to anyone. Ladies, can I join you? Naruto was already sitting even though he was asking. You are a bit far away from home, and considering your drinking, you are not going to make it home soon. Naruto took a sip before responding. That is the intention well, unless you ladies decide to leave the table a bit early. The night is still young. The following day, humming from somewhere? Jiraiya asked as Naruto walked into his room. Naruto frowned seeing the grin on Jiraiya's lips. He was willing to bet that Sanon was thinking that he should have been there to watch. A sick perverted old geezer. He was going to die peeping one day. You don't exactly come from nowhere, now do you, sensei? You know what I mean. Jiraiya said. Naruto shrugged. I know what I mean, but I don't like discussing my nights with you. I'd rather not permit my conquests to become part of your stories. You are no fun, Jiraiya said. He then grinned again. So, who was she? Was she young or old? I can't tell if you like older women or young ladies your age. Girls my age are still napping, and breastfeeding Naruto responded calmly as he walked over to the window. The morning is always rather unpleasant no matter how much you have. How much did you drink? A lot Naruto said. I approached two women who got drunk before I could. To even the score, I had to drink more. But some shinobi from Kumo blocked my path and to avoid a battle, I had to back down. Went by a corner, drank some more before being approached by someone who seems to like young men. I knew it. Jiraiya exclaimed. You do like older women. Some of them but that there was no helping the situation there was rather difficult. And I really didn't want to come back here alone Naruto said. You would prefer being in bed with a stranger than someone you know Jiraiya said with a shake of his head. That is some way of doing things. Naruto wanted to remind the Sanin that he got into bed with people who didn't he didn't love because the one person he has loved his whole life didn't love him in the same way he loved her. But he figured it would be a low blow. Jiraiya was okay, there was no reason to make him miserable, especially when he was here trying. Naruto wasn't that cold-hearted to ignore the man's efforts. How long have you been here? A day or two Jiraiya said with a shrug. How was fighting Sasuke? A Naruto said with a shrug. Nothing fancy. He is easy to mess with, so not that much of a problem. I would have been in trouble had you not come in around that time. The power of the cursed is something else. Not to mention Sasuke already has the Sharingan. I am fortunate his eyes are not like his brother's. I wouldn't have willingly fought him if there was a choice. Are you afraid of facing the Sharingan? Naruto shook his head. No it just makes me mad the ability to see the future the ability to copy Jutsus and the ability to cast Jinjutsu upon you with just a look. If I fraud against the Sharingan with the intention to kill, I wouldn't kill that person, I'd just gouge out their eyes and leave them blind. Sometimes I think you'll be capable of cruel actions the Sanin said with a shake of his head. Well, there was no helping the situation. I will have to make a report to Tsunade that you encountered him. If I had been there, we could have captured both. If I had used the Kyuubi's power, I could have captured both. Although he didn't want to show it, Arachimaru was weak. He wasn't the same person who appeared in the Chunin exams. Then I had been amazed by his power. Then, he looked like a normal person. But I would have still released six tails and brutalized him Naruto explained lightly. Being confident is good, but being overconfident will get you killed, Naruto. You're talking about the same situation in which you sent a clone to intervene, pervert sensei Naruto said with a stern look to the Sanin. Why did you send a clone anyway? I was held up with the Raikage, and I wasn't sure Jiraiya said. I'm still glad you did well though. Did you have any doubt? Naruto asked the Sanin. You have been sparring with me, do you still doubt my strength? You can never be sure Jiraiya said. I didn't think he'd take this chance though. He was must have waiting for the right moment. We will have to be careful from now on. We can't have moments like this happening again. We might not be fortunate next time. 
Naruto said nothing but he could agree with the Sanin on that point. How was your talk with the Rikage? A bit unpleasant but nothing to worry about Jiraiya said before taking out a file. This is the Jinchuriki you are going to meet. I won't introduce her to you. Well, she might not like me since I may have done something without knowing. Anyway, she is around the village and you can see her anytime you want. Keep it light and she isn't a bad person. You should be able to get along with her. I refuse to take comfort in anything you say to me about women, Jiraiya sensei Naruto said. I'll see her tomorrow, we are not in a hurry, anyway. Kumo hasn't been all that bad I could stay for than two weeks. We can't stay for too long Jiraiya said in a serious tone. We have some leads we must follow we are almost done with training so, it will be best if you start following me around when I gather intel we'll have to start thinking about going back to Konoha. How long? A month or two Jiraiya said. Tsunade insists. I had asked her to give us a year, she sent a message, and she wants us to return. I managed to convince her that I needed you to learn a couple of things about my spy network so that you can be in a position to take over when I am not able. You have fine hopes Sensei Naruto said. But he would disappoint. Is Ushiagakur, the emperor's compound. A traditionally built place at the heart of the village. It wasn't that big, but it was majestically built worthy of someone who calls himself the emperor. Gurin had been to the throne room a couple of times, but the throne was always empty. It was always cold. Each time she went there, she thought she'd finally meet the person who sits on the throne, but she'd not seen him, not once, not ever. Too many people have not seen him. She'd never come across anyone who says they have seen him in the streets. The village had a leader who led the village, but it wasn't the emperor. The compound was usually quiet. People didn't go there. The old geezers went there at times to have their meetings. It was a place of secrets. The Yuzumaki were secretive. It was almost an obsession perhaps filled with some paranoia. But Gurin didn't criticize it. These people would do anything to protect the village. It was a fortress because of their methods. And anyone who found a loophole to enter the village never returned home unless there was a message that had to be sent. The village itself was vibrant. The Yuzumakis were not many, but they were the most energetic people you could find. The atmosphere was fine. Yukimaru enjoyed his time at the academy and she did her job as one of the higher-ups in the command chain. She had no complaints. Arachimaru couldn't hurt her from here. He couldn't touch Yukimaru. She was safe and that was what mattered to her. She had fun chasing after spies during night. Perhaps the sadistic nature in her would not completely go away despite being asked to control her urges. They didn't complain, so she kept at it. Gurin Sanhaku greeted the woman who was standing by the entrance to the emperor's compound. It was dark in the streets. And she shouldn't be standing here. Are you nervous? Gurin didn't nod. She glanced at the ice user she'd mistaken for a woman. A complicated past with this one, but she'd never bothered to pry. They spoke well. Both had been recruited, but when she came here, Haku was the one who welcomed her. He didn't act as the leader, but he was high up in the chain of command. Why would she be nervous? Yes, after being here so long, she'd been summoned to meet the emperor. Finally, she was going to meet the mysterious leader. The Uzumakis she'd met spoke well about him. A master of Fuenjutsu they said. A truly brilliant man. Maybe Gurin said. I didn't think even you would be nervous. I mean you did work with Arachimaru Gurin said. I'm curious here and when you get used to something, it hardly becomes a problem. You only realize its cruelty when it turns to you, but when facing things you do not care for, you don't see it, you actually enjoy the show. Haku shook his head. He could never understand this woman. She was strange and nothing like the Yuzumakis. Then again, she'd been hired to do a job that demanded that you do dark things. A job he could never do but perhaps he might fight himself in the battlefield somewhere in the years to come. There is no need to worry, he's not a bad person. Haku said with a smile. Best we not keep him waiting. He said walking over to the entrance. There was no one guarding, but both he and Gurin knew there was a barrier around this place. The moment they stepped into the compound's ground, their presence had already been known. Yuzu was just a giant barrier that could be turned on at any moment. It had a particular ability, and it would certainly offer a nasty surprise to enemies, but it was reserved for cases of an invasion. How many times have you been here? Gurin asked. I hardly see you around the village. You're mostly on the other side of the island. Well, I actually live here Haku said with a smile. Gurin was surprised. She didn't know that and she ran the village's covert affairs. Then again, whatever happened in the compound was always secret. It was after all the most secret place within the village. You're not always around when I come around. The spies always trying to sneak in, there is no rest. Sometimes you have to chase some across the sea. Gurin said with a shake of her head. It was a busy job, but she had to do it. People are curious Haku said. I'm surprised I haven't even seen my former master's number two sneaking into the village to try to get intel Gurin said. Then again, with how good he is, tracking him would be difficult. As she said those words, they entered the throne room. It was dimly lit. 
but the walls were in the form of a pale blue crystallized ice. The floor was the same. You could see a massive Uzumaki symbol on the floor, deep within the ice. The same could be said when you looked into the ceiling. There were pillars around the throne. Today, there was a person on the throne. Cold eyes were staring at them without blinking. His head was tilted to the side, resting on the palm of his right hand. She couldn't see him clearly, but there was no presence from him, she couldn't even tell if he had chakra. If she wasn't seeing the silhouette, she would have said there was no person there. When Haku kneeled a bit away from the throne Gurren followed his example. Your Majesty, it is good to see you again. Haku said in a calm tone. Gurren noticed the slight nod of his head. Those eyes were staring at her. Gurren we finally meet. I wish this was a social call so we can dine together. But there are agent matters that you two must attend to, both of you were chosen because of your unique bloodlines, and we'd like to recreate that. That isn't why you're here, but your bloodline is the reason you are being sent to this mission. We worked hard to develop a wave country after taking over Gato's company. It is now developed. Its economy is healthy, and its population has been increasing drastically over the past two years. Its new strength has made the land of water uncomfortable, and it seeks to undermine us. The wave is mine, but its importance lies in the fact that Yuzu doesn't directly procure its needs from any village or merchant, but we get everything we need through the wave. If the wave is hurt, we are hurt. The feudal lord of the water country is behind the move to slow down the wave's progress, but you won't see him. You are going to meet the god in Mizukage to discuss the issue and try to seek a way forward. At the moment, we don't need trouble, but if we are threatened, we will take action. You are to leave tomorrow, all necessary arrangements have been made. The mission aside, the voice was powerful yet it sounded young. It wasn't what Gurren was expecting. We will depart tomorrow morning and try to return as quickly as possible. Haku said. Study the Mizuka Gay for me I'd like to see what kind of a person she is the emperor said. Gurren. You will try to assess Kiri's capabilities without getting caught. Hai Gurren felt compelled to give that response. You may leave. And those words and the two stood up to leave. As they arrived at the exit, Gurren glanced back. She saw two Ritids leaning into the Emperor, both whispering something. His eyes. They were staring back at her. She immediately turned away. Once out, she breathed and then spoke. That wasn't much of a meet with the Emperor she said. Aku merely smiled. You'll do that when you dine with him. Perhaps when we come back he is a delightful person. He said. Somehow I doubt that Gurin said with a shake of her head. I can understand us being sent for our powers, but why isn't the leader going with us to be the one to handle the issue? We could simply go as his guards. That is simple they want to keep the mystery going nobody actually knows if the Yuzumaki have indeed revived, sending us there doesn't confirm it. Gurren nodded and looked back at the compound. The throne room shouldn't fit in that place, should it? It was much bigger when you were in the inside than when you looked at it from the outside. She glanced at Haku. Why is there a difference in size? Haku got what Gurren was asking. Because the throne room you entered is in its own dimension, not in this space. You can enter the dimension because of the seal you were branded with. People who don't have the mark will see the normal throne room. Kumagakur, that damned pervert in the form of a Sanin. He wasn't going to watch him battle Yujito, and he wasn't even helping out. Naruto had to do everything on his own. Jiraiya wasn't doing this to measure his strength. The Sanin probably didn't want to see it as he already knew what he could do. He was using this as training for him. The man wanted him to use a sparring session with Kumo's Jinchuriki to help him experience what it is like to fight another Jinchuriki. He couldn't count Gara. The Kazikage was unique. That aside, they'd been genins when they fought. Well, he was still a genin. Naruto shook his head, rubbing off those thoughts. The secluded training ground he found Yujito in was a bit away from the village. Then again, she was Jinchuriki who fought using her Bijuus power. She had to be a way to avoid the collateral damage and to cause panic around the village. Yujito wasn't alone. She was with another blonde-haired woman with a large bust. What was with blondes and sizable chests? You were just staring, weren't you? Naruto looked at the woman whose cold tone made him raise an eyebrow. Yes Naruto responded with indifference. I was thinking, if my sensei saw you, he'd emigrate to this village and abandon his beloved slug princess. Naruto said walking over to the two women. None of them seemed cautious of his footsteps. He stood in front of them and smiled. Naruto Uzumaki, Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. Yujito stared for a moment before speaking. The armor, are you here for a battle? Naruto completely ignored Yujito and faced the other blonde. I know her but I do not know you. If she is willing to indulge me, I might not get the chance afterwards. Samui, she said. She had seemed to get where he was getting at. A pleasure, Samui. Cool. She said. Naruto merely smiled before turning to Yujito. Sorry about that he said. I traveled to this village to test myself against an experienced Jinchuriki. I have been told that you're fully able to control the power of your Biju. Although I house the Kayubi, I still cannot control most of its power. 
Even so, I'd still like for you to indulge me. Ijido eyed him for a long moment. The Kyubi was the most powerful even more powerful than the Biju would be held. She was confident, but if he was saying he cannot control most of his Biju's power, it meant that there was the chance that even B would defeat him. Then again, power alone wasn't everything. Personally, Yujido didn't think anyone could defeat B while using his Biju's power. I haven't tested myself against another Jinchuriki aside from B, I don't see why not. Naruto smiled. Then let us entertain ourselves to our heart's content the blonde said before jumping backwards. There are no rules, no. Naruto nodded. Please come at me with the intention to kill. I find it more satisfying to battle someone who wants to kill me. You need not take it easy on me I house the Kyubi if you break my legs, it's fine. Ujido grinned, hearing those words. Are you not going to regret those words? Will you make me regret them? Naruto asked. If you make me regret them, I'll treat you to a meal every day while I'm still around in the village. I don't want to brag, but I am quite the cook. You are offering to cook for me? Ujido asked. If you don't regret those words, what do I have to do? Take me out, tonight. Il Yujido said. Naruto took out his lightning sword and sped towards Yujido. The blonde didn't wait for him to arrive, she also charged, holding a kunai which was encased with blue flames. Naruto swung his sword towards Yujido's left shoulder in a horizontal slash. The blonde aligned her kunai over the shoulder and blocked the swing. The flames burst lightly upon contact with Naruto's sword. Yujido lifted her right foot, aiming for his shoulder, Naruto jumped back slightly to avoid the kick. Yujido twisted quickly while shifting the kunai she held towards her left hand. When Naruto touched down the ground, she was already upon him, stabbing the kunai towards his throat. He lifted up his sword, blocking her strike. She felt her kunai tremble slightly as Naruto's blade slid through the kunai, cutting it. Rasengan. Naruto formed a orb of chakra on his left palm and tried to smash it towards Yujido, but she managed to speed away from the path of the jutsu. The Rasengan slammed onto the ground and exploded. The explosion tore through the ground, creating a small crater. When Naruto tried straightening up, Yujido flashed in front of him. Her fight foot cleaved through the air in tremendous speed. Naruto could only cross both his hands across his face while holding his sword to avoid the kicking slamming into his face. When the kick connected with his defense, it sent him flying backwards. Naruto recovered quickly by flipping several times before landing on both his feet. Yujido dropped into all fours as she formed claws. She then lunged towards Naruto in blistering speed. Naruto didn't wait for her to reach him, he summoned his sword once more and began to dart towards the woman. He held his sword in a reverse grip and slashed towards the blonde. Reacting swiftly, Yujido slid through the ground while ducking under the sword. Yujido stretched out her right hand, her claws swiped through Naruto's right foot as she slid down the ground before quickly getting up. She retracted her claws and went through hand seals. Flame explosion. She spat a small ball of flames that sped towards Naruto at close range. Naruto didn't try to use his jutsu upon seeing the flames. He did hand seals while flashing around to face the incoming jutsu. Futen. Great wind breakthrough. He released powerful gusts of winds in a flash. The gusts covered a wider area and were bigger than Yujido's flames. But when the Jutsus collided, the flames went off, setting off a huge explosion that disrupted the gusts, causing a violent reaction of flames and wind fighting it out. Naruto was forced to jump away to create some distance from the explosion to avoid getting caught in it. Once he touched down the ground, Yujido flashed in front of him in blinding speed. He couldn't react quickly as she swiped her claws across his chest. There were sparks when the claws ran through the armor plate. Yujito swung her left with claws racing towards his face. He leaned back slightly as watched the claws pass by his face. Wine bullet. Naruto didn't spit the bullet from his mouth, he channeled chakra into the tip of his index finger, forming a small orb of wind. He flicked it, and it slammed into Yujito's chest. When it collided with her, it caused her to slide back slightly, but not enough to cause massive damage. Naruto lunged, his left foot graced the ground while his right foot charged towards Yujito with wind gathering around it. The kick slammed into Yujito's chest, causing her to wince painfully. She rocketed backwards like a bullet. She ended up crashing down the ground a distance away and tried to get up. She clutched her chest painfully and coughed up some blood. Yujito wiped the blood on lips and glanced towards Naruto who was slowly walking towards her. What the hell was that? Wind it just knocks the air out of you. That was dangerous. It was like being hit by one of the Raikage's lightning punches. A normal person would have suffered more damage than she did. She could still continue, but she wasn't about to receive any more of those hits. Nizumi Kodama. Yujito created a ball of blue flames. The ball shot towards Naruto who halted his movement seeing it. When the ball split into multiple projectiles, charging towards him, he leapt into the air and then rushed through hand seals. Guten. Decapitating wind. He released hundreds of twisting blades that covered a wide area. The blades charged towards the rushing flames and cut through them. Naruto cursed when the flames only multiplied. He should have just shredded them. 
Seeing flames rushing towards him, Naruto flashed towards the ground. When he landed, he cursed once more when the flames still pursued him. They arrived in a heap and exploded upon contact. The explosion was huge, blue flames surrounded Naruto's entire body for about a minute before dying down. When it ended, Naruto was standing in the middle of a small crater, hands folded across his face, with slight burns all over the parts where his skin was exposed. Ujido flashed in front of him, with a huge blue cat claw she had transformed her right hand. She slammed into Naruto, sending him flying backwards like a bullet. She didn't let up, she flashed above him and created a punch before slamming him into the ground. Boom. He crashed into the ground in the blink of an eye. Naruto closed his eyes in pain when his back crashed deep into the ground. His eyes snapped open when Yujito continued with her charge. She was crashing down towards him, her punch first. Naruto folded his hands together and summoned the Kyuubi's chakra to help him a bit defensively. There was a loud crash when Yujito's large hand slammed into Naruto's defense. The collision caused the ground to shatter around Naruto, burying him further into the ground, but his defense still held on, and he avoided damage. Yujito jumped away from Naruto and landed a distance away. Her hand returned to normal as she watched Naruto get up. Naruto held out his right hand and formed a small orb of intense crimson flames. He allowed the flames to float in the air before doing a quick jump into the air. He kicked the flames, sending them towards Yujito in blistering speed. Yujito jumped up while stretching out her legs, she allowed she ball of flames to pass in between her legs, but cursed when she felt intense heat burning through her. The ball exploded behind her, and a second later, another ball of flames was rushing straight towards her. She was certain it was going to hit her on her chest and would leave her in an unhealthy state. She summoned Matatabi's chakra, covering herself in dark blue chakra before the flames collided with her chest. They exploded in a blistering explosion that surrounded her in a large cloud of flames. Yujito burst out of the flames moments later and rushed towards Naruto in blinding speed. She flashed just above the blonde and attempted drove her huge claw towards the blonde. Seeing Yujito coming towards him like that, Naruto summoned four tails of chakra, turning into a miniature fox. He folded his crimson hands just above his forehead as Yujito's punch reached him. The powerful claw slammed into his defense in a loud boom that caused the ground to shatter below him. Naruto's tails moved from behind and twisted towards Yujito in blinding speed. Two of them pierced through her shoulders. Yujito gritted her teeth before opening her mouth wide while still above Naruto. A ball of flames formed before she shot it towards the blonde at point-blank range. Boom. The flames exploded, creating a huge shroud around Naruto, before Yujito flashed away from him to avoid being caught in the explosion. When the flames died down, Naruto was standing there in all fours, in a sizable crater. He then suddenly faced up into the air and started forming a small bijuadama. Seeing this, Yujito cancelled her form and raised both her hands. Wow wow. She shouted. That is a bit too far. She said. Naruto had already started and his jutsu was almost complete. He couldn't just stop it like that, not when he had already started. It would a waste of chakra and effort. He ate the small orb of condensed chakra. The ground below him shattered under the massive weight of the jutsu. Naruto then spat it before releasing it into the air. Afterwards, Naruto cancelled his form and stared into the heavens as the jutsu exploded. He smiled, well, that is dangerous he muttered. We should stop here Yujito said. I can see that we'll end up causing unwanted attention. She said lightly. I just felt that power, I'm afraid I don't know what kind of damage you might cause or we might cause. I'd rather not have Shinobi coming to this side. Naruto thought about it for a moment before sighing. I guess that will do he said. Collateral damage can't be avoided at times, but I know what Abiju's power can do. Ujido smiled. You're really skilled it became obvious that without transforming I couldn't do anything, she said. I have had time to train Naruto said looking up into the sky. What about our bet? I couldn't make you eat your eats let us just call it even Ujido said. But still willing to dine with you only if Samui joins us. Cool. Naruto said with a smile. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this one, if you do please leave a like share and subscribe, take care.